and we're back we are back day three we're going to be doing this for seven hours so our appearance isn't going to look the best we're going to get tired it's going to happen i can tell you right now i don't know if alexis knows this but i literally got an hour and a half of sleep <laughs> wild i think i got a good six hours in but you know it almost doesn't matter how much sleep you get in i feel like during this because it's like for whatever reason, like three out yeah three hours in it's like you hit a wall like every year um it's like i hit three hours on day three and it's like my body just shuts down yeah so i think we're just gonna have to do it this way i'm just gonna start copying and pasting tweets so courtesy of connor hughes Nick Saldaveri to the Saints. This will save me a lot of time and everything. Um, I had to rock the Lakers jersey because moving on to the next round for the Lakers fans in here. And Jacorian Bennett is heading to the Raiders. So we're fast and fierce. I like him. Now you see why I got to copy and paste. <laughs> this is going to be... Is this going to be a workout? But yeah, I, I like that pick a lot. Um, I know there are probably Rams fans that wanted him and the Rams haven't picked a cornerback yet. So that is kind of a, an L for the Rams, but it's a good pick for the Raiders nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is where it's like day three is taxing, but the, the picks do come in quite quick, especially online. I don't know what's going on with my hair, guys. I just showered and blew it dry and it is not wanting to lay right how are we all doing what's, yeah how what's living? up how everyone feeling? in the chat how the hell are y'all So we, right off the bat, tackle and guard, or tackle and, I don't know where I got guard from. Oh, someone put guard in the chat. Okay, I'm not stupid. Uh, tackle and corner just got selected. So um, <clears throat> now we have the Texans on the clock who they had traded the 104th pick. So the Raiders traded up to get Ja'Korian Bennett at the top of the fourth. He's a very athletic corner. I think he had a close to 10 RAS score. So very, very athletic corner. Texans, Colts, Patriots up next. Wildman Samurai, thank you for the 20. Thanks for the draft show again. Let's get this party started. Horns up. Hell yeah. Let's get this party started. Um... All right, so we got the Texans, Colts, Patriots, Seahawks, and Texans. Oh, the Texans had <laughs> three picks at the top of the fourth. I understand why they traded down now. Oh wait, no, that's okay. That was the that was the Raiders trade down. Okay, that makes sense. I have not seen. Okay, wait. So Philadelphia is on the clock, right? Are we all seeing the same thing? Um. They traded up, right? Um, I'm not sure. This is up. where it gets confusing because I'm trying to see on Twitter. Well, and the draft tracker is just so far behind on NFL. Like it doesn't even have the trade up yet for the Eagles. I don't. I don't even see the trade up for the Eagles. It's the one I, I um I had texted you, but I didn't have any details on it. It was just there was a trade. I did fix my monitor <laughs> to anyone that cares. Uh, very simple fix. I'm a moron. At the end of the night, I realized that the HDMI port got jiggled a little bit and it came out of the computer. <laughs> so uh, certified dumbass over here, Jake. Um, let's see. Okay, so Eagles are on the clock. Yeah, this tracker is saying the Texans on 
So did the Texans trade with the Eagles? I don't even know. I don't know what's what, what is going on. I don't I don't I don't even know at this point. I don't know. I'm the just going to look at the Eagles have traded up and gotten another Georgia player, Keely Ringo. Oh my god. The, the it's just I I mean, hey, I'll say this. To the defense of the Eagles, if you're going to just mass draft from any school, drafting from two-time national champions is probably not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an expert, but that's probably not a bad idea to trade with national champion, uh, to, to add national champions to your roster. Where, okay, are you seeing these from Twitter? Or is yeah. there a different tracker? Okay. Yeah, Connor Hughes. I'm just going to keep uh, copying and pasting his tweets because it's so much easier. We're doing this next year. I, I'm not I'm not typing that shit out anymore. By the <laughs> way, happening. if it isn't obvious, so as much, and we said this before, as much as I, I want, you know, the Rams to be the NFC team in the Super Bowl, um, I'm not like, that's not my prediction this year like it was last year. I do think it's going to be the Eagles. And I think that the, they're certainly not giving me any reason with this draft to be less inclined to pick them. You know what I mean? Like, they're certainly not bombing the draft to the point. <clears throat> well, this is the last hurrah, I think, for the Eagles. I think they kind of know it. They're going to get hit with kind of that deadly cap situation um, after this year. So this is another all-in season. So it, it, they need to hit on this draft, and I think that's what they're just going with guys that are, you know, they're going with Georgia Bulldogs. So, we got, let's see here. Uh, the Rams don't pick until the 26th pick in this round, 128 overall. So we are 22 picks away. <clears throat> the Colts are taking uh tackle break, Blake, break, Blake Freeland uh, from BYU. I like this pick. It gives them some depth. And uh, I think Freeland's a dog. I, I think Freeland can start day one. I think this is a really good pick by the Colts. I do too. And they're trying to protect Anthony Richardson. Exactly. And it sounds like he might actually start, believe it or not. We'll see what ends up happening, but that's fascinating to me. At the you know least. what's interesting that, and I forget who pointed this out on NFL Network the other day, is that, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, and Will Levis are all in the AFC South. And that means that Will Levis is going to, you know, if he ends up starting for the Titans, right, he is going to be going against the two quarterbacks that were taken ahead of him twice a year. That's and if, a that's not a, if that's not a chip on your shoulder to be going against the two guys twice a year, the two teams picked ahead of you. No, that's that's a good point there. I got to say, Alexis, if you need tackle help, there's still plenty of tackles. I was, there was a huge run, right? And then I said, okay, you're missing out if you need a tackle. But right now, I mean, Dewan Jones is really a projection. That size has never translated to the NFL. He's got like record breaking size. Um, but in the fourth round, fifth round, flyer there, that, that's really good value. Carter Warren, uh, Jalen Duncan, really athletic tackle there. And then Warren McClendon, who played on Georgia, so the Eagles will probably get him. Um, but, you know, he's also a stud. He played on the other side of um, Broderick Jones. So, so Keely Ringo dropped after a shoulder dislocation, labrum tear, as well as concussion. Regarded as high character, talented player, had second round grades, huge value in the fourth. According to Aaron Wilson. 
I wasn't as high on Ringo. I saw a lot of t uh, hip tightness. I thought he tested extremely well, really athletic testing, but the hip tightness kind of concerned me a little bit. But um, it's a really good pick in the fourth round. I think well, all these picks have looked good. I mean, these are this is value right now. They have. And talking about Ringo, you and I talked about him a little bit um, on the stream yesterday, how he was one of those guys that like – at one point before the season last year was like number one overall pick. Like that is literally what yeah. the interwebs thought. And then he just had like the descended, interwebs. but it was like, did he really descend or, or were people just like extremely overhyping him? I think it was a little bit of both. I definitely think he was getting extremely overhyped, but to be fair, I mean, good value in the fourth round. That's where I had him going. It is really cool that Ringo, Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter, and Kobe Dean, and Jordan Davis are all. You're, be... I mean, you're on cloud nine right now. Yeah, because <laughs> you love that. Yeah, um, I think I'm caught up on the. If anyone's following along on the um, elimination board, I think I'm caught up. I think yeah i don't have kickers punters so the patriots snappers, but... drafted center jake andrews out of troy that feels like a very patriots pick yeah seems like a little bit of a reach too i had him yeah i think i had him as like going in the fifth so i feel like the patriots definitely reach on offensive linemen though that they like i mean they look do. at Cole strange yeah. Last year. So if they like an offensive lineman, I don't think they really care where they take him if they believe in him. No, that that's true. Um Yeah, I definitely thought this was I definitely thought this was a reach, but Connor Hughes isn't putting the um school there. That's the only problem with me copying and paste. I don't have a choice though. It's gonna get like hectic and I <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to type that all out. Um, yeah, I had him. I had him seventh round, I think. Jake Andrews. Actually, I didn't even. Okay, I didn't get a chance to watch him, I don't think. Never mind. I mean, I just think it's funny. The Eagles have legitimately a recruiting pipeline to Georgia. <laughs> That's not something you normally hear with an NFL team. Right. Although I know for a while there was like a, a weird connection with like the Patriots and drafting Rutgers players for like no reason. <laughs> I don't okay, so Seattle's on the clock. So you got Seattle. And they just took Anthony Bradford. That is a reach to me. I had Bradford actually the best available in the fourth round, but Chandler Zavala is still there, and I would have picked Zavala over him. Yeah, I probably would have too, but hey, that means the you know, if he's not taken, the Rams could get him. I don't know. I think the Rams are done with offensive line. They might, you know, go after a tackle at the end of the draft, but I think they're pretty good. I think that was like kind of their, all right, we feel good about their offensive line. We're just going to have one more piece. Um, Texans just got the TCU pass rusher Dylan Horton, had some decent tape. I think he's a little underrated. Yeah, I liked Horton. Who in the chat, um, well, I guess in the chat, guys, who do you want the Rams to take with their next pick? I'm just curious what, what everyone's feeling. I know who Jake and I would like. I I still would take Adabor Adabore. Still would take him. I don't care who else we've taken because here's the reason why. We lost Ashawn Robinson and Greg Gaines, right? 
you need two interior guys. Yes, you have Bobby Brown, but I really think, like Jake said, Kobe Turner, I think, ends up being more of a rotational piece. Maybe the Rams, Rams see it opposite. Maybe they see Adebore as the rotational piece. Whatever, right? You need four guys. I am not going to rule them out taking another interior defensive lineman. I think if you really want to beef up the trenches, you're thin there. Why not? Now, do I think they'll take him? No. But do I think they could? Yes. I have two first round grades left. Charlie Jones and Adabare. And I I like both of them. A.T. Perry is another guy I'm looking at. Um, Someone in the chat said that. Someone said Darius Rush. I see Charlie Jones. Yeah. Will Mallory. I don't know if I would go with Will Mallory. I would go with... Um, I'll say I really like Davis Allen. That's the tight end. If I'm if I'm picking a tight end, it's Davis Allen for me. I just every time I think of Davis Allen, I think of that hit he got. What game was it? The game he there was a game that I watched last season where he got he like blacked out, or at least we felt like he got hit hard. And I think he came back into the game, and it was like one of the scarier hits I've seen on live TV. I do not remember who it was against. It wasn't against Notre Dame, but I just every time I see Davis Allen, I just think of that, and it like freaks me out. That's okay. That's fair. N- I mean, not that people haven't taken big hits before, but I just am like, the Colts took out of Bore. Ugh, my heart. Jake. Oh my God, Evan. Good for Evan. Ugh. Pain. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. Ugh. Well, good for him. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> he he should have gone a lot earlier. And... Uh, he should have. The Rams should have taken him. And they didn't, so... Oh my god. Adabare is just, that is such a, I mean, let's be real here. That is such, I, that shouldn't shock us. That's what Chris Ballard does. He goes after traits. Well, Adabare is somebody that just ran a 449 at 280 pounds. Okay. So that's crazier than even Aaron Donald. Like that's, I don't know, man. That's, that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. The fact that he fell, my God. And just like that, Autobar is off the board, and Colby Wooden, or Wooden, would be the best interior defense alignment available. So, all right, at that point, I'm looking at Deswan Johnson if they add anybody else later on, but, uh, you know, now that he's off the board, I feel fine. They got. They took their guy. We disagree. He's up. It's up to him to prove us, us wrong. And uh, you know, I just I think now you can focus on other. You know, okay, Charlie Jones, At Perry. Those are two guys at the wide receiver room. I think the Rams. One thing's for certain: the Rams definitely have a chance to get a really good player. There's a lot of really good talents. I mean, when I'm looking at you know picks. Guys that I gave, you know, second round grades to. Okay. I mean, I got Jaron Hall, I gave a second round grade to. Abana Kanda, AT Perry, I gave a first round grade to Charlie Jones. I gave a second round grade to Warren McClendon. Um, second round grade to Yasir Abdullah. I think he could be in play. And a second round grade to Antonio Johnston. Uh, Johnson, sorry. So, yeah. So, someone asked why is Daywan Jones still available? I think it was Dr. Dingus. Um, I heard he, so I mean, I don't know for sure, but just the buzz I get is that he's kind of coming off as a little lazy being at that big of size so i think there are teams that are kind of eh, he had a really good senior bowl but a lot has happened since the senior bowl you got to keep up that momentum during the combine you know so
Yeah, I think if I'm the Rams right now, I'm looking at going either receiver or potentially adding a defensive piece here. The Jets just trade with the Patriots. The the, the, the Browns just drafted Dewan Jones. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. So now the Patriots are back on the clock. Um, if I'm the Rams, I'm looking at corner. Oh, yeah, and corner too. Yeah, I think they get a defensive piece for a receiver. So whether that defensive piece is a corner or... I mean, Isaiah McGuire's still in play. He's the guy that I would have drafted already. I think corner, I'd be looking at Corey Trice. I'd be looking at Terrell Smith. I would be looking at Travis Hodges Tomlinson. I'd be looking at Darius Rush. Those would be the guys that would be on my big board right now at the top if you're going corner. So the Jets are trading 180 and 184. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. The Jets traded down, so the Patriots trade up. Yeah, the Patriots are on the clock. Yeah. Patriots Um, trade up. Okay. Interdivision trade. Is it just me or have interdivision trades gotten like more common? I feel like we like would never see those in the past few years. <laughs> they traded up for a kicker. <laughs> yeah, the Patriots took Chad Ryland, who I'm pretty sure is the Maryland kicker. Okay. That's uh yeah. All Interesting. Right. I it makes sense that they I mean, if I'm the Jets, that's that's a win. I just let Intradivision trade. I let the the Patriots have a chance to get better, and they they grabbed a kicker. I can't justify picking a kicker. I'm sorry, not until the seventh round. Someone in the chat said, "Do you think we see any player trades today?" I don't th- think so on day three. I mean. Maybe, but usually I feel like when you see player trades, it's for it's a big player and it's for like a day two pick, right? Yeah. Like I don't feel like you really see those on day three, um, unless you have a player. Maybe a team is just trying to unload or get out of a contract for a late pick. Maybe there's no one I can think of off the top of my head that I really foresee. No, I'm I'm with you. It, it's like last year we saw kind of the crazy once every five ten drafts like aj brown and hollywood brown get traded on the same night but yeah typically speaking like unless you're trading a guy to dump his salary and you don't care about a big pick you're probably not trading a player on day three Clark Phillips is headed to the Falcons. Let's say defense back. It's later than I thought he'd go. I wouldn't mind if the Rams took him, honestly. It's weird because I feel like he's more of a slot guy, and I think they like Jacoby as a slot guy, which is why, as much as I like Travis Hodges Tomlinson, he can really only be a slot corner. So I don't know how that's going to work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think the Rams would go that route. I mean, he's a great player. No doubt about it. Travis Hodges Tomlinson is a baller. But like, if you want Jacoby Durant in the slot, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but if you do, 
then you're not going to draft him. But yeah, Travis Hodges Tomlinson kind of gives me the the Nickel Roby Coleman vibes. I think he's five seven too as well. So, you know. So this means Carolina, then Chicago. Do you know when is the Rams next pick again? Um because we're at one twelve. I don't know, we're at one about to be one fourteen. So they're at one twenty eight. Okay. Yeah. It's coming up. I do like what the Falcons are doing. They're that was turning a good it pick. around. They they definitely are. I am I am nervous about their quarterback situation. I know that you really like Ritter. The Panthers just got Chandler Zavala. That's a really good pick. Zavala fell first off, great guy. Alexis and I both interviewed him on the Downtown Rams podcast, but Zavala is a really good pick here because he fell due to medicals. Like, he is a third-round talent through and through, and arguably even a late second. But I like the pick for the Panthers. I think it's a really good move for them. What, what are your thoughts? who they pick? Chandler Zavala. Oh, they did? Uh oh. Yeah, no, I think it's a really good pick for them. It's a though, good pick. You know? it's, I really like Zavala. He was a guy I hoped that the Rams would take. Um, now that they took Evelia, right? Is that how I pronounce it? Uh, Avila? Uh, yeah. I don't think they were going to take him, so I liked him. And he was a fun interview. Yeah. No, he he seemed like a really good dude, so... And now he's uh, going to be protecting Bryce Young, which means Chicago is on the clock. Oh, my God. I have, like, notifications on for, like, Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter, and they're so far behind Connor Hughes. Like, Ian Rappaport just tweeted out that the Patriots drafted Chad Ryland. Like, that was a while ago. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Solo Man's getting a shout out here. Where is it? That's a great point. Zavala and Iquanu back together. They were nasty side by side at NC State. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Bonnie Hecker made the Panthers selection of uh, Zavala, by the way. That's cool. I like that. Who do you think the Bears go with? I could see him going tight end. I could see them getting. So the crazy thing is that, like, so Cam and I on our show Off the Edge, Cam had, we were giving our sleepers. And he gave back-to-back -back sleepers, so we cut it up, and it just it, it looks like Cam predicted the Bears' picks because in the the um, cut up, Alexis, he talked about I don't know why he mentioned it, but he said 
if you had a guy like Jervon Dexter next to a guy like Zach Pickens or like however he worded it. And I was like, and then I, all of a sudden that video started like popping off. And I was like, why is that? And I looked, I was like, oh my God, he like, it was freaking Nostradamus. So real quick, the bears took Roshan Johnson, the running back out of Texas. Really like the player. Don't really get the fit. I think the bears number one running back is Justin Fields. So I think in their mind, they've got Khalil Herbert, Tristan Herbert's Ebner. So good. That's the thing. And Roshan Johnson. I don't so know I, if I would have. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They also have Travis Homer, but you know, I think in their mind, they're, they're not looking for the, uh, Like a, I, I think that they're they're just doing like a running back by committee. They're not looking for a lead back, so I think they're just putting together pieces of running backs that they like. And then you know, at the end of the day, Justin Fields is still going to be a runner. Um, I just like Johnson, so good for them. Yeah, yeah, Johnson's a really good player. You know, he backed up Bijan Robinson, and you very rarely see backup running backs like in the top 10 for a position, but he was in my top 10, Alexis. I actually really like him. I had a third round grade on him. So actually scratch that. I had a second round grade on him. I very yeah. much liked Roshan Johnson. Also very much like Israel Abanakanda. I also very much like Keaton Mitchell and Deuce Swan. So I'm hoping the Rams get one of those. I don't want them to take a running back earlier than the sixth round personally, but the Packers have taken Colby Wooden out of okay. Auburn. It's funny. I actually think I, dra I drafted him to them in the last seven round mock that I did. Cause I think I, I, I put Derek Hall and Colby Wooden to the Packers. I like him. He's a he kind of a versatile edge, you know, interior defensive lineman. Saw a lot of those this year for whatever reason, but I actually like the, the fit there on a defense with Derek Hall and Iku Leota. He actually had the most forced fumbles with three this year. He led the team. So I thought that was interesting. So up next, you got the Patriots again, then Washington, Minnesota, Jacksonville, and the Rams are up relatively soon unless they trade back, which maybe they will. Um, I wouldn't mind it because there's still a lot of talent, <clears throat> but it depends on how far back they traded. <laughs> Can't go crazy now, but. Oh, yeah, the Patriots are so going to take trial. Oh, where'd you go, Alexis? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what you said to it, but it just uh, must take it personally. Um, I was just saying that it's painful for me to see Johnny Hecker represent the Panthers still. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just saw Dr. Dingus said um, Patriots got to take Charlie Jones. Fits them too well. They're so going to take Charlie Jones, aren't they? The Patriots? Round. I yeah, mean, this, he's a very Patriots-esque pick. This this would be this. He's also very much a Rams-like receiver as well. So, I mean, we'll see what ends up happening here. I think you get some really good value with Charlie Jones. my shadow draft it's weird terrell smith is like higher on my board but i might actually go with Corey trice because i like the outside upside there six three i'm kind of leaning trice right now for the rams trice or well charlie jones actually would be it he'd be my pick charlie jones or t perry okay i'm all over the place never mind <laughs> 
City Sow. That is the pick. Interesting. This is very high. I mean, hey, Patriots have become a staple of reaching sure. an offensive line. Yep, that they that's like. their thing. That's their vibe. You know? I mean, I thought he was like a seventh round pick. But I think he's a good prospect. He is. And I like the name. I feel like Citizen. Eastern Michigan, since ever since Mac, Max Crosby, they've been kind of like on the rise. Yeah. They I, honestly, yeah, they've been on the map. Um, Ramirez is in this draft, or is it? It's Ramirez, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I mean, he's a good he's a good prospect. So what are the Patriots getting with City Sal? Um, he started five years at Eastern Michigan, and I think he he's a little bit of a project for starting five years, but I think he could develop into a starter. So I actually like the pick. It's just it's a little bit of a reach for me, but I mean, I had him more in the fifth round, but it, like it's a minor reach. It's not a huge reach. So, I don't know. It's so annoying. You try to, like, itch your nose. Looks like you're picking it. <laughs> it's like, I promise you guys I'm not doing that. So commanders still on the clock. <laughs> yeah, Commanders. Commanders. Then the Vikings, then the Jets, who traded down. Mm -hmm. Rams still in sight on the ticker on NFL Network, guys. We're coming up. Oh, this is a good pick. Braden Daniels. He is a stud. I really like yeah. Braden Daniels. Can play tackle, can play guard. Oh, man. They have him listed as a tackle. I don't know why. I kind of felt like maybe more of a guard, but. I liked him at guard. Can see that. I also think the Jets got sniped because I think the Jets might have. They might have drafted him. But, hey, they traded down. And we saw yesterday, you know, the Rams traded down. They missed out on the guy that they wanted. Sean McVay was not happy about it. And, uh Yeah. Sometimes that's the cost of trading down, right? You never know. So the Jets are on the clock, according to Connor, but who is Minnesota's pick? Do they trade up one spot or? Jets just trade down. I think the no. Jets were. No, yeah, but Kansas City is moving to one nineteen. There we okay. I was about to say. Well, we know Kansas City is going to get a player that the Rams probably want and that we probably want. Good God. Good God. I wonder who the Kansas City... I wonder why they would trade up, though. Like, who would it be? What, what if it's Charlie Jones? <sighs> they They drafted Rice, though. Like... They, I, know, I don't. But... I didn't even think they needed a receiver. I thought it was more just like a luxury pick. What's up, Willie? How it's going? <clears throat> Someone's waiting. McGuire, um, Isaiah McGuire would be such a Kansas City Chiefs pick. They do like Mizzou players. I'd be so they're, annoyed. They're in close proximity. 
I'd be so annoyed. I hope that's not the case. Connor Hughes said, I can't read. The Jets are on deck, not on the clock. So. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like so confused. Wait, so Kansas City moved up in the fourth round and are taking time to make their pick. What? The pick is in. This is what happens when we don't have Connor Hughes. No one's announcing it. I mean, one of one of the other accounts literally just announced Washington's pick. Like, bruh. It's also maybe a little different for Kansas. So the Kansas City Chiefs took Chamari Connor, defensive back from Virginia Tech. This is a little high for him, but I like yeah. him. And I, he was in my sleeper list, a uh, guy that I mentioned on Off the Edge. So I, I like the, the pick a lot, um, just the player, but I think it, it was a little early. To trade up and go out and get him, though, maybe they, they caught wind of some intel that he was about to get, go, and they wanted him. Well, now the Jets are on the clock. Jake, who do you think they take? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> when you look at the Jets, you know, I have team needs right now. Um I mean, they addressed some of the positions. I still think they need an offensive tackle. I think there's, you know, some out there. Defensive linemen, they got an edge defender. So I think with the the Jets, um, I could see Jalen Duncan here. I could see Jalen Duncan here. Yeah. Yeah. I like Jalen Duncan. Could also see Carter Warren. I think they go tackle. Or they go best you player don't think available. They maybe go receiver. I see a lot that are I don't know. I see a lot that obviously, you know, you you have you have everybody saying they should have gone after JSN and whatnot. I don't think they do. They they brought in a lot of receiver help. That's true. I forgot they brought in Lazard. <laughs> oh, there's something... What is it, Connor? What's breaking? My Twitter. It's Carter line. Warren. So I did. I did get it right. I knew they would go with one of the tackles, Carter Warren or Jalen Duncan. I like Duncan more, but and actually, I Carter Warren graded out higher than Jalen Duncan, but I actually like this. I like this pick. They need to get some depth offensive line. There we go. I literally don't know why StreamYard keeps booting me because my connection works with everything else. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. So Jacksonville, Arizona, Seattle, Baltimore, Chargers, Browns, Jaguars, then Rams, guys. Almost there. Are you guys excited for me to order my pizza later? Everyone's hyped. So 
So now the Jaguars, they, <clears throat> what did the Jaguars need? <clears throat> um, have they taken a receiver yet? Because they lost like two receivers in um, free agency. They have not, I don't think. This is so much easier. I'm going to open up a separate track tr uh, the draft tracker so I can see what they drafted. Alex said he'd pay me not to order the pizza. Okay, so they've drafted Brenton Strange, so they went tight end. They drafted Tank Bigsby and Anton Harrison. So, honestly... Defense, I think. I... <sighs> I know Blaine, who's watching, isn't going to like this, but I could see them going Isaiah McGuire here. And I'm not going to like it either, but. Yeah, I'm not going to like whoever takes Isaiah McGuire from us. Yeah, I'm going to fist fight them. The Jaguars also took an edge rusher that you really liked. Who was that two years ago? <clears throat> Guy out of UAB, Jordan um, yeah, Smith, J right? Jordan Smith, yeah, UAB. Now he didn't really end up doing anything, although it's still still young. But, uh, but yeah, I I loved Jordan Smith, and I thought he was being slept on. So let's see here. In my shadow draft so far. I've taken Brian Branch, Adebare, and A.T. Perry. So I've not gone offensive line yet. In my shadow draft, I might go Davis Allen. No, 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 no. For pick 120. 128. So we're at pick 121 right now, guys, for context. Jaguars are on the clock. Rams pick 128. I think... Man, it's tough. 128. I'd probably go with Yusir Abdullah. You can rush the pat. No, no, I would go with Isaiah McGuire. Because I haven't drafted an edge. And yeah, I'll take his Isaiah McGuire in my shadow. Solo man mentioned Nick Hampton out of App State. I could I could see Nick Hampton. Carter Warren has a seven foot wingspan. That's crazy. That's wild. John Gaines at UCLA. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Cardinals. What do you think about that? It's a little high. It's a little high, yeah. I know that the Rams UCLA fans are not going to like that he's going to the Cardinals, though. Nope. They probably didn't like the Charbonnet went to... Uh, the Seahawks, so. That's true. So that means that Seattle's on the clock, by the way. Speaking of the Seahawks. Yeah, they have had a pretty solid draft, I think. They have the past few years. It's been annoying to watch. 
Yeah, it has. And you can you can thank the Broncos for making them good. And just giving them draft pick after draft pick. The Seahawks <clears throat> took defensive tackle Cameron Young out of Mississippi State. That's interesting. That also feels high. Not sure how I feel about that. I had a sixth round grade on Cameron Young. I think looking at it, I'm still updating this elimination board. I keep finding ones that I didn't cross off. The Jaguars took Ventrell Miller. We missed that. The Cardinals took John Gaines, and then the Seahawks took Cameron Young. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think he ever put that up there. I mean, we're just going with what Connor tells us. Guys, be sure to hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're at 200 and... Wow, that just went up. That just went way up. We're almost at 300 people. It's because the Rams are almost <laughs> up. You got... Oh, one, two, three, four, four... And four picks. Four picks have to be made and then the Rams will be up. Yes, <laughs> I you knew you were going to ask. Yeah, I can, I can hear that. Some people just stopped by my house um, out of the blue, and now they are congregating in my kitchen. <laughs> um, this was not planned, so I apologize. I'll mute myself until I mute myself for now. All right, so... Ravens are on the clock at pick 124 here. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> Say hello from LA. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why it's so loud. <laughs> Aaron Norris says it's fine. Let's see. Rams pick and four picks. Five picks, you know, because the Ravens have to actually make their pick. All right, so I'm going to say this right now. I don't know if the Rams go in this direction, um, but I think Isaiah McGuire is a great fit. And By the way, the Ra uh, the Ravens just took um, Edge Tavius Robinson. <gasps> don't do that to me. <laughs> I thought you were going to just... Say I'm Isaiah McGuire? <laughs> yeah, I thought no, you were no, going no. like, to shit Tavius... on my life just now. Like, Tavius oh, I... Robinson, who I think is from Miami. No, 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 not Miami, Ohio. I think Tavius Robinson's <sighs> underrated. He's somebody I didn't get a chance to finish my full evaluation on, so I don't know if he's even on the board. I don't think he is, but I really like him. I didn't get to finish my evaluation, so it wasn't fair for me to grade him, but 
Um, I just ran out of time. But I, I really like Tavius Robinson. I really like this pick. I really like this pick for the Ravens. I think this is somebody that's being slept on right now. Um, by the mock draft community, I think the NFL clearly isn't sleeping on him if he's going in the fourth round. But that's my thoughts on, on Tavius Robinson and Ole Miss. So you got the Chargers, the Browns, then the Jaguars. ID89, thank you so much for the 36 in honor of the Rams first pick the other day since we're getting close to our first today. Thank you, Jake and Alexis, for once again taking on the gauntlet of the draft and being the best place to watch. Love you. We love you, too. We love thank you, Thank you. Love you, too. Thank you so much. It's very kind. Really appreciate the support there. That's freaking awesome, ID89. Also, ID89 has been a walking W ever since because ID89 has been in the uh the comment section for a while and going back to the last draft i think two drafts ago and maybe even three he's always the one that's putting in who gets picked like he beats us even so that's true keeping everyone up to date love it the chargers drafted wide receiver darius davis out of tcu i don't even know what to say to that. That's kind of high, I think, for him, but... I didn't even... Okay, I didn't watch him, so I, I don't... Like I said, I don't know what to say to that. I have a really... <laughs> I have a really fast thumb. That's funny. You know what's interesting is that's the second TCU receiver they've drafted. They took Quentin Johnston in the first round, and now they're taking Darius Davis in the fourth. Do you know anything about Darius Davis? I think this is kind of a reach, honestly. I, think I saw him a little bit, was... but I didn't finish his eval. Yeah, it's, I, I didn't watch too much of him. I think this is probably a little high based on where everyone else had him going. But yeah, they wanted to reunite him with Johnston. I love that story. Of draft connection. Yeah, I'm reading. I'm reading gadget player, so I guess it makes sense because he kind of he's going to replace. Um, I forget the guy's name that they got from Washington, who was their uh, return guy. So the Chargers went with Darius Davis, the Browns, Jaguars, and then the Rams. All right, so Cleveland, Jacksonville, <laughs> sorry, someone just called me. Um, I am on, let's see, a lot of people on Twitter think the Rams are going to take Corey Trice for this next pick, by the way. I really like Corey Trice here. I really like Isaiah McGuire here. I mean, I'm going to stick with my board. I'm going to go with Isaiah McGuire. I double dip on edge. You are you feel good about that position. I think he could start day one. I think Byron Young could start day one. You have Michael Hoyt, so, you know. No, the Browns took Isaiah McGuire. Uh, oh. Of course they did. 
Come on. Damn it. I really wanted him. I really wanted him. Oh, man. I'm so pissed. Him and Byron Young on the same. Uh, that would have been such a win for the Rams, man. That that would have been so awesome to have those two on the opposite sides. I, I <laughs> Blaine just texted me, I hate the Browns so much. I do too. I, I hate him for that. That's, yeah, that's frustrating. Oh, God. Especially two picks, two picks before the Rams draft. Oh, my Lord. And I just, I wanted to know if they would pick him. Like, I don't know if they would have. But I think they might have. He fit, you know, he fit their, uh, he fit what they look for, the archetype they look for in defensive ends. Well, you know, outside linebackers. God, Cleveland, why? Oh, Alexis, did you see Deshaun Watson was talking about how Elijah, uh, Elijah, what the hell is his name? Elijah Moore came from a toxic environment with the Jets. Like, bro, you shouldn't be talking about toxic, period. Like, like I thought that I, I cracked up at that. I'm not going to lie. All right, the Saints traded up. They got... they. They moved up a hundred spots and gave a 2024 fourth rounder. So this has to be significant. This has got to be significant. I'm so mad about Isaiah McGuire. Michael, I thought the uh, Lakers win was awesome. They won by 40. The trash-talking Grizzlies, they, uh, they're they feeling that. A quarterback. Saints take Jake Hayner. Oh, my God, man. That's a good pick. I had a third-round grade on Hayner. You're, you're muted, by the way. Sorry, I was going to say that's a good pick because they now have two Fresno State quarterbacks on their team. Oh, Derek wow, they Carr, do. And now they've drafted his successor, or what they're hoping, in Jake Hayner. I would have liked to know he was available just in case the Rams want to go quarterback. Now I'm a little worried. Rams are on the clock now. I am going to go in my um, shadow draft here. Ah, damn it. I might go Corey Trice. I'm leaning Corey Trice. That's what I would do. Or you see Abdullah. Or Charlie Jones. Damn it. <laughs> I think. Why is it that the NFL network always goes to a commercial when the Rams are up? It never like, fails. They're just like, no, we hate y'all. They're uh, like. I'm going to take Corey Trice. But if it's Charlie Jones. I, I feel weird going against my board like this, but. Let's see. I think Trice gives you that 6'3 size on the outside. Really good athlete. Um, I think Okay, he works. Big, big news. Big news. The Lions have traded DeAndre Swift to the Eagles for draft compensation that hasn't been released. I think the Rams... I think I just got where the Rams are getting Stetson Bennett from the source. Ew, not in the fourth round. There's no way. There's literally I, no I way. Think, I think. Okay, did you hear my news about DeAndre Swift, by the way? Yeah, Swift to the okay. Eagles. Yeah. Sorry, there's like so much going on. I'm getting tips. There's no way the Rams are taking Stetson Bennett in the fourth round. I think it's I think it's Bennett. That's, oh, I think God. that's what I was just told. Oh, God. 
listen, I would have liked Stetson. I don't hate Stetson Bennett, but he would have been like a great pick in like the sixth round, right? That would have been fun for me. Um, he's not ever even been mocked as high as this, higher than the sixth round. I've never seen. I'm getting confirmation right now. One second. It sounds like it, it's Stetson Bennett. <laughs> I don't believe. I, not that I'm saying you're lying. I believe you. I'm just like I'll. I need to see an actual hard, hard count proof. I've never even seen. I've seen Bennett go from the sixth, seventh, and UDFA. I've never seen him mocked. I like, like him, everyone's, but I don't like him as much as Jaron Hall. I don't like him high. I don't like him this high at all. Yeah, I actually had taking, a fourth round grade on him. Uh, no, and I definitely like you said. I like Jaron Hall a lot more. And I also think I kind of convinced myself the Rams might get Hall for some reason. I don't know why I did that to myself. Just waiting on confirmation. I'm also still trying to process DeAndre Swift to the Eagles. But the Rams took Stetson Bennett. Yep. That's... <laughs> I'm sorry. You give analysis on this. Give me a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think it's it's interesting. I mean, I have a fourth round grade on him. I, I had Jaron Hall second round grade. Jake Hayner comes off the board. I think the Rams. Here's the thing that the Rams take care of that people aren't going to get, and this is going to get absolutely butchered. This is going to get so much crap. We talked about it on the stream or on one of the podcasts. I actually said that there was a possibility the Rams could go out and get the Georgia kid. Now, this is what I'll say about Stetson Bennett and walk you guys off the cliff a little bit, okay? Or walk you away from the cliff, get you off the cliff. The, the thing about Bennett is that at the end of the day, the Rams only have one quarterback in that room. They only have one. So they need a guy that is going to be able to back up Stafford. And I feel like by getting Bennett, this is the common theme we continue to see with this draft. They're going after guys that are ready to start or ready to play in a pinch. And when you go out and you get Bennett, he's a proven winner, right? This is somebody I, I really I really like him. I mean, he's going to get a lot of hate. Like I said, he's my QB eight. I had other guys ahead of him, but I don't mind them going after him. I don't because first off, I can confirm yesterday he was talked about in the war room. Okay. I can confirm that. So this is a guy that they were looking at yesterday, probably not to draft yesterday, but draft today. Bennett, what he's going to give you is he's going to give you quality accuracy in the short and intermediate game, right? The thing he does is he can move the ball um, with his legs. He can throw it. I don't think his deep ball is the best in the class, but it's not the worst. And I think when you look, he's one of the true clutch quarterbacks in this draft. I mean, he won two championships at Georgia. His mobility is real. He can gash a defense with his legs. I think he's shown improvement year to year with his pocket presence. The ball just jumps off his hand. And this guy can throw off platform. He's a leader. He's a proven winner. And I think he can possibly start down the road. And so I... I'm going to give this pick. I have him as a fourth round grade. I had other players that I would have preferred and I have an, an other quarterback that I would have preferred, but I'm going to give this pick an A minus because I think you go out and you get a guy that is ready to play. If Stafford goes down, I don't mind it. You're getting mobility. This is 2023. This is, you know, it doesn't matter. That he's five eleven, six feet. It does not matter at the end of the day. The Rams need to find guys on their offense to be able to play right away, and that's what's happening with him. He can play right away, and I I agree with this. I, I think this is the move. I think it's a good move. I think it's a little bit of an adjustment for some fans, but I stand by this. I think this is a good pick by Les Need and probably, obviously, Sean McVay, and uh, 
I'll tell you right now, you know, I think he's, he's a generally accurate quarterback. He's not pinpoint accurate, but I, what I really like about him is he's going to use his legs to get himself out of harm's way. And at the end of the day, He's going to use his legs and he can throw off platform with accuracy. A lot of guys, their accuracy dips off platform. He's going to be able to make it happen. He did at Georgia. We've seen all these Georgia guys come off the board. I approve of it. Okay. It's different. I would have gone with Jaron Hall, Alexis. I'm telling you, but I, I like Stetson Bennett and I was surprised how much I'd like Stetson Bennett after watching his tape. I did not expect to like him as much as I did. <laughs> i'm not commenting because i'm not i know how this goes i say something and this gets clipped and then i get called a hater so i'm not saying anything about how i feel right now but this i would have liked this pick if it was two rounds later if this was in the sixth round i would have been all for it i do not like this in the fourth round not for him he wasn't even a top 10 quarterback in this draft, in my opinion. But they he is friends with Stafford, and that's what I'm seeing being reported on, that Stafford really, really likes him. So it makes sense. They're both from Georgia. So this, this was, uh, I think, a little bit catered to that. But, um, okay, and also, by the way, the Cowboys just drafted defensive end. Uh, I think this is a typo here. But it's Hoko, the defensive end out of San Jose State. Connor got the, his first name wrong. I know that that's not it. Oh, but, Viliami. Um, I don't know how to say his name. He, yeah, out of San Jose State, which is kind of where I thought he was going to go in the fourth. Um, and but by the way, also DeAndre Swift, by the way, trade to the Eagles, which was announced literally at the same time of the Rams pick, so we kind of glossed over it. Another Georgia player to the Eagles. DeAndre yeah. Swift out of is from Georgia. Are you kidding me? <laughs> DeAndre Swift literally played at Georgia. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, so it's like they really are like – it's almost like the Eagles have committed to the bit. It's like at this point they're just like we're really going for it. How old is Stetson Bennett, by the way? Is he um, 45? No, he's, I think he's 25. Got it. Yeah, he's 25. He'll be 26 in October. I I like the pick. You know, it, it's different. I know people are going to have issues with it, but... When are the Rams up again? They were they were at one twenty eight and one. I had it pulled up and it like went somewhere. I should just have the Rams graphic up somewhere. Is what I did have up. Okay, they pick one sixty one. Oh my god, they don't pick for a while. Why did I think it was sooner? I thought they had another fourth round pick. I guess not. So for the DeAndre Swift, the Lions got a fourth round pick in 2025 and a seventh round pick this year, it looks like. Wait, did you say 2025? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they basically gave Swift away for nothing. They, yeah, they, which we kind of assumed with the uh, Jamar Gibbs pick that they just like were ready to just get rid of Swift. So I don't know why it's surprising, but. I think it's a steal for Swift. I agree with you, Ryan. So that means Jacksonville's up, by the way. Then Pittsburgh, then Chicago again. Oh, my dog just came in here and she's laying on my wires. This could end so badly.
Mike Rams drafted Stetson Bennett out of Georgia in the fourth round. Honestly, good for DeAndre Swift to go. Swift though. Oh no, the Bengals got Charlie Jones. Uh that makes sense though. Oh. That fit, I I like that fit for him. Oh no. So now Pitt and Chicago are up. Callie Ram fans said, do you see Bennett starting for the Rams in the future? Personally, the way it is right now, I don't see him as a franchise quarterback. No, I don't. Could that change? Yes, but when you watch Setson Bennett, to me, he he doesn't feel like an NFL starting quarterback. He seems like he could be a solid backup quarterback in the NFL. I'm just glad it was another pick that I actually did a ton of work on. Like I, I put out and not a, like a guy that like we just are like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. We don't know what to say. Yeah. Like, remember that like two years ago when they drafted Chris Garrett and I was like, I didn't watch him, but <laughs> hold on a sec. And I looked up his scouting report. I was like, I don't know this guy. Like I, I didn't have I to feel do like that. we're we're early enough to where these guys that are getting drafted. Now we know when you get to like the late sixth, seventh round, that's when it's kind of like. Okay, I don't know who this is anymore. I'm not going to lie. That is painful. The Bengals got my first round grade on Charlie Jones. They now got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Charlie Jones. I no longer have any first round receivers. And also, the Jaguars just drafted defensive end Tyler Lacey out of Oklahoma State, and this feels a little high. That does feel a little high, yeah. um, Where did you have Lacey? As an edge or interior? edge yeah okay um i'm trying to see if pittsburgh's pick has been reported and it has not i think we're pretty caught up to date on the um on the elimination draft board that i have but if anybody has any you know questions with any did Wiley get... No, no, Wiley didn't get picked. Dewan Jones, I thought I... All right. Whipler's still there. Oluwatimi's still there. Jarrett Patterson's still there. So I don't know if the Rams are interested in going back to center, but there's some good centers. Um, I'd like to see them take um, either one of those guys... I had them both as fourth round grades, so you know the fifth is coming up. I think that would be good value. Yeah. If they wanted to go, I had center. Ola with Timmy and Whipler in the third. I had Patterson in the fourth. I well, I thought I don't know what it is with Notre Dame prospects this year, Alexis. I really thought I was going to like Patterson a lot more, and I just didn't. Same thing with Foskey. It wasn't. It, it's. I'd say this is Notre Dame's worst class in a while. Okay. Which is saying a lot because they're. It's not a bad class but it's just very weak for i think what we're accustomed to coming out of notre dame but i think i think this year and next year are going to be kind of weak classes for them i mean justin i didn't know that justin adamola is actually able to be drafted this year i have for I don't know why I thought he was coming back. The Steelers took Nick Herbig out of Wisconsin, and I like that pick for them because I like Nick Herbig, and they like their Wisconsin edge guys, like yeah. TJ Watt. I so like that. they did it again. And that means that Chicago is on the clock. So I, I like Nick Herbig a lot because I think, you know, he can rush the passer. He can help you as just an off-ball linebacker, and the Steelers go out and getting him. That they're really just... Man, 
They're really killing it. The Steelers have really killed this draft. Adam is going to be over the moon. I, he is over the moon because I talked to him this morning and he's he can't even believe it. I mean, I don't know how he can't believe it. The Steelers just dominate every draft. How many times are we like, oh, that's a good player. The Steelers get him. Like, what? I'm not getting very good reactions to my tweet on Twitter when I said, Rams fans, how are you feeling about the Rams drafting Stetson Bennett? Someone did say, though, what I said, that they would have liked it if it had been in the sixth round. And I don't see Chicago's pick yet. I see the comments about the Rams are tanking for Caleb Williams, but I'm not inclined to believe that you take Stetson Bennett in the fourth if you're tanking for Caleb Williams. I don't know, maybe. No, they're they're not tanking for Caleb, Caleb Williams. Yeah, they're they're not tanking. I think if anything, they're getting guys that can. <laughs> I see you <laughs> disagree. I hard disagree. Alexis and I are just gonna be like going at each other. You're the only person, by the way, who I've seen that is like not bummed by that pick. I like Stetson Bennett. Uh, I didn't... don't really like his personality. That's just me getting personal, so I'm gonna stop. I would have liked this pick in the sixth round. I just I'm more I'm more annoyed that this is a fourth round pick. I especially with where the Rams are. Like I also felt like they would address just some other positions that I think weren't not that I knew they were gonna draft a quarterback, but I just didn't if it was gonna be in the fourth round, I would have preferred like a Jaron Hall. I would have liked a Clayton Tune in the fifth. Oh yeah, I mean I, I had a higher grade on Hall, but I actually really like Bennett. Like, I mean, here's my thing, okay? They're, they're never going to pick everybody I want, but if they can get in that range of guys that I want, that's cool. Like, for a while, I was like, okay, actually, like, Stetson Bennett, low-key, like, that might actually, I don't know. The Bears took wide receiver Tyler Scott out of Cincinnati. Kind of surprised by that, actually. Very, very fast receiver. Can make plays after the catch. Um... I was surprised Tucker went before him from Cincinnati. I thought he was the better receiver, but Scott is a top 10 receiver for me. So I think this is a good pick bears get another weapon for Justin Fields and he can help you with that speed. AT Perry still there. I'm hoping I, I don't know how he's going to, but I'd love to see him follow the Rams. And like I said, I, I knew people were going to hate on the Bennett pick. I get it but I like it. Well, he's just, he's a backup. So he's a backup people... now, but he has a chance to start at some point. I think he does. So Minnesota, I don't see their pick is in yet, but they are on the clock. Then you got New England, and then we're entering round five.
Painter said that Derek Carr has been a sounding board for him over the years. The two just spoke after the pick. Carr told Hainer he was excited to mentor him. That's actually really cool. So we're about to enter round five. I'm going to step away for a second. I have to go take care of something in the kitchen, but I'll be right back. The Rams don't pick for another 30 picks. So <laughs> don't worry. I won't be gone for like five minutes. One sec. Sounds good. All righty. So I guess you're just going to have to have me. I guess that's just gonna ha how it's going to have to be. Now, let me just say this uh, in regards to the Stetson Bennett move. What I think is kind of lost on a lot of people is that the Rams can pick any of these quarterbacks, and Sean McVay is coaching them at the end of the day. They're going to the Sean McVay system. They're going to be coached by Sean McVay. They're sitting behind Matthew Stafford. To me, I don't think you can go wrong. I think you could pick whoever the hell you want, and I think it's going to work out for the most part. As the Vikings select Jay Ward, safety out of LSU, he actually broke into my top 10. I thought he was a little underrated, and I'm happy for him. That's a good pick. So LSU, Jay Ward comes off the board. I had him as a fourth-round grade, and... Now the Patriots will wrap up the fourth round here. We'll go into the fifth round. But in case anyone's interested, I am up updating the board. Oh, the Raiders have traded up, and there is some speculation this could be for a quarterback. Shout out to Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, Qui Gon Jinn Joe, I have never, and no offense to everyone else, but I have never seen as detailed, oriented, as thoughtful, as just incredible comments as I've seen from this man. And and I just I have to give a shout out. I have to give credit where credits due. I love watching. I, I love looking at every single comment you make, and I don't have. I like time to, to, you know, I look at every comment. I don't have time to comment, like respond to every comment. I try, but I really, really appreciate you. I just wanted to give you your, your, you know, you know, your praise there. I think everyone should know that, that you are the goat and there's a lot of people in here that are just awesome. And I love all of you. I just, your comments are a breath of fresh air to read Every single time I drop a video or a podcast or a live stream, you're always underneath and you, you got a huge, long, like DBQ essay and it's just awesome and I appreciate it. So thank you, Qui-Gon Jin Joe. I hope you are still here and are still watching and yeah, that shout out's for you. I appreciate it. Um... All right, so the, let's see here. The Raiders traded up, and I think this this will be interesting. I could see a quarterback taken. Who do you guys think? Who do you think the Raiders trade up for? Wrong answers only. No, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, <clears throat> let's see.
I, if it's a quarterback, I think. Who are they picking? Did they announce the pick? It's Aiden O'Connell out of Purdue, and I compared him to Jared Goff. I think this is a good pick for the Raiders. You get a guy that can sit behind Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm here for it. I am here for it. So the Raiders traded picks 144 and 214 of the Patriots in exchange for the 135. So Las Vegas could select Aiden O'Connell. That's what happened. So that concludes uh, round four. Round five is is starting, and we got the Jaguars on the clock. Those of you who are wondering when the Rams pick, well, A for a while. Pick 26 uh, in this round, so 161. So we're more than 20 picks away. I'm back. Hey, it's my friend. <laughs> um, all you missed is Ian O'Connell went to the Raiders. That's how long it took for them to... They traded up, and then they just sat there forever to announce their pick. And... They Eden, Eden O'Connell? O'Connell? Yeah, I like it. I mean, he gets to sit behind Jimmy Garoppolo. We, we both compared him to Goff. I don't know. I think it makes sense. Pick uh, 128 was um, Stetson Bennett. <clears throat> I 
don't know why it just played. It. Don't you hate when you go on like a website and it automatically plays like a s sound or something? It starts playing like a mm -hmm. a video. That I hate that. <laughs> like, stop doing that, please. It's really annoying. Um, Yasir Abdullah just got drafted. Oh, did he? That's a really good pick. I whoever. Yeah. And the commanders have traded up with the bills. They go, they move up 13 spots and give up a 215th pick. I wouldn't mind the Rams doing that. If that's all it's going to take to move up 13 spots. You give up like a late pick. I don't know. Sign me up for that. You know? How are you feeling about the draft class, guys? Okay, so we're at pick 137. So we got about like 30. We got a while. I'm going in actively as we speak right now. I'm going in and updating my YouTube short with Stetson Bennett, and I'm putting Rams tags in there. <laughs> so hopefully it pops off. But that's actually a good feeling when you put that much work into those. Like I told you, I was doing those YouTube shorts. I even, I even asked you like your opinion on some of them, but when you put in the work and like go through and do those, cause they take a while. Like I did about 80 of them and I had a goal of doing like 200, 250 or whatever. I didn't do that, whatever. I didn't make it, but it's cool that the Rams drafted two guys that I did do those YouTube shorts on. Cause I was not, I, I was assuming like with my luck, they would do guys that, like you said, like guys, we weren't even, they weren't even on our radar. So The Colts pick is in. I can't help but feel that I've missed a pick. Um, Yeah, because the Bills traded down with the Commanders, and the Commanders... Who the hell did the Commanders take? That's what I'm trying to figure out. It just says that the Jaguars took you seer. That's all that I have here on my timeline. Did the Colts trade up with no? Because the Commanders traded up. So yeah, they the Commanders definitely made a traded pick. up with the Bills. Oh, KJ Henry was who the Commanders took. Okay. So now, okay, the Colts just took Darius Rush, the corner out of South Carolina. That's gonna. I know a lot of Rams fans wanted him. Man, Chris Ballard is really having himself a draft, isn't he? Colts have done a nice job. What I find hilarious, Alexis, is that you could argue as great of a job as they've done, their best pick was in the fourth round in Anabare. <laughs> that value is just not going to be able to be matched by, I don't think, anybody. I, it's going to take me a while to forgive the Rams for not picking him. But, I mean, that's how it goes. Okay, so the Cardinals pick is in after the Colts take Darius Rush. <clears throat> 
When should I order my pizza, guys? I think I normally order it at the end of the fifth, so that way I have it by the sixth round, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not, like, super hungry at the moment. I think I'm going to have mine at around, like, three-ish. <clears throat> Did my camera just move? Did anyone see that? Um, I can't tell. I mean, it looks a little slanted, but... It did. My dog just walked over my wires because you can't have nice things. <laughs> and that's just what your dog does. Yeah. At this point in time. NFL uh, Draft Tracker still hasn't updated the Jaguars pick. <laughs> it's behind. It's Clayton Card Toon for the Cardinals. God, I'm so angry. Yeah, I was about to say, God. A lot of, I had someone text me who's not a Rams fan, and their impression was that the Rams liked Hayner, and then they saw the, the Raiders take Hayner, and then they panicked. But I, I sadly confirm. think, I sadly think the Rams just liked Stetson Bennett. I and was we're told, go for him. I was told yesterday that Stetson was near the top of their board. <laughs> so that's a guy that they had targeted for today. So they feel really good about that pick. And I can't honestly blame them. You know what I mean? I think, I think it's a good pick. You were the only person I'm seeing say that. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I need I to didn't. give myself like three days. To Did like... you just see that? I didn't like that at all. I forgot to select ticker, so put this giant ass banner. <laughs> it just looks so awkward. I didn't see it. I'm trying to figure out. So Arizona took Clayton Tune, so that means Cleveland is up. Okay. Yeah, so the Cardinals, they took Michael Wilson, they took Clayton Tune, they took um Why am I blanking on who they took? No, they took Paris Johnson. Who else did they take? The use uh, John Gaines and oh, they got Ojulari and Garrett Williams. <sighs> yeah, Garrett Williams, a really good pick. Yeah, they've had a good draft. Yeah, Garrett Williams, very solid. The Browns um, just took Dorian Thompson Robinson out of UCLA. Wow, wow, fifth round, huh? Okay, to kick off the fifth. I think DTR is somebody that can be used in sub packages at the start. Um, I don't know if he's ever going to be, you know, a franchise quarterback or anything like that, but you know, I know UCLA fans in here will disagree with what I'm saying, but you know, that's just how it be sometimes. So DTR is going to be backing up Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. <clears throat> this is the DTR live stream. It's it's DTRception. DTR announces DTR getting drafted. Mm. 
That's, That's weird. True. I still don't see Indianapolis' next pick, but you got Indianapolis, Cleveland, the Jets, New England, and Carolina as your next uh, few picks. Mm. We're at pick 141, the Rams pick at 161, so we're 20 picks away. Julian wants to know our opinion on making a trade for Young or Sweat. Um... I like both of those guys, but I don't see the Rams doing that. Actually, I could see the Rams trading for Chase Young because of the name value there. That seems like a guy I that they would, that. they would like. Um, yeah. I'm not entirely convinced that the commanders will trade him, though. I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't need them to do that. You know what I mean? I, I want them to just build out a team, you know, develop some guys. I, I don't need them to go crazy with you know trading again that's what put them in this kind of hole now you could say what you will you know when the super bowl but you got to be responsible now you got the super bowl now be responsible <laughs> don't go crazy and use all of your draft capital you got a first round or an extra i'd like to pick in the first round it'd so be the, fun to do that <laughs> the vikings traded up with the car uh with the colts and I have to imagine this is a quarterback because there's been a run on quarterbacks. And I swear to God, if this is Jaron Hall, I'm going to be. Well, it's Jaron Hall is going to get drafted eventually. So it, I need to just accept that. It's So the Vikings traded up with the Colts. Yeah. So they're on the clock now at 141. And wow, I'm... the Colts, the Colts snagged rush <laughs> the third pick in the fifth round. And then they trade down. How far did they trade down? Oh man, they trade down to twenty third in this in this uh, round. The Rams have the last fifth round pick, compensatory wise, of this uh, round. They also have they have one seventy seven, one seventy one, one sixty seven, one sixty one. So that's where we're at right now. I'm so prepared for this Vikings pick to be Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall's a stud. I, I like he nothing is. the Rams did is going to change that for me. I believe Jaron Hall it would have been the better pick than Stetson. That's why I gave it a minus. But I really like Bennett, and I think Bennett works with the Rams. And he, I think Blaine mentioned it. He had texted me. Um, he, his closest athletic comp on RAS is Russell Wilson. The pick is in for the Vikings, which isn't surprising because they traded up, but I do not see... I think I'm going to order my pizza in a few minutes because I'm getting a little hungry. I also feel like a running back hasn't been drafted in a, in a while. I feel like the last running back that was drafted was uh, Roshan Johnson by the Bears early in the fourth. Yeah. It's weird because this running back class is insane. It's so good. It's so depth filled. It's so deep. I mean, see, I actually didn't really think that about this class. Oh, I, I loved it. Which is why I was like, I don't think the I want. There's no one that I would want the Rams to take unless it was like in the seventh round. That was why Maybe I didn't six. want Swift. Because I did I mention yesterday, Brad Holmes called up to trade DeAndre Swift to the Rams, and the Rams hung up. Um. No, but real quick, the Vikings just took Jacqueline Roy, defensive tackle from LSU. 
We used to be at Pitt. That's right. But, he did transfer. Yeah, I had a six okay, round interesting. on Jaqueline Roy, I think is how you say his name. I really thought that was going to be a quarterback with the run on quarterbacks going on, but there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine quarterbacks drafted so far, which is just wild because I think this is, like we've said, this is like not a really good class for quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm really Next curious year, to see who's going to get Jaron Hall. And honestly, <laughs> hear me out. Rams have four fifth round picks. I wouldn't be shocked with only two quarterbacks in the organization right now if they just also drafted Jaron Hall. They I would love for three them to draft. Honestly, if he falls, they might, and I think that he will win. He'd win the backup spot. I think the like, whole point of that two. and the logic behind that. It's not just because I like Jaron Hall. The logic behind that is real because Stetson is the, like he was their guy. He can back up Stafford now. Jaron Hall can be a franchise quarterback. I believe Stetson Bennett could take over, but I think Jaron Hall has legitimate like Jalen Hurts level upside. So that's why I gave him a second round grade. I think he needs to get better with, you know, reading the field. He makes half field reads on film, doesn't make the full field read. So he's not ready yet, right? So if he was the third guy, you know, behind, um, you know, Stafford and Stetson, then I don't know. I, I actually would sign off on that. Well, and that's why I really preferred Hall to, to Bennett because I think Hall can be a franchise quarterback in the NFL. I do not think that Bennett can. Maybe that, I'm wrong. Every, everyone's like, I mean, a oh, lot of people don't think that. You know, so, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's always, you know, there's always guys that are backups in the NFL. That's way more common than being a franchise quarterback. So it's not necessarily, you know, unheard of or anything, but I just would have preferred in that position with Jaron Hall there. Yeah. Oh my God. I would have loved it if they would have Well, I mean, Hall. I, Alexis, I love Jaron Hall. So trust me that yeah. that would have been my pick, but I, there's something about Bennett. You look at the Georgia quarterbacks that came out, like they had Justin Fields and Fields had to transfer. They had Jacob Eason, Eason had to transfer. Jake Fromm, I think a lot of people are scouting the helmet here. Jake Fromm was not a quarterback prospect I wanted anything to do with, okay? I actually, going into it, I expected to not like Stetson at all. And the more I watched him, I was like, Yo, why do I like Stetson Bennett right now? Because I was one of those people that would dog on him, make those jokes, like, okay, yeah, he's older, whatever. I'm telling you, like... I think it's also a personality thing, though, and we don't have to get... I think it's also a lot well, of people don't like the way that he off... They don't like the way he presents himself. Sometimes it's fun on the field. Like, I do kind of like it when players... But I think that Stetson has kind of gotten air to him just as... I, I think a lot of people don't like the vibe that he sometimes puts off. Yeah. I mean, as a person. And so that throws a lot of people off where it makes them hate him even more. I think the three like, this... reasons they hate him. He's short for a quarterback. People still don't like short quarterbacks. He's short. He's old. And he got arrested uh, for public intoxication and didn't go to the senior bowl. And I understand how that looks, but you know well i think before that um incident the personality thing was already a thing because that was why i originally was not like super into him what is what is happening right now like who is so the browns drafted someone oh. i really like by the way, cameron mitchell the corner from northwestern i like um, cam mitchell yeah i would have loved for their I, the Rams to, you know, take him, but the Jets just totally took a Banacanda. They did? Yep. So there's the next running back. We didn't have to wait long. Oh man, I love a Banacanda. Fourth overall running back on my board. Second round talent. Edwin pointed out in the chat that Deuce Vaughn is still available. AT someone said AT Perry. Kenny McIntosh. 
there's going to be some guys I definitely wouldn't mind the Rams taking late. I mean, well, we're in the fifth round, so this is considered late. Ish. Jim Stetson is going to be 26 in October. Someone asked if there's a trend with the Rams taking older players. I don't know if it's intentional or not. They definitely seem to do that, but I, I can't say that it's an, an intentional thing of them wanting to purposely draft older players. Can I be great? Thank you so much for the 10. I want my backup to be Thank a you. fighter. Stetson is a dog. He walked on to Georgia and fought his way into a starter and a two-time champ. I love that pick. That is a really good point because he wasn't given anything. He worked his tail off to lead the Georgia Bulldogs, the best program in the country over the last, you know, however many years. And he was a walk-on quarterback. You don't see that very often. Not anymore. So I love that take. Can I be great? And I think it makes a lot of sense. And that is not even something that I even think of. Like, I'm just talking about the tape. When you think about that, he's gone through a lot. That makes a lot of sense. And there's a pattern here. Because what did Sean McVay and Les Snead say last night, if you guys watched? They talked about grabbing guys like in the draft that had been through stuff. Byron Young had the Kurt Warner-esque, you know, store, like dollar general to NFL story, right? So you had him. You had, you know, Avila, who's been through a lot. And then you had Kobe Turner. And now you have Stetson Bennett, who knows what it's like to have to work your way up from literally nothing. So... Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Baker, yeah, Baker Mayfield walked on, didn't he? I think people I are, are pointing that out. Maybe I think at Oklahoma, maybe. Yeah, no, um, Texas Tech. I think it was. Texas I thought that. Tech. Oh, okay, I thought he walked on. I thought he like transferred to Oklahoma and then walked on there. Yeah. I don't so. Remember. Uh, that might have been it. I know he was behind Patrick Mahomes, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> about that. Mm -hmm. Um. The Patriots are on the clock, by the way. I think the oh no, we're at 144. Never mind. I thought we were at 154. A dog, Pain. appreciate the five. Jake, is there any running backs left Thank that's you. compared to Isaiah Pacheco? That's an interesting. Um, Kenny McIntosh, no. not exactly, but you know, no. McIntosh. Do you remember the running back from the Bills? Uh, God, what the hell is his name? Singletary? Fred Jackson. Oh, you're on way back. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you, you remember were Fred about, Jackson? Like, that that's my comp for him. Kind of, you know, he ran a four six. He's a taller back. Doesn't have a ton of long speed. I mean, I'm inclined to say Keaton Mitchell, but I just don't. He does. I don't. He's not as filled out. That's tough. The Isaiah Pacheco in this draft. And Blaine, if you're if you're still watching, hit me up with a text on who you think it is. I mean The Panthers pick is in. Zazavian Valaday? I could see Valaday. He's not as powerful. I, I think that's the problem is that Pacheco has so much pop for being as fast as he is. Also, low-key, I'm seeing Whipler in the comment section. The Rams could, like, low-key land Luke Whipler in the freaking fifth I round. I would like that. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. I wonder why he fell. I mean, I like Olo with Timmy more, but the point is that they have a chance that they want to bolster their center spot. They could do that.
Man, I'm kind of bummed that we don't have the chance to get Cameron Mitchell. But that's a good pick. All right, Blaine said Valade probably closest. That's what I was thinking. Keaton Mitchell's just not big enough. Because, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Pacheco is like what? He's at least 5'10". Like, Mitchell's 5'7". Yeah. Ooh, the Panthers took Jamie Robinson, the safety from Florida State. Interesting. It's a good pick. He almost came on our show. We just couldn't work out the schedule. Yeah. It was a busy year. I mean, we... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've liked the Panthers draft so far, to be honest. The only pick of theirs that I am a little skeptical on is I thought they reached on DJ Johnson. But... They solid. definitely reached on DJ Johnson. They had Bryce Young... Jonathan Mingo, I, I kind of thought they reached on him too, honestly. Then you got DJ Johnson, Chandler Zavala, now Jamie Robinson. They've had a, yeah, they've had a pretty solid draft. Antonio, uh, Antonio Mafi was another UCLA interior offensive lineman that got picked. The Patriots got him. I feel like they reached to get on offensive linemen, and I love yeah. that for them. That's just their brand. That is exactly what they do. <laughs> just, I love that for you. Um, <laughs> let's see. A dog asked me if A dog. Thank you so much for the two. Appreciate you. Um, a dog asked me if there's a good kicker for us to draft. So I am on mm -hmm. NFL. There's no kicker right that I now. would. There's no. Oh, well, he's asking you, but I would say there's no kicker that I would draft at this moment and left. Isn't like BT Potter the only one that could even get drafted that's still available? Probably, but I don't know that he will. I, I think the only two that like were talked about as being like probably going to get drafted were already taken, and that was Moody and Ryland. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing here. <clears throat> I think Potter is somebody that I'd be interested in priority for agent. I think whoever is and think about this. This is the good thing about the Rams. Everyone knows that they don't have a kicker. Everyone knows that they don't have a punter. They're going to get the priority kicker and punter on their team. Think about that, you know, in UDFA. I think that's something to, to feel somewhat good about not making too much of a big deal about it. It's a freaking kicker at the end of the day, but you know, in the same breath, we saw how much a kicker means with, uh, Sam Sloman. <laughs> <laughs> he, Sam Sloman kicked in a XFL game this year. Uh, I forget who it was for, but I was watching him because the battle Hawks were playing against his team and I tweeted something like, I can't believe my eyes, like Sam Sloman. And then he missed the kick, and I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> That's so sad. Guys that have been through adversity, think about that. Those are the guys the Rams are targeting. <laughs> adversity, high character, um ready to play like you think right it's away. that calculated i mean i think that's kind of what they're looking at i mean if you look at the trend they're definitely focusing on high character and ready to play like guys that are ready to play right away that can compete So are the Saints going to make a pick or are we just going to have to wait until tomorrow? They picked Jordan Howden, the safety from Minnesota. Okay. That is the first pick of someone I am not familiar with of the draft. And it's round five, pick 146. And if you were going to take a secondary guy from Minnesota, I would have thought Terrell Smith would have gone first. Yep. I have a third run grade on Terrell Smith. 
He was in my top 10. I'm a big fan of his. If you remember the uh, the guy out of UCLA that was a former running back turned corner, Fabian Moreau, that was my comparison to him. Tennessee Titans pick is in. Hasn't been announced yet, but it's in. And then you got Chicago, Green Bay, Buffalo, Seattle coming up. Oh, and we are at pick 147. How do I see the Los Angeles Rams on the ticker already? I thought we didn't pick to 169. Hold on a sec. I think they traded up. No, I guess it is 161. No, I think it's 161. I think they're just like showing a lot. Cause that so if that's 147, you got 148 for 950. Yeah, no, that's accurate. They're at 161 still. So we're getting close. Guys, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also, be sure to uh, subscribe. We're at over 300 people in here we have 98 likes so if you could hit that thumbs up button you might have to exit out of the chat for a sec to hit it but if you're on mobile device but really does help out the channels it basically tells the algorithm hey this is where the party is and then youtube sends people that our way Uh, remember yesterday we were talking about Tyson uh, Bajan and I don't remember why, but we were. And I said that his fan club comes at me in my comments for saying his name wrong. Cause I said, Bajant. as soon as I got off the stream, Alexis, literally 2 AM and I'm getting hate mail from people saying it's Bajant. I'm like, I can't. Why do people, why are people so concerned with that? By the way, the Titans just took tight end Josh Wiley out of Cincinnati. Interesting. He is someone who grew on me. I'll say yeah. that. I, I, I think feel like I didn't give him a here in the fifth round, though. Yeah, I think this is a this makes sense. Oh, by the way, the Bears pick is already in. That was so fast. They literally said pick is in for Tennessee, announced it, and now they've already got the Bears pick in. I think at some point you're going to have to pick a corner, though, if you're the Rams. You have to. Like, numbers-wise, I mean, it's like you have to. Like, you, like, only you have three. Not. So I don't like, care if you like all three of them. What if one of them gets hurt? I mean, you only have three on the roster, man. They, that, honestly, that tells me that they're probably going to bring back, like, somebody like um, Troy Hill. Or there's just someone like late. There's there's some late round guys that they just really like. That's you know? true. They could have really high grades on some late round guys that they know will fall. Um, Bears pick is in at 148. I've liked what the Bears have done. I feel like position wise, I've really liked what the Bears have done. But there's been some. I don't know. I, they haven't picked my favorites available, but can't complain. I'm not going to lie. Carlo uh, just mentioned 
Voorhees. Good talent, has the medical red flag, but was cleared to return at some point this year. Fifth round's where I have him. Ooh, the Bears took Noah Sewell out of Oregon. I, I thought I'd like him pick. more, but he I had him as a fifth round grade, so that's not a bad pick. You know who's still there? If I'm not mistaken, Alexis, Henry Toa Toa is still there. Yeah, he is, but I knew that he it's would fall because of, he just has injury concerns. Injury concerns. He's more of the old school linebacker, doesn't really fit the new school game. I, I mean, I get it. I think it makes sense why he would fall. It's just he's a pretty big name coming out of Alabama. Um, a guy that Blaine, shout out to him, a guy that Blaine told me to look up, and I actually really liked his game, D. Winters from TCU. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I, I thought he I do think he's really going to go in tape. like the sixth or the seventh, though. Servasier Dennis also is another one that really – showed up on tape i liked ivan pace jr although he is he's an acquired taste if you don't look if you don't want a denzel perryman in your linebacker room then you're not interested in ivan pace jr um my sleeper would be shaka hayward from duke i think he's got a similar structure and build to ernest jones so if you're looking for this year's ernest jones i think it would be shaka hayward um owen pat poe is interesting i know he was mentioned he's a little small um and then Mah- mahamud uh, diabadi he is a linebacker he's also an edge like a pass rusher he's an intri- he's an intriguing Ooh. one you know this is this is really weird the packers just drafted quarterback sean clifford out of penn state what that is a ma- one it's a massive Holy reach because reach that is a ma- I didn't think he would be drafted, but secondly, well, I guess I can't say it's surprising they drafted a quarterback. I mean, they are going with Jordan Love. This is clearly a backup situation, but I it would have been fun to have Jaron Hall and Jordan Love on the same team. Um, this is a little. This is just very weird. Not that I care so much because I'm not a Packers fan. That's very bizarre to me. A.T. Perry is still available. Bills pick is in. So you got the Bills, the Seahawks, the Lions, and then Tampa as your next on deck. We're about 11 picks away from the Rams picking, assuming they stay there. Because we're at pick 150, the Rams pick at 161. This was that trade down to start the the fifth round when Washington trade up for KJ Henry. That Clifford pick by the uh, Packers is the first pick that they've made that I I'm going to say it. Don't like. That pick is absolutely horrible. That is a horrible pick. That, I mean, I don't want a dog on the guy. I, I mean, I, I, I just... Sean Clifford was the 20th ranked quarterback by uh, Brugler. 20th. 
Like there are people that are making fun of Stetson Bennett to the Rams saying that he was undrafted. He's not an undrafted player. He was going fourth or fifth round. Sean Clifford is a guy that I have Penn state fans that I know that were telling me I cannot wait when Sean Clifford leaves. And he just, he went in the fifth round. My God. No wonder why Aaron Rodgers wanted out of there. I just, I, I don't know, man. If you were going to go kind of out of nowhere like that, grab a guy like that, I would have grabbed Lindsey Scott out of Incarnate Word. Seattle's pick is in. By the way, the Bills drafted Justin Shorter, wide receiver from Florida, which is higher than I projected him going, but... That's a really... Yeah, that's kind of a reach. I mean, you got guys like A.T. Perry still available. I Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, if anything, this was kind of the argument for Anthony Richardson, is that this was his best receiver. That's not a flex, Alexis. But let's let's give Shorter his due. Shorter is a really good blocker, and he's going to be able to play special teams. He cares. You know what I mean? I think that's something Seattle that took, should be said. Seattle took Mike Morris, the edge out of Michigan, which is kind of where I thought he would fall. In the fifth round, not to specifically to the Seahawks, but just... I mean, he kind of looks like a Seahawk now. Yeah. I kind of see it. I mean, I thought Mike Morris had some weird tape. Like, he, I could not figure out where I liked him. Edge defender, interior defensive line. I ended up putting him as an edge defender. I gave him a sixth round grade, but he's interesting. Like, I actually liked his tape. I mean, it was weird, but I liked it. You know how I feel? I'm going to make a prediction here. I feel like the Rams, he doesn't fit what they look for. But I kind of feel like the Rams are going to end up with Andre Carter the second at some point in this draft. I just feel like they're going to end up with him. I'm I calling my shot about now. Him. I'm calling my shot I'm... now because I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I just have a weird feeling that's the type of guy that they'll go after. But I mean, if these if these uh, linebackers keep falling, I mean, I'm sure the Rams wouldn't mind dipping in the. Well, we're ten picks away. We're nine picks away because we're at one fifty two. The Lions Still good players pick is in. Um, is Antonio Johnson still there? Or did he get picked? Yeah, he's still available. Wow, that's he was wild. My third safety. Although he's my second. Safety's kind of been a little devalued, but we did see a lot of safeties go. It just wasn't him. Lions pick is in. They're showing the war room. Guys, my pizza is almost here. I hope it doesn't get here like while the Rams are picking. <laughs> that would be. That's probably, that's literally what it looks like is going to happen. Um, I'm sorry. Aaron Wilson's the only one reporting picks now, apparently. Colby Sorsdahl from William and Mary. So this is one of those. I finally don't know who the hell this is. Yep. This is, this is someone. The first guy I didn't know who it was, was the safety from Minnesota. Uh, like Jordan Howden or whatever. And now it Colby Sorsdale. So he was listed as Brugler's 53rd offensive tackle in the draft. Okay. Bucks pick is in. Guys, we're getting closer. Pick 153 is in. The Rams are at 161. We are now at the point where the TV is ahead of all the reporters, and that bothers me. <laughs> but this happened last year on day three, too. 
I think the reporters just get to a point where they're like, we can't just be doing this Fast and Furious thing anymore. So they just, and less people get told because you're not there anymore at the drafts. These picks aren't there. Yeah, I hear you. I just, <laughs> I just realized something funny. So remember I was telling you I have Penn State fans like I'm friends with that like didn't want Clifford. Well, one of them is a Packers fan. <laughs> and I'm like, how does it feel to be stuck with Clifford forever now? <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad. You, you know, it's a big day for him. I'm not trying to knock him, too. I just thought that was a mega reach. And yeah. Here's a fun fact. Sean Clifford is older than Jordan Love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's just funny. The Packers drafted a quarterback older than Jordan Love in the fifth round. Who am I going to take with my shadow draft? I got to figure that out. I say pick Trice. Did you already take him to your last pick? I don't think I did. Okay. By the way, my pizza is here, so I'm going to go grab it real quick so I can be back for the uh, Rams pick. Oh, I did pick Trice. All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So I did pick Trice. I picked A.T. Perry, Adebare, uh, Brian Branch. Audubare, A.T. Perry, Corey Trice. So I'd probably go offensive line. I'd probably go all, all the way Timmy at this point. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably go with all the Timmy from uh, Michigan. I had Servasier Dennis to the Bucks, and he was my best available linebacker. I think I had him seventh linebacker in the draft. So this is it's a good pick by them. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to update the ticker. Sorry, guys. Servasier Dennis. I'm back and I did something. I want to see if they did it, but I I hear an echo. But anyway, I um I think it's coming from your monitor, Jake. No, Olo with Timmy just went to Seattle. Damn it. It's a good pick. Can you All hear right. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, there's when I talk, there's a little bit of an echo. I didn't know if you had. Um... What's up, Jake? Oh. I see you. Has the best analysis I've ever seen in the NFT draft. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure we'll have a laugh about that one. Off 49ers pick is in, by the way. Who you think they're taking? Probably someone we like. Probably a punter. Don't don't NFC teams always take uh, people we like? Yes. Um, okay, so do. I requested something be done to my pizza just to really psych you guys out, and I really hope that they did it. Oh my god, what what are you doing? <laughs> Is this gonna get me demonetized? <laughs> <laughs> they did it. Okay. Oh, you know Lord. what goes really good with pizza? Don't say it. Ranch. Especially if you put it on top of the pizza. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> it's black olives. 
That's more disgusting to you than the ranch? Ranch, black olives, and pineapple. Alexis. I love it, and I don't care who knows. I... <laughs> It's funny, like my dad went back and he was busy yesterday. So we went back and watched like a rerun of our show. Mm-hmm. And he was like, What like I was like, what are your takeaways? And he's like, Alexis pizza is absolutely disgusting. It's really not that bad. Okay. If you like <laughs> Okay. If you like pineapple and you like black olives, it's not bad. Now the ranch, I did I was a little extra with that. I love ranch, um, but like I not knew. With <laughs> black <laughs> olives and freaking <laughs> pineapple. I'm looking at the guy. I knew, I knew this would happen. No, Alexis. <laughs> black olives grows. Pineapples, yes. So I yeah, do. It is, is a fine. little. I have noticed that people are more weirded out by the black olives being on pizza than they are pineapple. I think- what? <laughs> I love these reactions. This is what it's all about at the end okay. of the day. Here's the thing, though. Here's Why is it weird to people? There's such a thing as Hawaiian pizza, right? Yeah, so That's then you're going to put That's black the- olives okay, on it? But there's also a... But Hawaiian is also disgusting called- as it is. But there's, there's also a thing called the Supreme Pizza you know, where you have like the mushrooms, the olives, like the peppers and all that. So like, oh, by the way, the 49ers just drafted a uh, cornerback Daryl Luter out of South Alabama. Who I That is a like. very 49er pick. Yeah. Kind of under the radar, had a good senior bowl. I, uh, I don't, I don't hate it because I mean, as a football fan, like it's not a bad pick for them as a, you know, a Rams fan. Uh, the Rams didn't get like shanked with this pick. Oh, actually, I don't know. Maybe if I hear, if I get any buzz from the war room and somebody's breaking a glass because they picked Daryl Luter, I will let you know. Remember back in the day, Jeff Fisher broke his glass when um, the Titans traded up in front of him and took Doriel Green Beckham. <laughs> oh my God. All right. I'm going to mute myself as I'm eating, but I see your comments guys. And I, Hey, this is my, I eat this pizza every year. Okay. So he's okay. So you're saying pineapple and olives are both good separately. I don't know about together. Try them together. It's perfect on a pizza. It's sweet. It's salty. By the way, the chargers just drafted Jordan McFadden, the tackle out of Clemson, which I think is a reach there. Um, So Baltimore is on the clock, but anyways, I like McFadden. I had a fourth on him. We're coming up closer to the Rams pick. Jake, did you? (laughs) I don't care what anybody says. I literally don't. Wait, hold on. Someone said I was good until the ranch, and like I, yeah, like I said, I I was a little extra with that because I just really wanted to put the cherry on top of people. Are you calling yourself extra, Alexis? Well, I was just like, what could I do to make this pizza? Like, what could I, what could I do to make it even like more obnoxious? But I do like ranch on pizza, but I actually think that's more common than my pineapple and olives combination. I know a lot of people who like to like dip their pizza in ranch. <laughs> the Frankenstein of pizzas. Um, I am. Wait, when are you eating your pizza? Did you order it yet? Um, no. Oh, okay. I don't know why I thought you did. Someone said ranch is fire with pizza. Thank you. Thank you, Darren, for appreciating my pizza. (laughs) William, yes, see, William gets it. Some people get it, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Benji. Yes, let's get those likes up. We have uh, 365. We have as many people as there are days in a year.
All right. So Caillou Blue Kelly is heading to the Ravens. That is the pick. I like him. I thought I was going to like his tape a little bit more, but at this point in the draft, I mean, it's not a bad pick. That is such an interesting name. I like him a lot. I actually thought he could have gone higher. Henry said, your pizza is not as obnoxious as the Manscaped reads. And I agree. Because oh, yeah. those are, so those are insane. I know. Black olives on pizza. Can I be great? Thank you for the five. Uh, and black olives on pizza is fantastic. I don't care what anybody says. Also, I do fold my pizza, which is the proper way to eat it. And I know that's a New York thing. Thank you for the five. Can I be great? <clears throat> Who are you, my mother? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Ranch. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So where where are we at right now? We got the Ravens taking Stanford corner, Caillou Blue Kelly. Daniel Scott is heading to the Colts safety out of California. Um oh. Alexis, I can't believe I'm running on an hour and a half of sleep. Do I look like I am? No. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I didn't realize I was muted. We're two picks away from the Rams. Packers pick is in at 159. Rams pick again at 161. Now people are hating on me for folding my pizza. Some people get it. Jake knows if it ain't Whitman's, I don't want it. My guy. Is that I a love... New York place? Oh, yeah. Next time you're in New York, we will go to Whitman's and we will get Detroit style pizza. I love New York style, okay? But That's Whitman's Detroit well. style is freaking insane. It's so good. I get this Korean barbecue pizza and it is amazing. And Jake knows. I like Jake definitely knows. We go there pretty so often. So a actually. Korean barbecue pizza is fine, but not my pineapple. Are you kidding me? Is that is that question Korean barbecue chicken is absolutely fine. <laughs> the the buffalo one no, is I not agree. really my my style because the buffalo one has the blue cheese on it and i don't like blue cheese chunks i liked them when i was younger i don't like them anymore i'm rocking well, a lebron james 23 jersey because i never bought a six jersey I actually don't have an up-to-date jersey. The The closest one up-to-date, the only one I have the number right in the player on the team is Russell, but it's an older Russell jersey. I didn't get, like, a new one. It's, like, from when he was first drafted with the Lakers. And Russell Westbrook was the most current one, and then he got traded, so. Someone said black olives, green olives, onions, pineapple, ranch, green peppers, red peppers, onions, ranch. Load it and fold it. It's all good. Hell yeah, I don't judge. This is what's kept me alive. Neuro mints. They're mints? Yeah. Caffe are they just, caffeinated are you, mints. Are you just taking acid? 
and saying that it's like mints. Like no, no, they're them. no. They sponsor. I know. They sponsor my channel. I have to try that. I need to find something other than coffee because if you guys follow me on on a. This Twitter, is supposed you know, to kick coffee. And so it's like nicotine gum for coffee. So it's got, um, let's see here, 80 milligrams of natural caffeine. If you don't believe me, you should only take two a day, though. Don't go crazy. Don't don't start hitting the borderline of what the the CDC recommends. <laughs> For caffeine, I mean. Um, the Jaguars pick is in, by the way. Oh, yeah. Fast um, and Furious. Dontavian Wicks from Virginia is heading ooh. Green Bay. I like that pick. I like that pick. I am surprised. I forgot that he was still available. Okay, guys. Rams are on the clock. I'm nervous. My heart rate does this thing where, like, the Rams get on the clock, and then it's like, I feel and that. I start to get like a little. They're on the clock now. Yeah, at one sixty-one. All right, let me see if I can find out who it is. A lot of people in the chat are wanting it to be that linebacker from Alabama, Jake, which I would be happy with. I just don't want to say his last name because I always get it wrong. Toto Toto. Yeah, Toto Toto. If anyone wants to get any of these um, awesome neuro mints, link is in my description on my channel. Um, Ooh, the Jaguars picked Antonio Johnson, the safety out of Texas A&M. That's, that's great a good value. Pick. You know, I think, yeah. I think for this at one sixty one, I'm gonna take Keaton Mitchell here. My Twitter crashed, so I'm not. I'm trying to find out who it is. Haven't heard anything yet. Trey said to go to Cuts and Slices in Brooklyn to get an oxtail slice. That sounds interesting. Who'd you take in your shadow draft here, Jake? I took Keaton Mitchell, East Carolina running back. Rams pick is in. Oh, boy. Ooh. It is weird, right? As soon as they pick, even though it's not a big deal, like your heart starts, you start feeling it. I just think I've experienced every emotion that I can experience when the Rams pick is, have made a pick. So I just don't know where it's going. Like, I don't know what, what journey I'm about to go on. Nick oh, Hampton, edge, edge out of App State. Hey, there okay. we go. So I like Nick Hampton, actually. I like him a lot. I would have gone... Actually, no, Isaiah McGuire isn't here. So never mind. I was about to say I'd go Isaiah McGuire. Um, I like Nick a lot, actually. And this is about where I had him falling. So what are your thoughts, Jake? I really like Nick Hampton. Um, you know, I had, let's see, I had a third round grade on Nick Hampton. I'm a big, big fan of App State edge defender Nick Hampton. Um, you know, I think when when you look at him, you know, through your star Appalachian State, um, you know, this is somebody that, you know, I think he, when you look, he's probably not an everyday starter right away, not an every down starter right away, but he's got traits, man. He ran a four five eight. He had a one point five five, you know, ten yard split, six two, uh, you know, two thirty nine. Very explosive first step. What you're getting is a speed rusher, so it's another speed rusher. They're adding juice off the edge. Uh, a senior, you know, team captain. You know, I think he did a really nice job. Eleven sacks. In 2021, you know, he had, uh, you know, seven last year. So he came away with having 26 and a half sacks and six forced fumbles in his college career. And I think that when you look at him, he's somebody that has kind of the mold that you can really develop and build around. 
This is a great pick for the Rams. No, no mistake about it. They just got a third round talent in my mind in the fifth round, and I'm digging it. And it's at the end of the fifth round too, or the middle. So, hell yeah. This has been a pretty bomb-ass draft. I'm not going to lie. I've really enjoyed this draft. I I just, when, when I look at it, I, I just think that this is a really good pick. Nick Hampton, I, I really like this pick. I really like it. I give it an A+. Plus. I like this pick, too. And they double-dipped on uh, Edge, which we said when yes. they took Byron Young. We were like... This is probably not the the end of them taking an edge rusher. Yeah, um, I wanted Isaiah McGuire, but yeah, Nick Hampton is or a Edtonia. baller. Yeah, good pick. Um, I still, Jake, they still though haven't taken a secondary guy, which is surprising to me. Honestly, I thought that somewhere higher than this, they would they were gonna go. Yeah. No, it's true, and they're going to need to draft some corners, but I, I really like this pick here for the Rams. Nick Hampton. Thank you, Crafty. Yes, thank you, Crafty. Thank you for the yep. 10. Let's go Rams, W pick. Absolutely W pick. Because to, pick, to have right. him potentially, I don't know where what the future holds with Mike Hoyt, right? We mm-hmm. know he's good. But the future is probably Byron Young on one side, Nick Hampton on the other. And that's really exciting. That's a lot of energy, a lot of juice, a lot of explosiveness coming off the edge. And I'm a big fan of it. Will Mallory is heading to the Colts. They're getting another tight end here. Okay. Colts Uh, are having a really good draft. Oh, the Bengals took Chase Brown, the running back from Illinois. That's a good pick. I like Chase Brown a lot. Bengals took Chase Brown, yeah. That is a really good... Do you know who Chase Brown's twin brother is? Who's that? Sidney Brown. Oh, yeah, of course. I knew that. I was like, what? (laughs) Who we also liked, who went to the um, Eagles. Chase Brown, the question was, is he going to work in the NFL? And he took on like 200 carries last year and he didn't get hurt. So I I think he could. Vikings pick is in and then the Bears. I'm excited, obviously, to see who the Bears pick is going to be after this. See people in the chat saying that they they agree we need corners and secondary. I really think so, too. I'm a little confused why it's taken us so long. Um, Like I said, I thought we were going to double dip on edge. I would have thought before we did that we might have gone secondary, but um, it might have just been a situation where they they saw Nick Hampton there still and they really wanted him. Now we are up again, guys. So the Vikings pick is in, then Chicago, the Chiefs, and then we are up again. And then there's three more picks, and then we're up again. And then there's five picks, and then we're up again. So we are about to have a lot of picks consecutively um, if we don't trade out, which we might. So stay tuned. Oh, the Vikings took Jaron Hall. I knew they were going to do that. Oh, remember earlier when they traded up, I thought that was going to be Jaron Hall? That's a good pick. I didn't buy that he would fall to the fifth round, but he actually did. Wow. Mm, that makes me angry. There goes our dream of the Rams double dipping on quarterback. <laughs> it probably wasn't realistic, but it I wasn't don't care. a realistic dream. Well, I like this and I like it for the Vikings because I think the Vikings are slowly but surely starting to like be not replace Kirk Cousins, but they're kind of like, we need to maybe get someone in here and like have him sit behind Kirk and this is the guy to do it. Because like you and I both said earlier, Jaron Hall can be a franchise quarterback in the NFL for sure. Yeah. No, he's definitely got this, the upside, the ceiling to, to be that franchise quarterback. I, it's a good pick for the Vikings. It really is.
Our friend Ben Larson is going to love that pick, and that makes me angry because... <laughs> He's a really good player. Like I um, said, so you know, the Bears he can... Pick is in. Yeah, he can develop. I really hope so. The Bears pick is in, then Kansas City, then us. I really hope we take a secondary um, player, by the way. By the way... Another thing, I've been told that the Rams are not targeting players with injury history. And that's why Jaron Hall fell. According to Tom Pelissaro at the bottom, slid in part of his because of his injury history. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I think J.L. Skinner's still there. Antonio Johnson's gone, so J.L. Skinner would be the top safety. I don't think they're looking at safety. They might, you know, grab Brandon Joseph or somebody like that to, you know, who could play special teams, maybe a Trey Dean, Brandon Hill. But I don't I don't think they're going to go safety until, like, late. Ooh, the Bears took cornerback Terrell Smith out of Minnesota. It's a good pick. Wait, oh, the Bears got Terrell Smith? Mm -hmm. That sucks. Yeah, he's a stud. Third round grade on Terrell Smith. I would have liked for the Rams to take him three picks later, but... Kansas City's up and then us, guys. Okay, let's see. Who did Kansas City pick? Yeah, guys, we have like six picks coming up, right? Within the next. Yeah, so... They have what? 167, 171, 177, and then sixth round. I forget what it was. Um. Yeah, I think in my shadow draft, I'm going with uh, Davis Allen. All right, we're trading down. We are? Yep. Trading down. That makes sense. I mean, we have so many picks coming up. Who do we trade with? Uh, one oh, I still haven't seen the Chiefs pick. Let's check the chat. Have you guys seen it? All right, so trading down 
179. So the Rams are getting an additional sixth. And they're trading down with. By the way, I'm breaking this right now. This is not out there. Uh, the Packers. Yeah. So they're trading 174 and 179? Yeah. So the, the Rams are moving down. I don't know that I like trading both of those. The Chiefs took B.J. Thompson, by the way, the edge from uh, Stephen Austin. Hold on a sec. That's what I was told. 174, 179 per source. So I don't know what's going on. Well, I see Houston just picked 160, 160, 160. Well, it shows that Dallas is picking 169 now. Oh, 179. Okay. Yeah, the Rams trade They've with been Houston. Up to, yeah. Um. That doesn't even make sense. 174. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to... I was just feeding what I was given. So, 174, 179 was what I was told. The Rams traded 167 to the Texans for 174 and 259. 259. Okay. That, that makes more have, sense. They've only traded 167. So they're up again at 168, 169. They're up again at 171, 174, and 177. Okay, so we're up. We're still up in one, two, three, in four picks. So, yo, that means the Rams just acquired Mr. Irrelevant. Interesting. Jake, you're not going to like who the Texans took. Who do they take? Tau Tau. Oh, no, I don't care. You don't? No. So we got Arizona, Dallas, the Jets, and then we're up. All right. So the Rams will make the last pick in the draft. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm pretty excited for Mr. Irrelevant low key. I know that's like kind of like weird, but like, bro, like I might actually t tune in. I haven't watched the draft since night one, but I might tune in on my uh, iPad to see that. It is kind of a historical pick, right? Every year. Yeah, it's I, I don't know. There are people that like crap on it, but I think it's pretty dope, honestly. And to be fair, I mean, the 49ers picked Brock Purdy last year, Mr. Irrelevant. He ended up being pretty darn good. So 
There's some good juju right now. I forgot now. that he was like actually Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. It's One wild. of the best Mr. Irrelevant picks. I mean, historically. Ever. Yeah. The Cardinals took Owen Papa, the linebacker out of Auburn. I love him. So, of course, he ended up in the NFC West. You want to talk about, like, an athletic freak. So, Dallas is up in the Jets and the Rams, guys. Yeah, I think Pat Poe to the Cardinals, they're just going to have to find out a way how to use him because he's a little too small to be a traditional linebacker. Um, but I, I do like his his talent in the fifth round. I don't mind it. All right, so I'm still like abnormally excited for Mr. Relvin pick. I can't even contain my excitement. That's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Cowboys took a seam Richards offensive tackle in North Carolina. Corey Trice is still there. That's probably like shadow draft. I already did my, like I, I want Davis Allen, but um, Corey Trice is who I'd pick shadow draft is of course, based on, you know, what I've already done. I'm going to go out of left field here and say who I want the Rams to take in their next pick. I want them to take Payne Durham. I do not. <laughs> I don't Him, think he's bad. I just he. I don't know. I I Corey saw more. Price. I saw more with Davis Allen. Oh, Warren McClendon still. I love him. That's the tackle I want. If they go tackle at any point, Warren McClendon I think is really a sleeper. I think I like Trice. I like Warren McClendon. I like Travis Hodges Tomlinson. If they will play Jacoby Durant on the boundary. I like Whipler. I like Jarrett Patterson. I like, I mean, Koontz is all right. I mean, he's still in my top 10. A.T. Perry's still there. Keaton Mitchell, Deuce Vaughn. Zach Evans is falling, man. I thought I was going to like him a lot more. And when I turned on the tape, I just wasn't that impressed. Compared to like where other people were ranking him, I had him as my running back 11. Not like he's a bad player, but you know. Trade. The Raiders just traded up to pick ahead of the Rams again. Oh my God. This is going to be Corey Trice, isn't it? Probably. 
The Raiders, did someone leak the Rams draft board to the Raiders? Yep, it was me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so the Jets traded back. Oh my God, dude. Someone posted in my shadow draft like thing and it said Corey Trice. And I was like, nah. <laughs> like th- at that point, he's like the one guy I like really want right now. Um, if the Raiders take him, I'm still not forgiving the Raiders for giving stealing us the opportunity to take Michael Mayer. Low key, you know who I could see the Rams getting though? Who? The guy we we interviewed, um, Nick Jones. Yeah, I love. I had a fifth Nick round Jones. grade on him. Very intelligent guy. Can play safety. Can play corner. I could see it. I could see it. But I also could see. Um, What was it? Carrington Valentine. I could also see as well from Kentucky. So the Raiders have taken, they're about to show it. If they get this Jacksonville commercial. Oh, it's an NFL commercial all the way. Oh my God. The Rams are about to play. That's why. What? I saw in the chat someone said they drafted Trice because it literally just went to commercial on NHL ne- or NFL Network. So like, of course. Tell Whenever me it's no. Like I- Tell me no. Please no. No, it's Christopher Smith. Safety. Okay, Georgia. so the chat's so- trying to freak us out then. Uh, you know what? I can see what they're doing. They're trading up just in case the Eagles were going to trade up to try to get. Yeah, <laughs> probably. So that means the Rams are on the clock. Uh, I want this to be Corey Trice. Or Payne Durham. Let's go Davis Allen, Corey Trice. Davis Allen, Corey Trice, Keaton Mitchell, Deuce Vaughn. Um, I don't know any of those guys. At Perry, I mean, that I mean, At Perry is literally my third wide receiver on the board. So yeah, I I think I'd go At Perry. Oh, fingers crossed. Wait, why are they showing Tampa up now? The Rams traded back again. Hold on a sec. I think... They did. They traded back. The Rams traded back again. So now we pick at 170, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. What'd they get for it? I think at some point this is getting a little ridiculous, guys. I, I do feel this is a little ridiculous because... I'm for it, and here's why. They had the fewest number of players on their roster in the NFL going into this draft. So they're going to try to get a bunch of guys. I I'm all for it. It's not huge because it's 175, right? They trade down to 175. I will throw a fit if they trade the, if they, I will say that if they traded the Mr. Relevant selection, if they package that, I'm going to throw an absolute fit. I'm not hearing anything right now about it, but Tampa Giants are on the clock, but like Tampa literally that pick hasn't come out yet. Yeah, they're taking forever to announce this Tampa pick.
So the Rams got an extra seventh rounder to move down four spots. This is what it's all about. You're just stockpiling picks. I'm going to move down four spots. I don't have anybody that I love. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move down four spots and I'm going to get myself a seventh rounder. I love that. Payne Durham to the box. Uh, yeah, I just saw that. Bummer. How many times have the Rams traded? Like five? <laughs> so many. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really think Payne Durham was a. Th oh, our guy Eric Gray is going to the Giants. That's oh, a good pick. I really that like that pick. pick for them. I like that fit, but yeah, I, I like the fit Eric a lot. Gray. Eric Gray is a baller. Plus, he wore zero. Oh, please tell me he's gonna wear zero with the Giants. You gotta wear zero. Like I said, you're a badass if you wear zero. He wore zero and stuck out like a sore thumb in a good way. On Oklahoma. You got to wear number zero. So San Francisco's on the clock, and then we have back to back picks. So. They're showing all that Kansas City barbecue. Everyone's eating at the draft. Good. I don't see that San Francisco's pick is in. Maybe the right the Raiders are trying to trade with them to get in front of the Rams again. Jake, back to back picks for the Rams coming up here. What are you who are you taking? Because the 49ers pick is in. Oh. Oh, yeah. I love back to back picks. Um so I I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna go AT Perry for one of them. I'm gonna get Keaton Mitchell with the other. And I'm gonna flip a coin to see which one I pick first. <laughs> Cause I don't really care. <laughs> But I could also go, I could go with Trice um, or Davis Allen. I'm thinking I'll grab Trice or Davis Allen with that 77th, 177. I just think A.T. Perry and Keaton Mitchell are most likely going to get snagged by the Colts. That They have traits. Chris Ballard likes his traits. Oh, no, Trice would be a guy that they would, they would go after. I'm, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. I don't know who I want. I, I think Trice for one of them. The other pick. In my shadow, I'll tell you right now, I'll go 74 Davis Allen and 175 uh, Luke Whipler. That way I can get a center. Yeah, I, I'm going to say Whipler draft. and Trice. So I'm going to go Davis Allen in my shadow draft because I haven't picked any of those positions yet in my shadow draft. I'm going to go Luke Whipler at 175, Davis Allen at 174, and I'll see if I get anything. It's been a little quiet, but if my you know my source gives me any information, I'll forward that along. We broke some stuff today, guys. We broke the trade with Houston. We broke the, uh, the pick of Stetson Bennett. 
We broke yesterday. We broke the Kobe Turner pick. I mean, hey, we we've broke we've breaking three things on here. Actually, mm-hmm. we broke the Dalton uh, Kincaid news that they were yep. trying to trade up. Broke the Marte uh, Mapu news. I mean, hey, we've been breaking. We're breaking shit over here. <laughs> um, God, can the 49ers announce their pick already so we can just like get a move on? Someone in the chat mentioned Jalen Duncan. I would not be upset if we took him too. I forgot that he was still available. Jalen Duncan would be a really good pick because he's got that, you know, athletic upside that you can kind of develop, you know? And I think it's it's insurance at that point. I think the Rams are sitting pretty here with a giant freaking board. They're going to get three ballers if they play in this right. And right now they have drafted really well. I really like their class. I'm hoping they don't screw this up. I don't think they're going to screw this up. Well, even if they screw up one pick, they've got the other. So (laughs) they've got two back-to-back picks here, but I still don't see who the 49ers picked. Oh, Robert Beal Jr. Okay, that he wasn't on my board. The edge out of Georgia. Man, I'm sure that Eagles are upset about that one. Well, if they get another pass rusher, what if I'm missing this? The third pass rusher? I I don't think so, because we still have Daniel Hardy. Daniel Who Hardy, really Kier Thomas, shot. Mike Hoyt. But, I mean, at the same time, you know... You add another guy. I mean, it's it's late. Okay, guys. Rams are officially on the clock with back-to-back picks. It's literally Evan's team and my team right now. Yeah, at the end of the fifth. It goes Rams, Rams, Colts, Rams. So we have three picks in the next upcoming four picks. As of now, knowing the Rams, they might try to trade one of these. Pick is in for the Rams. Okay. Ian Rappaport and Schefter and everybody has have literally stopped tweeting picks. They just they're done. I know. They're just like, you know what? They're We're done. they're like, we we've been doing this um for they did what? They did basically three rounds. They did Thursday night and last night. Today, they they weren't having it. Is that the Rams war room? No, that's not. They showed a war room. That's 49ers. Ugh. So the opposite. Give me Keaton Mitchell or A.T. Perry or Corey Trice or Jalen Duncan or I wonder Deuce why Vaughn. Perry is fallen. I could see Deuce Vaughn. I could see Deuce Vaughn. Brett said the Rams pick is up, so it's time to go to commercial, and that's so true because every time the Rams pick, it's like NFL <laughs> Network literally just shuts it off, and we don't see the, who the pick is. It's, it's so bizarre. So, it's so true. It's so obnoxious. They're showing right now. They're showing the Rams' war room on the phone. Okay, the Rams have drafted Warren McClendon, the tackle out of Georgia. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! Second round grade on Warren McClendon. You get him at the end of the fifth round. He started in two championship games at Georgia. He has familiarity, of course, with Stetson Bennett. This is a awesome pick. I am stoked. Hell yes, yeah, Sneed. A plus plus. Awesome. I yes. I'm watching his highlights right now. Yeah, this is a good pick. And like we said um, earlier. Uh, I, I, I definitely felt that they were going to go offensive line again. I think they honestly will a third time this draft. I won't be shocked if later, because they've got so many picks that like 
if they take another tackle later on, I won't be shocked. The pick is in, guys. They've made the back-to-back picks, so they didn't trade one of them. I McClendon, love. I love good pick or McClendon. We're we're giving the Eagles a run for their money of of being the Georgia. They're taking the defensive players, and we're taking the offense. I I, I oh my god, I'm so so stoked right now. I swear to God, they're, I know they're about to go to commercial because they're showing people Davis eating barbecue. Allen! Yes! Yes! Is it Allen? Per source, that- Rams are selecting Davis Allen. Yo! Let's go, Sneed! Let's go, Sneed! Let's go, Sneed! Yes! Let's go. All right. I've been pretty tame, but I'm fired up on one hour of sleep. I'm balling right now. Oh, my God. I The Rams are slaying this draft, man. They're slaying this draft. Davis Allen I had a third round grade on. He is a freaking baller. I love this pick. I don't know what my favorite pick is at this point. I I just I don't know. I I'm I'm freaking amped. I don't know if you guys have seen me this amped. I don't know if I've been this amped. I think I've been this pissed before, but I don't think I've been this amped in a good way. I mean, I'm going to bring up his scouting report right now and just read it off. And I'm sorry if I'm clipping right now in the audio, but I'm going absolutely nuts. I'm holding the microphone. That's how you know I'm going nuts. Davis Allen has the potential to be a starting tight end. He's got elite ball skills for the tight end position, attacks the ball out of the air, uses his size well to box out defenders. He had the best contested catch rate of any tight end in college. He was a senior captain, true leader on the field, has the ability to adjust and haul in passes outside of his large catch radius. He's a much better blocker in the run game than given credit for. He's He has pass protection effort. He can line up flexed out or in line. He has the ability to make plays after the catch. I didn't like his speed testing. It didn't matter, but he had a 1.59 10 yard split. Overall, Davis Allen is being slept on and should be a day two talent without question. That was my scouting report. I am so amped, Alexis. I'm so amped, chat. I freaking love this pick. I love Warren McClendon. Yes, I am so hyped. I'm so hyped. I am so hyped. I, I, I'm not I, like, why would I even try to? to not like why would I try to shut this down this is how I feel this is awesome and I was able to freaking call it like I was able I broke it I broke it and then like this is my guy bro I I literally had this in the freaking shadow draft I, I I'm ecstatic I'm so happy. I'm so happy right now. I'm s- <laughs> I I don't I don't mean to steal your thunder because obviously I got a co-host here. This isn't just me, but no, I have nothing to say. Go for I, it. Ride I your mean, wave. The Rams just got a second round tackle in my mind. The seventh overall tackle on the board. In the back of the fifth round, after trading down and getting another pick, and then in addition to that, guys. They also get my seventh overall tight end, who's a third round great, who I absolutely love, who I think is better value than grabbing Schoonmaker in the second. And I liked him. I think he's better value than grabbing most of those guys. This guy is a freaking monster. I am so hyped. By the way, we pick again. <laughs> like now. I mean, if they... 
<laughs> oh my god. I don't see that the Colts pick is in yet. Oh. I'm uh I, I I can't. I'm so I'm so psyched. Davis freaking Allen and Warren McClendon. Like you gotta be freaking kidding me, man. It's like they like red. I have Davis Allen. I had Davis Allen fifth round 150. So I actually had him in my mock draft. And once again, it continues the Rams draft guys in my mock drafts. They drafted uh Quentin Lake. They drafted um, what's his face? The the cornerback, Robert Rochelle. And now they draft Davis Allen. And I had Warren McClendon in my mock draft. I had him in the sixth round. So, yeah, I got two guys. And hopefully they, they draft Keaton Mitchell or Deuce Vaughn. Well, I think, yeah, or they go secondary. Because remember what we were saying? We're like, they still haven't taken a secondary guy. And, like, numbers-wise, I don't foresee how they can't take at least one or two. Oh, by the way, the Colts just took um, Evan Hall, the running back from Northwestern. Who I, Isn't that um, someone that Blaine really liked? Yeah, Blaine really liked him. Uh, I, I, I like Evan Hall. You know, I think he's got a chance to be an RB2 in this league and maybe a starter down the road. Obviously, he's not going to start over Jonathan Taylor, but I like the pick. I think he definitely adds to that room. All right, next Rams pick. Do you think this could be Corey Trice? I'll let you know. Um, I think it could because they met with him extensively. So I'll I'll let you know. Because the pick is in, so they are making it. They're not trading back. Like 100% confirmed per NFL Network, but I do not know who the pick is. Oh my God, I feel like this is going to be Corey Trice. I don't know why my gut is telling me that, so it probably actually won't be. I think if I hear anything, I'll let you know. It might come through um, before I hear anything, but I don't know if anybody's seen me that, like, I mean, wow, like, I'm just, <laughs> my heart's pounding. I, I'm so hyped. I love the way this turned out. The Rams took Puka Nakua, wide receiver out of BYU. Okay. So here's the thing. I like him a lot, actually. I like him, yeah. Um, And I was higher on, like, I originally had him in the fifth round, and this is, goes back to what we were talking about with, like, mock drafts. Everyone uh, was like, that's too high for him. And I'm like, it's. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was. I know a lot of people thought he was more like a seventh round pick, but... um. I watched him obviously a lot. Jaron Hall, we've talked yeah. about. Yeah, uh, no, I thought Nakua had really good spatial awareness. Like you see those two feet in bounds, those catches in college. I mean, that, that those are bonus points for me. I had him actually in my mock a couple weeks ago to the Rams, maybe even with this pick. I'd have to go search for it, but I like this pick a lot. And this is receiver which we knew they were going to take eventually. We talked about this yesterday. It was like, is it going to be a second round receiver? Is it going to be a sixth round receiver? Uh, and the answer is it was a fifth round receiver. So very interesting. I like that pick though. I am confused why A.T. Perry hasn't been picked. Yeah. So Puka Nakua is somebody I didn't get a chance to finish his eval because I ran out of time, but I actually really liked him because when I was watching the tape, like you're saying, you're watching Jaron Hall, you can't help but notice Puka Nakua. You know, this is somebody who's mm -hmm. got 6'1", 201 size. He ran a 4'5", so he's not, like, blazing fast. But 
you know, I definitely, I liked his spatial awareness just showed up on tape for me. Like this is somebody that like every time he caught the ball he, near the sidelines because Jaron Hall could throw that back shoulder fade. Um, he could keep his, his feet in bounds and really do a nice job. So I really like Puka Nakua. Um, I, he wasn't able to test the combine cause he had a toe injury, but he's yeah. a two year starter from BYU. I, I think if he can stay healthy, like this is a type of guy that, you know, could be a wide receiver for, I don't think you're getting a guy that's going to turn into, you know, one, one of the starters, but I actually like that 30 in a wake up says Ricky pro type. And I kind of see that like, that's, yeah. that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. He's a role player, not a bad pick here. I like the pick. So. Wow. I'm. I. Okay. So the Dallas just traded up by the way, and they just took Eric Scott the corner out of Southern Mississippi. So that's the third player. Now this draft that I am not familiar with. Um, so now we have green Bay, Arizona, Tampa, and then we're up again. Interesting. All right. We're in round six now. So. Rams pick twice in this round. 189 and 182 and then the seventh round they pick let's see here wait one, one oh you two, mean 192 yeah yeah uh and then seventh round is 223 234 uh 252 and 259 oh my god they they got they're they're loaded with those picks trying to see i don't see the next pick in if you guys have it the pick after dallas if, if it's been announced it might not have been <laughs> evan evan just texted me and he's like bro we got an evan evan hall <laughs> oh yeah i like totally forgot i was like oh yeah <laughs> um Hell yeah. So I'll say I really, really, really want the Rams to start taking some secondary <laughs> very badly. <laughs> Cause what's weird is I probably wouldn't even take secondary with my next pick. Cause I want Keaton Mitchell or Deuce Vaughn. I just don't think we need to back that bad. I mean, numbers wise, in terms of like, oh, well, the Packers just drafted Carl Brooks at a the defensive tackle out of Bowling Green, who we, we both like, by the way. Trice is still there. Travius Hodges Tomlinson still there. Nick Jones, Eli Ricks, Jalen Jones. Did he get drafted? Jalen Jones. Yeah, Texas A&M. Or Mississippi State, one of those. Oh, right, right. Um, no, I don't think he has. Alex Austin. He's got some fun tape from Oregon State. I like him more than uh Ray John Wright. I like Ray John Wright. Luke uh Luke Wipler is still there. Whipler, sorry, is still there too, by the way. Oh we lost her. She couldn't handle it. She could not handle the pressure. No, I'm kidding. We just lost her and she'll be back, but it's annoying. Carl Brooks to Green Bay. We're waiting on Arizona. click something and then my screen shut down so my bad oh <laughs> i was like oh yep she couldn't handle the pressure so she left <laughs> we move no i just my mouth in a weird way 
Um, okay, Cardinals pick is in, then Tampa, then we're on the clock again. Oh, I really want us to take Trice. Luke Whipler, Jalen Duncan, Kayshawn Booty. Booty. Out of LSU. Uh, we already took a receiver, though, so I don't see us doing that. Um, yeah, if they take any receiver. You know what would be absolutely hilarious is if we drafted Max Dugan out of TCU, the quarterback, because remember, they, that's who played the national championship, him and Stetson. That would be really funny. That I would actually love that. We Josh, do need, thank we, you for the two. Thank you, Eli Josh. Eli Ricks or Makai Garner. Garner's a um, safety, right? No. Well, I think it depends on who you ask. Okay, he's a DB. I, and then yeah. Eli Ricks is a cornerback. I would say Ricks. Ooh, the Cardinals just picked Keytrell Clark out of Louisville, the corner, and I liked him a lot. Yeah. that. I mean, all right. I had a seventh round grade, but he's got some upside. Don't mind it. Okay, guys. Tampa and then us. Almost there. So I got Whipler. Is Duncan still there? Yeah. Well, since McClendon's off the board in my sh shadow draft because the Rams took him, I'm going to take Jalen Duncan. No, yes. <laughs> uh, wait. Well, you're not, and you're not putting Trice because you already put him, right? Yeah, I already put Trice, okay. I think. So I'm going to say that's who, I, that's who I want here. You know what? Um, But I would also like Whipler or Duncan. I mean, obviously, I, you know me. I would like, I could take seven offensive linemen in a draft and be happy with it. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's some major cooking going on in my kitchen right now. I'm going to take Trey Hodges Tomlinson in my because I think the cornerback room needs more. So I'll, I'll add in my um, shadow draft. I'm going to add another corner to that room. Now, who would I take here um, that's not a shadow draft? I would probably go with either – I'd probably go with Keaton Mitchell or A.T. Perry because I still have him as a second rounder. He's the only second round greatest I think I still have. Um, I'm not trying to hide behind my computer, but it's yes, just you are. after – Okay, by the way, Tampa just took Josh Hayes, defensive back out of Kansas State. So that's now the fourth person in this draft that I do not know. Um, but I just need to like put my bend my legs for a little because I've just been sitting here and like my body oh, yeah. is cramping. So I apologize that I'm just like I literally look like I'm hiding behind a laptop. <laughs> Okay, yeah. guys, Rams on the clock. It does not appear that we have traded the pick. Ooh, I hope it's Trice. If I hear, I'll let you know. I'm not hearing, though. It's getting a little quiet. I mean, they're, they're going to start... They're going to start, you know, calling college free agents and stuff like that. So I probably won't have any more scoops, but hope you guys enjoyed I, the scoops. If you I, did, be sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. I hope it's Trice. I would like Whipler. I would like Duncan. I would like who else is left? Um, Nick Jones out of Ball State, who has been on our show. Pick is in. For the Rams, they kept the pick.
at this point, I think the TV just has it before. I think the reporters have thrown in the towel for the day. <laughs> They're, they've had it. and I don't blame them. Yeah. Let's see. It's like deathly quiet. There's absolutely no tweets that I'm seeing about. Yeah. I really think Keaton Mitchell makes the most sense because he's got that home run hitting ability. Deuce Vaughn does not have that speed. He's got legit 4-3 speed, so. Trice would make sense. Travius Hodges Tomlinson. But I don't would, you? I, would I feel like it has to be secondary, right? I don't think it has to be anything. I mean, at this point, you're not drafting for need. You're drafting for guys that will play on special teams. You're drafting for guys that, oh, no. Oh. There it goes. <laughs> oh. oh my god, that was so I I feel bad cuz that was like obviously a pain in the ass, but that was so funny we got that on. <laughs> Rip clip it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That was so funny. Oh, clip worthy moment. That is, oh, yeah. That is just, dear God. That was amazing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alexis. That was so funny. Holy hell. <laughs> GG's. Oh. Uh. Who'd they pick? I'm not looking at the TV. And Twitter's quiet. Travius Tomlinson! Let's go! Yeah! Shadow Draft wins again! What? Let's go! <laughs> oh, man! Let's go. We're calling our shots over here. Yeah, we are. Oh, man. 11th overall player on my board. Travis Hodges Tomlinson is the uh, the nephew of Ladanian Tomlinson. And he is a guy that I had a third round grade on. I don't know how he fell. I think it's probably just the size. Um I really like this pick, man. Uh, Les Snead, uh, my God, like just absolutely dogging the competition now. I mean, this is just so impressive, man. This is so impressive. Um, let, let, let's take a look at his at the scouting report that I got here. So Travis Hodges Tomlinson, my scouting report. He's a starting nickel corner day one. Plays way bigger than he is. He's a true energizer bunny of a player. Great athletic ability. Displays great range. Has outside starting experience. Will likely kick inside at nickel. He's He has the long speed to carry up field. True read and reactor. Has great twitchiness to stick to his receivers. Has the NFL bloodline through his uncle, Danian Tomlinson. Has the short area explosiveness. Killer instinct to be a gambler. He's a tad bit of an ankle biter. You know, he, he's not going to really go to make form tackles, but he's also 5'7", 178. But I have Travis Hodges Tomlinson could be an absolute nickel gem and turn into one of the best sl uh, slot corners in the entire NFL. Love this pick. You're getting him in the sixth round. I had a third round grade on him. Absolutely killer. Showing that killer instinct. Just absolutely love it.
I love this pick. I, I, I love it. He is just my God. I don't know if he's going to go by Trey Tomlinson because <clears throat> it looks like it, but we're <laughs> back to back picks, man. We got Davis Allen and Trey Hodges Tomlinson in, uh, in the shadow draft. Like my God. What a oh what a freaking steal, man. What a draft. What a freaking draft. This is the best draft on paper that I've seen the Rams have since I've been covering the draft. Like the to not have a first rounder and play like have this type of say I I don't know, man. I just, you talk about Nikel Roby Coleman, you talk about guys like Jason Verrett, you talk about guys like that, you know, Mike Hilton. That's what I think of when I think of slot corner, and that's what I see in Travius Hodges Tomlinson. I think he's just an absolute baller. He's just an absolute baller. Hopefully we can get Alexis Kraft back in here. <laughs> but, you know, it, it just, oh man, I am so... I'm stoked. I really am. I really, really like this draft. This is what I've been talking about. I need to see a draft like this. I mean, they have absolutely slayed this draft. Like, I, I don't know how I wouldn't give them an A-plus at this point. I don't. Their day three selections have been off the chain. And arguably, their worst pick of the day was Stetson Bennett, who I agree with. I agreed with picking Stetson Bennett. But, man. I'm really, really like what the Rams are doing. Yeah, but size doesn't really matter when you're talking about slot corners. That's the thing. Guys, I don't know if I can handle another good pick from Les Snead. I might lose it. I just, man, I, I don't know. Broncos got JL Skinner. From uh, Boise State. So Boise State Bronco is now going to be a Denver Bronco. Fitting. Hopefully we, we get Alexis back. At some point. No, Lex is still here. A.T. Perry and Trey is still on the board. Yeah, they could go after those guys. Zaire Barnes is going to the Jets. Western Michigan linebacker. 
We'll see if Alexis comes back here. Um, I'm going to have to hold it down. Yeah, guys, we have over 600 people in here. Please do me a favor if you can. Wherever you're watching this, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. On my channel, personally, I have 194 likes. Almost 600 people just on my channel alone. So if you want to go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, the like button, that does me a huge favor. It also tells YouTube that you like what you're seeing. You recommend what you're seeing, and then YouTube will recommend us. So... Um, you know, really does help me out. Let's see if we can get that up and also be sure to subscribe because we're going to plenty of content of this sort. And guys, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on here because I only got like one hour of sleep, but all I can say is if you guys haven't already checked these out, you're missing out. Cause this is why I'm awake. The, these neuro mints, I'm telling you like, We might have lost Alexis for the night, though. She can't get her camera to autofocus. Um, Wheezy Wheezy, thank you so much for the 20. Appreciate you. Yeah, I think she's gone. <clears throat> So we're holding down <clears throat> holding down the fort here. Oh, she fixed it. Guys. Guys, we have a revival. We have a revival. She's coming back. She's making the comeback. I'm here for it. You know what else I'm here for? You trying neuro. Like, really, you need to do that. Go ahead. Use my promo code. I've had one hour of sleep, guys. This has kept me alive. I've only had one. You can have two a day. I mean, you can have more than that, but I don't recommend it. Um, this thing is just kicking ass. Kicking ass. She's back. She made the comeback. I have returned. She has returned. She's a lot shorter, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> am I? Oh, I am. No, no, no. Um, it, no, no, no. It's going to work. We're going to make it work. Listen, my dog... I thought she broke it. Oh, I sent Jake a picture, so I couldn't get my camera to autofocus. Like it, it literally would not focus. So I was like, "I'm this is gonna, I'm gonna have to dip." Um, but then I turned my camera off and back on, and then it, I kind of got it working again. And now I think I'm managing it for now. I'm gonna have to look at it later. I'm probably gonna have to fix it. So, but my dog is no longer allowed to have free reign. Um, she yeah. has lost rights. She so. <laughs> Give her an inch. She took a mile. Yep. I, I don't know what else to say. You missed out, though. They drafted Travius Hodges Tomlinson. I went batshit crazy. <laughs> um, Someone asked who my wood panel guy is. Um, This is actually a backdrop. 
So this tell. is not real. <laughs> oh, but my there is wood paneling behind it, as Jake knows. Actually, there yes, is truly, yes. um, real wood behind it. I just didn't like the color of it, so I got this. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aubrey's now out of shot, as the chat noticed. Here, I'll put her. Um. Okay. So I know that I missed the Ram. Did I just miss one Rams pick? It was Tomlinson. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about that? I really um, like that. I like it. I liked Trice, but I also like Tomlinson. Um, so that I like that pick a lot, and it's a secondary, which is what I was saying. I was like, we, I wanted them to take secondary. Yeah. No, I, I feel that. I'm going. D I did Winters. miss all the other picks, though. I'm going D Winters. In your shadow draft? My shadow draft, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, the shadow draft is like, I already picked Keaton. I want Keaton Mitchell. That's who I want. So, you know. But yeah, I think I think D Winters can help you in special teams. He can help you as a true off ball linebacker. Jalen Duncan comes off the board here for the Titans. Good pick by the Titans. Really good value. Good athlete. Yeah. I'm not laughing at sorry, I'm laughing at something else. No, it wasn't. you're fine. I was laughing at just the way that I literally said out loud. <laughs> I was so mad at my dog. I was so mad. I was fuming at my dog. I didn't wasn't yelling at her. It was and it was kind of funny. Here's cause... coming my grandpa. She bothered you. Yeah. I have my yeah. I'm live right now, but you can hand it oh, to me. You're live. It's all right. They all they all okay. saw. This is what my grandpa's given me to defend against okay. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what I'm threatening her with. A fly swatter, and he said, just like slap her butt if she just. Not oh too forcefully, God. but just wave it. If I wave it at her, she gets scared and she won't come near. Grandpa for the W. <laughs> w, Grandpa. LOL. W, Grandpa. W, Grandpa. He's oh the best. Oh, my God. That's he heard awesome it. Grandpa. He heard everything when the camera fell, and I... Popped this smack a little bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he said he was like smacker well he heard me i i might have said i might have phrased it some way when he heard that and he was like what happened i might have said that i am close to murdering my dog in cold blood so i think that he oh knows. my god i didn't mean that but i was no i, I know fuming. because then my camera went turn back on and i really thought she broke my Rather I get that. I mean, I was, I was I was there when you made that investment. That's that's a big Ooh. investment. It's a big investment. Um, uh, the the Patriots just um, drafted Kayshawn Butte. Uh, that's someone I would have liked the Rams to take just for funsies. He uh, had some injury concerns. Didn't come back looking the same. I didn't love his tape. I I really didn't understand the hype. But hey, you know they they like him and they'll make the pick here and. You know, he'll be that pick. <laughs> um, so we got Eagles, and then the Rams are picking again. That's amazing. Alex, that's an amazing, amazing thing that you just said. We need a Return of the King graphic, but it's Alexis with the fly swatter instead. Return of the Craft. <laughs> <laughs> me anytime i don't like a a pick if it's the rams or whoever i'm just gonna to the camera but no reject that energy but see the thing is i don't actually have to you know i don't want to smack my dog i don't want people to think i'm abusive towards animals okay i would never but just that just holding it and having it the energy of it it scares her <laughs> you know what i mean if she sees me like wave it in the air, she'll back off. So that it's enough to just to just have it in my presence. So I took D Winters with the 189 shadow pick.
So the pick is in for the Eagles, by the way. <laughs> Alex said, where was this, the fly swatter when her pizza came? That's fair. Um, if any of you have tweeted me, I'm I'm going to check my notifications later. I have like 20. Okay, so the the Eagles picked Tanner McKee, the quarterback out of Stanford. Who By all I means. liked. I liked him. I thought he was my seventh quarterback in the draft. I thought he was like a very, very, very budget Andrew Luck. And maybe that's a little... That's giving him too much credit. But but I just I I liked him better. I think than most people. But like I thought he'd go before the sixth round. So maybe I'm wrong on him. Um. So I, um, one thing about McKee that I really liked, I McKee has an absolute laser arm. Like that's one thing I noticed. Like he can throw, you know, against his arm. body you know, off platform and he just rips it, man. That guy, that guy can rip the football, but I, I kind of felt like he was just kind of a, he's an all right pick. You know what I mean? Like I, I I'm not in love with Tanner McKee, but I, I did like the velocity coming off that, that hand. I mean, he and really throws the ball. The Rams pick is in by the way. Like I said, I don't expect to get any more scoops today, but it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> the Davis Allen scoop was the icing on the cake. Well, the the War McClendon and Davis Allen scoops were icing on the cake. I can't wait to see. Hold on. They've got Andy Reid on the screen and they're talking to him, but they at the bottom they say pick is in. So we've got Steve Evila, Byron Young. Kobe Bryant, uh, Kobe Turner, not Kobe Bryant, Kobe Turner, Stetson Bennett, um, Warren McClendon. Am I missing somebody between them? No, Davis yeah, Allen. Nick Hampton. No, it was Nick Hampton. Nick then Hampton. Then Warren McClendon, McClendon, then Davis Allen, then um, uh, Puka Nakua, then Hodges Tomlinson. And now we're about to make the next pick. Yes. That's a lot of picks. It's a lot of good picks. They're getting good football players, man. I'm freaking amped. Okay, the Rams drafted Edge O'Shawn Mathis out of Nebraska. Okay, I don't have anything to say on so him, unfortunately, because I didn't get a chance to watch this... him. I don't dislike – this is high. I, I thought he was maybe a, a seventh-round UDFA guy. Um, and the reason I say that is he was actually not on a lot of people's – like hardly any radar. I saw him a few times. And – okay, I, I'm a little intrigued here. So they went edge again. So this is the third edge rusher. Yeah, I like Here's that they, the they went edge. He's 6'4", 250. He he ran a 4'7". Um, I'm going to assume, let me guess, He he he's really athletic. He's a high RAS. Well, I mean, he ran a 4'7", so I don't know if, he, at, if I would say that. But, like, when you look at his, what's it called? The Rams are, like, obsessed with the... I'm Let's totally see. Oh, Sean Mathis, RAS. Yeah, I'm not... I, I can't lie, I'm not. Uh six five seven. I mean I don't mm. know. It's kinda out of who they normally would get. He's the thirty eighth edge according to Brugler. Um impressive physical traits, his size measurables, athletic tools plus <clears throat> but his play strength and pass rush instincts are underdeveloped. His raw talent is better than his tape, making him a potential draft and develop rusher for an NFL team. That's what he is. So they're getting a guy to develop on, um, you know, in the background. He's not going to start. He's going to be probably behind, you know, all the guys, honestly. And I I don't hate it because it's it's a sixth-round pick. Well, here's the thing. There, so it's depth, right? 
Yeah. You know, I mean, I personally want that home but, run speed in Keaton Mitchell, but, you know. Well, I feel like if you're going to go pick for depth anywhere, you should go with the position you're super thin at, which is secondary, right? Yeah. That would be my, like, my pers- like what I would think you'd want to do because you're very thin at secondary as it is. I mean, we already had three to four edge rushers already on the Rams roster before tonight. So, you know what I mean? I mean, do they yeah. just not want to play Daniel Hardy ever? Is that like what? Or Hoyt? Have they given I, up I on him? I think Daniel I mean, Hardy's ahead of him. <clears throat> like this, this is a long Daniel term. Hardy. Yeah. I, I don't get that. That's kind of a bummer. So I like the edge pick. I just, I would have preferred other guys. Like I have higher grades on Brenton Cox Jr., Lonnie Phelps. Um, oh, Hobbit. the Browns got Whipler. God, they got, the Browns got Whipler and Dewan Jones. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. What does NFL Network have to say about O'Shawn Mathis? They had Someone's him as like, a draftable prospect. They actually, they had him as in the sixth round. Someone just said, is Eric Weddle coming out of retirement? Well, we might need him to at this point. I mean, we're down to like three people on our secondary, so. Yeah, this is a trait C, uh, this is a trait C developmental pick. That's what this is. Length, 6'5", 250. He has the bend off the edge. Short area quickness. This is what NFL Network says. Uh, NFL.com uh, says, arms like vines. He's got enormous hands. Yeah. This is a guy that you draft in the sixth round, has the developmental traits, and you just let your your coaching staff do the work. It, yeah, I mean, I'm not, like, upset about it. I just feel like I would like to start seeing more picks that are, like... Yeah, this, this fall more... for A.T. Perry and Andre Carter is massive. You're right. I expect an Andre Carter, A.T. Perry, I thought was a third-round talent, like... At least, at least third. I, I had a second round grade on him. Third overall wide receiver. I think people are sleeping on him, but you know that's that's the way that is. Car- the Bucks just drafted Trey Palmer, the wide receiver from Nebraska. I thought he was a little overrated. I know he ran well. Um, I didn't really get why some wanted him on day two, much less early day three. I just, I don't know. I, I think right now this is the time you get somebody like that, but his fall doesn't surprise me. I had a seventh round, no, sixth round grade on him. So this is about where I expected him to go. And by the way, Butte, I had a fifth round grade on There's a guy that I like that hasn't really been, well, I mean, he hasn't been drafted. Um, There's actually a few guys I like at that position. A.T. Perry, I like Xavier Hutchinson. Um, I like Rakim Jarrett. I like Elijah Higgins and Andre Ayashovis. Um, He's interesting. Um, I don't see the Patriots pick. Sorry, I kind of didn't hear you for a second. Were you asking me a question? Or... No, I was just kind of okay, going sorry. through the wide receivers. No, you're fine. There was static in my ear pod, and I was scared that it was happening in my head. Oh, by the way, <laughs> the the Patriots just drafted a punter, Bryce Beringer, out of Miss, Michigan State. Bryce Beringer, first punter. That dude's got the look, too. He's got the glasses. Or goggles. I can't really tell if they're goggles or glasses. (laughs) 
I give it a P for punter. Because I don't scout punters or kickers. I don't either, which sounds mean, but I just, I, I, I mean, wouldn't even I know have how. Time. I tried last year and honestly, I think we're pretty freaking good at it because you and I were like, Ryan Stonehouse is the guy. Like, yeah, no one's the one talking time... about him and he ends up being a pro bowler. It's like, so you know what? We are qualified. We are qualified to scout punters. We freaking nailed Ryan Stone. Like, we, we got that so right. Imagine if they just listened to us. He, they wouldn't need to draft a punter. Commander's pick is in, then you've got Kansas City, Denver, Tampa, Miami. Is it just me? I don't know if anyone else in the chat feels like this, but I feel like we got so accustomed to the Rams picking so rapid fire that now I don't see their name on the screen. And I'm like, oh, this feels like an eternity that we're going to have to wait. Because I was just sitting I know. so like... Jordan Rodriguez tweeted out, even though I've done as much as I've done, it seems to still go over others' heads. The Rams believed in me, so I'm going to make sure that this pick right here is one of the greatest picks that they've ever had. Trey Tomlinson on the phone just now. I feel that. I totally feel that. Um, I didn't play football. I, I played baseball. And I don't know why. Size should not matter at all in baseball. But being a shorter kid at the same size that you know Trey Tomlinson is, I, um, you know, I wanted to pitch and I didn't get a chance to do that. My last year playing uh, travel baseball it actually got me completely out of the game. I never played it again because I would get benched for, you know, guys that weren't even hitting as well as me. And just it was just bad, like nothing like driving two hours for travel to sit on the bench. Um, you know, so I, I get his point. You know, it's like, I, I, you know, that's one thing. The whole size thing, like, oh, you're too short. That is always the dumbest cop out. I mean, like Aaron Donald was too short. Russell Wilson was too short. Kyler Murray was too short. Like, it's the NFL. It's 2023. There are guys that are playing at 5'6". I will say league. this. Because you talk about baseball. I Now, I played soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm coming out of left field. I played soccer. And I will say, I was always on the smaller side. And I know every, I've just lost everybody because no one's like, this doesn't relate to what Jake is saying. But it does because I think it, it size doesn't always matter. I mean, I was small, but I was really fast. And I was scrappy. And I scored a lot of goals. Yeah. I mean, and then I tore my ACL and then oh, my uh That's awful. Career went downhill after that, but before that <laughs> I just totally feel that with Trey Tomlinson. Like that personally like I feel that. Cuz that honestly kind of took me out of sports. Like I I used to play baseball. I loved baseball and I I mean, I'm sorry if the coach is watching. I I don't think he is. I doubt it. But if the coach that I had is watching, um, then, I, I mean, you maybe not like baseball. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. Nothing like driving two hours to sit the bench for a doubleheader. You know, I'm a kid. I, I won't say kid. I, I'm older, but I don't have my driver's license at this point. My dad's driving me two hours to go to these these baseball games. 
and doubleheader, I'm sitting on the bench and the, the, the guy can't hit. And I hit. Like, that's the thing. I, I was a line drive hitter. I, I, I could beat out a ground ball. I could steal bases. But, you know, I think really the whole two short moniker, I just, I love those those short kings that are starting to really just, just shove it in people's faces. Because you know what? Size is cool and all. It, it, it is cool if you're six foot three at, at corner. It also makes your job a hell of a lot harder, you know? And I, I think people forget that. I mean, don't you remember, not to crap on the guy, but Obi Melifamu, don't you remember that guy? And was like, oh my God, he's a 6'4 safety. Yeah, it didn't work out, you know? But real quick, the the commanders just drafted Chris Rodriguez running back out of Kentucky, and I'm only interrupting because I, I like this. know some people aren't even watching the TV anymore. I like this pick. I think Chris Rodriguez is very underrated. I really liked his tape at Kentucky. And, you know, the guy's contact balance. Guy has some patience. I see some Le'Veon in his game. Remember Le'Veon Bell, you know, kind of hiding behind offensive linemen and popping out and just attacking. I kind of see that on film with Chris Rodriguez. So I really like this pick. You get him in the sixth round. This is somebody that has the contact balance. He has, he's filled out. He's got the size. But he's, he's decently explosive too like i think this guy can help you in pass pro uh he doesn't have to come in and start but i think he can definitely make the team and you know he can be a contributor so i'm for it i like it i like the pick he likes the pick there's no way this is going to go to seven right i mean we're almost in the seventh round i feel like they're milking the hell out of this chiefs are on the clock The Saints have traded tight end Adam Troutman to the Broncos. That makes sense because who drafted Troutman? Sean Payton. Mm-hmm. We kind of glossed over DeAndre Swift because there was so much happening. I was trying to break news and Ooh. everything. Um, did you want to talk about that? Yes, I do. But real quick, the Chiefs just drafted Keandre Coburn, the defensive tackle out of Texas, who I really liked. I was really high on him. I was high on him and uh, Ajomo. I had a them. seventh on him. Ajomo's still there. No, I think he got drafted by the Packers, right? Oh. Um, Wait, let me look it up. I think he did get drafted. I got behind, and I, I just totally got behind on updating the board. Oh, maybe he didn't. Nope, I actually, I don't think he did get drafted. Never mind. So is Jomo still there? That's what I thought. Uh, Brooks is gone. I don't know why I still have him on the board. Hey, Ryan Hayes got picked, right? The tackle? No, there was another Hayes. Never mind. Duncan got picked by the Titans. Zach Kuntz is still there. Um... Eric Gray and Evan Hole off the board. Sean Tucker's still there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's surprising to me. I had a fourth round grade on him. I had a fourth round grade on Ibrahim. I had a third on Valade and McIntosh and Evans and Vaughn and Mitchell. Oh, sorry, I had a second on Vaughn and Mitchell. Patterson's still there, fourth round grade on him at center. Forsyth, fifth round grade at center. Brandon Joseph is my highest rated safety right now. <clears throat> fifth round grade on him Duggan is my top quarterback remaining guys I really I know it's like not gonna happen but what it, I really think it'd be amazing if the Rams drafted Duggan and with they could, Stetson I mean, and Duggan they could use him like a Taysom Hill type of role. yes would that not be amazing yeah I might Damn. Oh, uh, did the Saints just take AT Perry? 
I saw it in the chat. I think they did. If it's ID eighty nine, it's done. I mean, let's be real here. They weren't getting yes, AT Perry they when they passed on him for Puka Nakua. They're probably yeah, not they're... drafting another wide receiver, so I had already kind of accepted that. Yep, they did take AT Perry. He's gonna so, stay in I those mean... same colors. That's always weird yeah. to me. <laughs> like, just like every draft, Alexis, I swear a Boise State Bronco becomes a Denver Bronco. And it happened in this draft because JL Skinner, while you were having all sorts of malfunction, <laughs> went to the Broncos. <laughs> you guys notice she has not come back since I've gotten this. That's hilarious. She's It's repellent. She's just like, nah. I ain't about that. Just the, the thought, the idea that I have it. I don't have to use it. It's just knowing that it's here. It's a deterrent. I can't wait to watch that clip. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. We'll, we'll definitely have to clip that. It's so funny because the chat was like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> is she gone? <laughs> It was in slow motion, too. Like, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm watching you get swallowed up into the abyss. <laughs> well, it like my camera like shifted and it then I think like... you saw it. And then and both of us, I was just like my eyes. The fear was still. And then it just went like I was like, oh, is she gone. She, she gone. It's over. Just out. We both knew. I think chat started to pick up when it started to really turn and then it hit the ground and everyone's like, oh, she dead. <laughs> like... <laughs> it just hit the ground and then went to black screen and it was like, all right. It was perfect. And then I spent like 10 minutes trying to like figure out to get my camera to focus again. It like would not focus. Hey, and that I was would, like, oh, that was a big no. comeback right there. Whew. You were down, but you were not out. So A.T. Perry is the new New Orleans Saints wide receiver. I had a, th a third overall grade on him, as in the third overall wide on. receiver. He comes off the board here, second-round talent. I think they're getting an absolute stud. I think Perry is a phenomenal route runner. You normally don't see that six foot three. He's got to use his body more, I think, to box out defenders, uh, show more physicality. That was my one knock on him, but really good after the catch. Um, you know, a guy that you can rely on, possession receiver, so... I think he's really gonna he's really gonna help out the Saints. This is a really good pick by the Saints. A plus for me. I'm not giving him any grades out, but that's a freaking A plus if I've ever seen one. I mean, you know, I've been talking about AT Perry for a while. Jose Ramirez goes to the Buccaneers. I like the selection here. Ramirez gets picked. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about Eastern uh, Michigan being on the map and Jose Ramirez, who we mentioned earlier is, uh, yeah. Also in, in non related sports news, uh, Mila Kunis, says she is not in Fantastic Four, but she knows who is. So I don't know if that's her saying Ashton Kutcher's in it or what, but she apparently isn't in it. I don't buy it. I think she's in it. <clears throat> I think she's going to be Sue Storm, but that's just a non-football-related thing. I mean, I watch anything with Mila Kunis in it, so. I think she's in it. I really do. I think she was told not to say anything. They got the snipers on her and everything. <laughs> like, Luckiest the, uh, Girl Alive, I thought was a really underrated movie. You and I watched that when it came out yeah. last year. Yeah, it was really, was, I mean, she's a great actress, so. Yeah. I mean, it was a very dark. I mean, I definitely would warn people. Um, So Miami just drafted Elijah Higgins out of Stanford, who I liked. That's Yeah, that's a really good pick. Stanford had two really good receivers. I thought Higgins showed impressive ball skills especially in the contested catch realm um but i also really liked his teammate michael wilson my issue with michael wilson is that it's been injuries with him you know but if the guy can stay healthy this guy's the limit for him 
I love this is what I love about our draft uh, show. Okay, we're not like draft experts. You know, we analyze. We may, you know, make rankings. I'll have scouting reports. I don't claim myself to be an expert. This is not my bread and butter. This is something I feel like I'm good at, but it's not my forte. It's not my main thing. But the fact that we're in the sixth round and you and I can give like some actual example of some of these guys, I feel like that's a W. Like I feel like that's a yeah. low key flex. You know, I like we've, that. We've done the work. We, we definitely, yeah, we definitely have. We've been doing it year in and year out, and I know people see it, so we appreciate that we, for you guys. And then we'll, we get to like two days before the draft, and our brains are like fried. Oh We're like talking God. to each other about draft prospects. And I'm like, I can't even think straight right now. Let's just, I need to take two days to just not even look at any more names. Yeah. No, I feel that. I still can't believe I only got one hour sleep on this en energetic. So the Seattle pick is in. I'm going to go um, wash my glasses real quick. It's like storming. So now my light is all shifting in here. And oh boy, I need to put my glasses on. By the way, Seattle just drafted safety Jarek Reed II out of New Mexico. And so that's now that the is. fifth player. I don't know who it is. All right. I'll be right back. Impressive. Jalen Hyatt will wear number 84 for anybody that cares. Jarek Reed, huh? I don't know anything about Jarek Reed, unfortunately, so I can't really give any insight. Yeah, the Rams pick four times in the in the uh, the seventh round. I've already lost track of how many picks they've made. Ten picks. Okay, so fourteen potential fourteen selections, unless they trade two of them to, to move up, which I could see, but they pick so soon that I don't really think that's worth it. So the Rams draft class: Steve Avila, Byron Young, Kobe Turner, Stetson Bennett, Nick Hampton, Warren McClendon Jr. Davis Allen, Puka Nakua, Travis Hodges, Tomlinson, O'Shawn Mathis. I really love this class. I really love it. I really love it. I'm just rarely this amped about a draft class. Like, I've been happy about picks, but... I really like this class. Hampton, McClendon, Bennett, Allen, Hodges, Tomlinson today. Okay. The Ravens just drafted, um, and I always get his name wrong, but it's Malisa, Malisala Ayamave Leilalu, Leilu out of Oregon. 
Uh-huh. This is about where I. The Ravens just drafted him. I wow, that name is just a mind. You know what? <laughs> the Chargers pick is in. Thank you for the five, G Chuck. Hi, Jake. Do you think Van Jefferson takes the next step in 2023, or will he continue to be average at best going forward? I think Van Jefferson was about to take the next step last year. Had some injuries. It held him back. I wouldn't say he's average. I would say he's above average. I could see him having a really good year in his contract year and leaving in the offseason. I don't think the Rams plan on bringing him back, but... This draft does lead me to believe it's possible. And getting Nakua as late as they did, you know, and not addressing wide receiver early on, that tells me they really buy into Tutu Atwell. They really buy into Ben Skoranek. They really buy into, obviously, Cooper Cup. And they buy into Van Jefferson, at least this year. At least this year. So... The Chargers drafted defensive tackle Scott Matlock out of Boise State. So, the sixth person that I do not know. Yeah, I don't even know who Matlock is, so I'm with you there. Guys, and like I said earlier, it's like I don't see our name on the ticker anymore, and it makes me feel like it's been so long. since Because we, we kept coming up, and now it's like... Do you know what our next pick is off the top of your head, by the way? We're at 201. Oh, I just saw it. It was 220-something. Okay, uh... Still 20 picks away. 223. 223, 234, 252, 259. And then we... And then I'll be watching the Devils win game six against the Rangers. You heard it here first. All right. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I do not know who Scott Matlock is. I think Puka Nakua is going to grow on some people. I know there there are people that wanted others. Oh, Texans just got Jarrett Patterson. That's a good pick. Bummer. I would have liked him, obviously, but... Yeah. I forgot he was still available. Yeah. No, that's a really good pick. I mean, the value certainly there. I had a fourth round grade on him, so not saying my I grades think people are everything, are, but I don't I think that people are kind of confused about him because he's played at one point or another every position on the offensive line. Yeah. So I think he's kind of like not a true anything. Um, I would say he's probably best off as center. Well, that's fair. Mm, I don't know, actually. I Center or guard, I don't think he's natural. He's definitely not naturally a tackle. I think he's only played there out of necessity. Um, I think his versatility is a bonus, though, but it can probably make people confusing. So, A Dog, I got distracted and went and did something. Um, thank you so much for the two. Jake, do you think we have we should have traded for running back Swift? Um, no. And, and the reason I'll say this is, and this is a great question. The reason I'll say this is because, one, I like keeping the picks that they've kept. Trading away Swift, they probably would have given up more than they needed to. Uh, two, I don't think he's a need. Like, you go out and you get Keaton Mitchell, that gives you that home run hitting speed. I don't see the difference between Swift and Cam Akers right now. Actually, I do. Cam Akers is healthy and DeAndre Swift can't stay healthy. I just don't think he helps you. Also, though, I said, remember, I've said this, and people thought that I was just being biased, but I don't think the Rams see running back as a big of a need as Rams Twitter sees that as a need. Because I think the Rams like Akers and they like Kyron Williams. A lot. 
a lot. So, I, and everyone was like, you're just too high on Williams. I don't think it's the case. No. Before Williams got hurt, he was being used just as much, actually, as Cam Akers. Williams got hurt. Akers had a bit of a resurgence. And then there was all that drama that kind of went down with Henderson. And then there was drama that went down with Akers. And I do think the Rams kind of kissed ass to Akers the last half of the season. And they just, I mean, they literally gave him the ball 99%. It's just unheard of. And yeah. I think that they're going to stop that going into next season. And I think that you're going to see a lot more of Kyron Williams, which is what the Rams originally wanted to do before all the drama at running back went down with Akers and Henderson. So I don't think the Rams view running back as big of a need as everyone else did. I really don't. And that's why we're now approaching the seventh round and the Rams still haven't drafted a running back. And look, like I'll be honest with you. I, I think it's definitely not impossible for the Rams to draft a running back in the next four picks because they have four picks coming up. And I think, like I agree with you, like when people were saying Zach Charbonnet, I was like, you're not understanding. Akers, the way he played at the end of last year, deserves a shot. They traded up to get Kyron Williams in the fifth. I mean, they're probably going to be looking at a guy like Keaton Mitchell, maybe Zach Evans, Deuce Vaughn, Xavier Valade, Sean Tucker. I mean, those are the guys I think they're looking at. I don't, I don't see... Like Kenny McIntosh ran a four six. The only thing that I'm doing, okay, <clears throat> if I'm the Rams, the only thing I'm doing at running back is going after home run hitting speed. So to me, it's gonna be Keaton Mitchell or it's gonna be Valde or Zach Evans or Sean Tucker. If they go running back, it'll be one of those guys. That's that's how I see it. Um quarterback, if they go quarterback. You got Bajan and you got Duggan. I think that they're think in it... play. Wide receiver. I think, well, I got to get Higgins off the board. Um, <clears throat> I could see them taking a flyer on Jarrett. Uh, Rakim Jarrett. Zach Kuntz, they met with repeatedly. He's a fourth round uh, grade for me. I could see him going with Zach Kuntz to add another body to the tight end room. Um, if they go tackle again, Earl Bostic out of Kansas, I think he makes some sense. Fourth round grade on him. Guard, I think they're good, but Andrew Voorhees would be the pick there. Because this is a guy that, you know, we've heard could go early day two. Then he gets the ACL tear, I believe it's the ACL tear, and falls down the board. Um... Center, you're not going to really touch. Alex Forsyth, I think, is the only one at center. Interior defensive line, they met with Deswan Johnson, Gerard Carter, uh, uh, sorry, Gerard Clark out of Coastal Carolina if they need a nose tackle. Edge defender if they want to go with a fourth. Brenton Cox Jr. out of Florida. Lonnie Phelps out of Kansas. Habakkuk Baldonado uh, out of Pitt. Andre Carter the second. I think those guys make sense. And then linebacker D. Winters, Shaka Hayward. I think those guys make sense there. And then I think a corner, Corey Trice, Nick Jones, Jalen Jones, Alex Austin, Carrington Valentine, who they met with, Taiwan Mullen, who is Trayvon Mullen's brother. And I think for safety, if they go that route, Brandon Hill, Trey Dean, and I would probably say Brandon Joseph. So those are all the names to keep an eye on. That was a lot. <laughs> Christian Braswell was picked by the Jaguars. I think you already said that, though. Yeah. Amari Bernie was picked. Florida linebacker. Raiders. Um, a dog appreciates you for, for the five <clears throat> shout out to Les and Sean for making sure they gave Aaron Donald a lot of help on the D line. 
and the defense as a whole. Salute to Jake and Alexis. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Replica Pro Collector, thank you for the five. Let's go, LA Rams. Appreciate you. you. Oh, I like that comp. Some guy said Kyra might be okay. He's a Westbrook type running back. I actually kind of see that. Brian Westbrook. I like that. I like that comp. I He's one of my all-time favorite players. I have his jersey somewhere, like a little kid jersey when I was a kid. But, yeah, I was a big, big Brian Westbrook fan. I like that. Um, would, Okay, hold on. I'm trying to get my feeds up to date because the Jets pick is in. Jarek Bernard Converse is the pick for the Jets. Hmm. That's a name. I I don't know. Converse. I just thought of it the other day. Do you remember when Converse were like the rave? Yeah, my brother like and that- sister still wear them. I was actually thinking about getting a pair again. I remember when I was in middle school and like those kind of became like had a resurgence and I like begged my mom because I needed like new shoes for school. And like, I normally just got like the Nike shocks or whatever it was. And and I was like, I really want to get a pair of Converse. And she was like, really? Cause those were like big in like the eighties or like way back when. And then they had a resurgence and I was like, yes, I really want a pair. So I just got a pair of just like the black Converse. <laughs> And I thought I was like on cloud nine walking in those things. Oh, the Converse. I was like the middle schooler that wore like Converse and like skinny jeans and kind of was like skater, not like skater girl, but like kind of. You were definitely a walk- skater girl. Yeah. And I was like, that was my look. And I was just like, wow, I am so fresh right now. I am so fresh right now. Yeah, I um was not that. Although, I, you know, I guess I, I never skated or anything like that. But I didn't either, but I dressed like it. Yeah, I mean, I remember there was a phase where I tried skinny jeans out and I had Vans. But I've always I've always been a Nike and Jordan brand guy. Like, I mean, all my shoes have been Nike for the most part. I think I had Adidas one time. But pretty much all have been Nike I mean, you know, I had those fly. I still have those fly Nike boots that I throw on if I'm too lazy to like actually like they just slip right on. <laughs> I yeah, but like aside from that, I mean, I'm kind of a mix, but yeah, Nike is always reliable. I mean, every year when I was in like elementary, middle school, I would get um, Nike. Like my mom would take me and my sister to shoe carnival, and we would get a pair of like Nikes before like the school year started. That was always like our, our shoe. And my favorite pair I ever got was a pair of Nike shocks, which they probably still make. I don't know if they do, but for a while those were like very cool. And I had a, uh, they were all white Nike shocks with like a light blue, pale blue check. And I loved those shoes and they were so cool. And then on the 4th of July, the next year, I accidentally stepped on a firecracker. <laughs> Not good. Um, I nope. didn't realize it was lit and I stepped on it and it exploded. And I don't know how I was fine, but the bottom of my shoe ripped off. Oh, my God. Um, and yeah, that was the end of my night. Xavier shot. Hutchinson to the Texans. It's funny. Wait, because... Didn't he already get drafted? No, I mentioned him earlier as like a oh. fit. He's a good player. I had a third round grade on him. Some people are wondering why Carrington Valentine hasn't been drafted yet. I had a sixth on him, so it could be, you know, he could be going within this pick in 217. I'm still shocked that Trice hasn't gotten picked. So this will probably be a guy that falls right before the Rams and then he gets selected. Not that not to say that they would even pick him, but they did meet with him a few times. They met with Carrington Valentine. They met with, I think, Taiwan Mullen. Nick Jones would also be a really nice addition. And if they went out and uh, 
and they worked out our guy Andrew Whitaker, that wouldn't be bad either. Princeton wide receiver Andre Ayashovis is heading to the Bengals. So that's the second wide receiver they've taken. That's interesting because they've got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Then they went and drafted Charlie Jones. Now they've drafted the guy from Princeton. Guys, I only have one wide receiver left on my board because I just didn't get a chance to get through a ton this year. Um, Rakim Jarrett is the only one remaining on my board. A lot of running backs, three quarterbacks, um, two tight ends. I like Blake uh, Whitehart and Zach Koontz. I had a fourth. Blake Whitehart, I have fifth. Four offensive tackles, four interior offensive linemen. I'm surprised Emil Echior is still there out of Alabama guard. Three centers. One, two, we have three, four. Eleven five, picks five, left six, in the sixth round. Six defensive linemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven edge on my board. You got four linebackers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight corners left on my board. Obviously, that's not like the rest of the NFL. Uh, and then five safeties. All right, I am going to run to the bathroom. I've been sitting in this chair, and it's not healthy for the last four, almost five hours. So I will be right back. All right, guys, you're stuck with me. Let me make sure I get my, like, swatter handy in case my dog comes in and knocks over my camera, and then you won't have either one of us. Like Andrew Ortiz just said, Please like the video if you haven't already. We would very much appreciate it. Um, we've got about 10 picks left in the sixth round before we go into the seventh round. I'm like, I'm like on guard because I feel like with my luck now, my dog will come in and knock over all my stuff while Jake's uh, off camera. Um, I'm looking at the chat. I would like us to draft another corner. By the way, the Packers just drafted a kicker, Anders Carlson out of Auburn. Interesting. Um, have not heard of that kicker. I had heard of the others. Pineapple Pizza Queen. I appreciate it. I agree with uh, Mon Monty's world. We do need more uh, corners. I would also like us to take a safety. Um, I know that we got Russ Yeast and Quentin Lake uh, last year, but I would like another one. Um, we do need a kicker. I think the Rams are probably going to wait for you know and get a UDFA kicker, but I mean that's usually what they do, with the exception of Sam Sloman. Um, Matthew said, "Would your dra draft grade go up significantly if?" Trice is drafted. Yes, it would. Um, I oh wait, did someone already draft Trice though? No, they haven't. I'm losing track. There's too many people to keep track of. Um, my draft grade right now for the Rams would be a B. And that's mostly due to positional value. Um, like of the players. I think they've reached on a couple guys, but it's certainly better than what I've seen in years past in my years of doing this draft stream. Um so, and I also think I'm higher on Puka Nakua, I think, than a lot of Rams fans. Valentine is still there. 
Someone said, don't traumatize me by mentioning Sam Sloman. I erased him from my memory. I pretty much had until I saw him in the XFL a couple weeks ago where he missed a kick in a game. He wasn't playing for my team, but I watched him and they were, I was like, is that Sam Sloman? And it was. Um, and I had forgotten about him. The best cornerback available if Trice hasn't been drafted is Corey Trice. And I do not believe he has been drafted, but I honestly don't have a list in front of me at the moment. Um, or Carrington Valentine, either one of those. It is, is kind of weird that they've both fallen. Oh, Eli Ricks. Yeah, I've forgotten about Eli Ricks. I don't know what happened to Trice um, or Valentine or Eli Ricks. So Jacksonville just drafted safety Eric Hallett the second out of Pittsburgh. That is now the seventh player that I do not know. Um, so I have no intel on that. So basically to close out the six, you're going to have the Giants, the Patriots, the Colts, the Cowboys, the Cardinals, the Patriots again, Buffalo, 49ers, Cincinnati, and then we're on to the seventh round. Our next pick, I believe, is 220-something, and right now we're on pick 208. I think we're at 220. And I want to say we have three to four picks left in the draft. 223. So we're 14 picks away. We're at 209. Right now is the giant seat and the pick is in. My dog's back. Hey, it's not working. Oh my God. You, she's testing me. She's get out, get out. Thank you. Ugh. I didn't use this, but I forcefully put it in her face. Who my heart sank to my stomach, guys. The thing with my dog is that she's 15 years old, and she's at the point now where she just doesn't care anymore. Jake, you just missed it. My dog came in, and I was threatening her with the swatter, and she did leave. He can't hear. He can't hear me yet. Can you hear me now? I am back. You said just before you walked in, Dolce came in here and I was threatening her with the swatter. And she like was testing me. She didn't seem, she didn't care at first. And then I had to get forceful. But I was telling them the thing with my dog is she's 15 years old. Like she just doesn't care. No. She just does what she doesn't care anymore. She does what she wants. All right. I'm she's not just... going to lie. I don't know who Trey Hawkins is. I don't know who Eric Hallett is. I don't know who Anders Carlson is. Looks like there was a kicker taken. There was. Yeah. Um. Someone asked what breed is, is my dog. She is a Cockashan. She's a Cocker Spaniel Bichon mix. And no, there is no door in here. It's an open floor plan. So um, I could throw her outside, but it's storming so we just had the exact opposite interactions with our dogs like i just gave my dog a hug and you're just like i'm gonna beat you <laughs> <laughs> i'm in here threatening my elderly dog with a swatter like <laughs> she just doesn't care like she truly just doesn't care she's just does whatever she wants now and i mean let's be honest Which you, you, wouldn't, it. you wouldn't hit her it's a joke no, I would never hit her. Yeah, so but I, I, I just wanted to clear the air in case anyone tries to cancel you because of that. <laughs> no, I just hold the swatter and I like shake it, and she like is scared of the swatter. Yeah, no, maybe because she's seen she's seen us actually kill flies with the swatter, so she probably <laughs> she knows what it's oh, for. No. <laughs> she's seen it used for murder, so she's probably just like knows that's it's a actually weapon. hilarious. Yeah. We are what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to say fourteen picks away. Fourteen picks away from the Rams pick. Uh, 
I don't know. I wish I had more like info to give about Oshan Mathis when he was picked. I was like, ah, yeah, I actually didn't fi finish his eval. Yeah, I think the thing that screwed me up this year, Alexis, is you know how normally I put together a board that has more than 200 people on it. Um, but what screwed me up this year is I did those TikToks and those YouTube shorts, and it really slowed down my process. So, and I, I also used a new uh, grading scale as well. So, all of that kind of, I don't know. Long this, thank you for the 20. Seems odd to acquire 14 picks and not do any maneuvers up. Seems a bunch of cheap first contracts is the goal. I think that is the goal because they came into the NFL draft with the fewest number of players on their roster. So I am not I'm not going to lie. Um I actually like this this route. You're getting cheap talent in the seventh round. If they stay if 14 picks. And I think Lesney has absolutely slayed the draft at this point. So whatever else is coming is, is just icing on the cake. Yeah, I mean, you can't make the... That's the thing. You can't make this draft suck with seventh-round picks. You know, they've already picked 10 players. I mean, I, I think he's absolutely killed this draft, 100%. Titus Leo, edge out of Wagner to the Colts. I do know who that is, but I did not watch his tape. I do not know who that is. Not a huge pineapple on pizza guy. What's up, Michael? That's my buddy Michael right there. Uh, but as a half Sicilian, I got to say, anyone who doesn't like black olives on pizza should stick to burgers. There you go. I do not like it. olives. He gets it. Do not like olives. So you like? Have you never seen a Supreme Pizza that has like black olives, mushrooms? No, I have sausage. Though, so like, like, yeah. I mean, I used to get like kind of force fed Supreme. Like, you know, my parents back when I was little, like they'd want to get a Supreme Pizza, and then they would give it to me and be like, "Oh, it's good for you." It has all sorts of veggies and stuff. I'm like, Ugh. like I just want to like the regular plain one. You know, what I mean, plain cheese pizza is undefeated because I don't have to worry about the mess. It, it just is what it is. Then I get to taste what the actual pizza is, right? I feel like the toppings kind of cheapen what the pizza truly is. So, like, personally, I love buffalo chicken. Buffalo chicken pizza is the best when done properly. And trust me, Korean barbecue chicken from Whitman's is baller as hell. But at the end of the day, I don't know if anything can beat just a plain cheese pizza, New York style, uh, you know, not a lot of flop, like some, you know, good base and everything. I, I just don't, I don't really like the, the floppy pizza. I don't like floppy dough. But to me, that's the best type of style. See, I I like a good New York style greasy piece of pizza. Now, I don't like it too greasy. Like I will like paper Well, yeah, no, down. I mean, that's what but I mean. But like, do you like the flop? It doesn't matter to me so much about that, but I like it. I like the dough to be like a chewy, like I like it to be Cause like, very doughy. Yeah, I mean, I like when it doesn't have a lot of flop, it's really good. Like when it, you can hold it out, it's not just going to fall. But I'll have flop. I'm not against it. <laughs> Jake's scouting pizzas. <laughs> Fun fact, our newest tight end had a 91% catch rate at Clemson. I tried to tell you guys, contested catch rate. He is a freaking monster. Someone said Chicago style in the comments. I live in Chicago and I do not really care for it. I still love this, like this comment, Jake scouting pizzas. I um, agree. Should I go I like the crisp get an Olipop right now? I'm kind of feeling an Olipop. Maybe I'll wait till the seventh round. I got a new flavor that I haven't tried yet. Okay. Yeah, By the I way, mean, did, you, did you guys just notice how it got dark in here? Yeah, what the hell? 
because it's storm it's storming and the sky is like black so oh like, my god because i have all my what my um windows like i said how it was bothering me when it was sunny because it was like so bright in here because i don't have any like shades or anything so now it's dark the sky is overcast and it just got really dark in here except for my studio lights so dallas that cowboys selected for. deuce vaughn yep that adds up and that's a great fit god they're gonna put him behind tony pollard i don't know if i agree with that fit i feel like they're kind of similar you don't? yeah well i mean they are similar but they're just i think they're gonna use them i don't want to say as a duo because pollard's gonna play a lot more but I'm not the only one rooting for Deuce Vaughn, right? Like, I, I want him to do well. Like, I genuinely... No, I like Deuce Vaughn. Yeah. I'm, I would have been happy if the Rams took him. I'm rooting for, for the short guy all day. But I also think he's a freaking stud. It's not just, like, I'm biased towards short people. Pick 20... Or, pick 212. He comes off the board here. I didn't put short people unite. That was entirely a copy and paste... Ian Rappaport tweet. I just shared our link with um, uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr., baby. Oh, nice. He's a Rams fan. He was tweeting about the Rams. He's not a Raiders fan. I know everyone thinks that, but his dad, Ice Cube, is the Raiders fan. I mean, if he wants to hop in here and, <laughs> you know, guest, I mean, he's more than welcome. Mm -hmm. So you got the Cardinals up, then the Patriots, the Bills, the 49ers, and the Bengals. And then we're going into the seventh round. Back to what you were saying about plain cheese pizza, Jake. I tend to agree that that's kind of like the goat pizza. Yeah. Contrary to prior belief that my favorite pizza is the pineapple black olives. That's if I have to have toppings. But Mr. Irrelevant, it has me more excited than pretty much any pick in the history of ever. Like, I'm so hyped for this. Can you buy the Mr. Irrelevant jersey? Like, is that a thing? Can I wear that? <laughs> Just wear... What number is that on the back? 259? What the hell? And what the hell is a 259 Rams jersey going to look like with their font? You know what I mean? They have, like, a different font style for their numbers. It, it, like, how are they... Like, what is that going to even look like? Oh, my gosh. No. No, no Sorry. Oh, okay, you're like I was like, oh no! Thought you were about to say Keaton Mitchell came off the board. The last irrelevant, uh, Mister Irrelevant, I believe, was David Vibora, right? David Vibora was the uh, Mister Irrelevant. Yep, the last. O'Shea said he left after the pineapple and black olives pizza, so he was watching. Oh, my God. You ruined it. Guys, why is everyone hating on me for this pizza combination? Ice Cube's kid was in here, and you literally drove him away because of your pizza choice. That's what I just heard. Yeah. <laughs> Guys... Oh, this man. This is the cross I've chosen to bear. I can't apologize for it. I'm not sorry. I'm not. I'm not sorry. My now, God. Am I sorry that other people don't get will never experience it because they judge it? Yes. That's what I'm sorry about. So there's been two Rams Mr. Irrelevance in the history of the NFL draft. 2008 was David Vibora, which I nailed, by the way. And he was an outside linebacker out of Idaho. And uh, 1988. It was 333rd overall Jeff Bethard, uh, Bethard from Southern Oregon wide receiver.
I gave him a shout out for swinging by our stream. Steve Bethard, is that what it was? Jeff Bethard. I just, I just can't believe this. I just can't believe that of all the things to put on pizza, somehow people think my <laughs> combination is the worst. It. Because it's not the worst thing that you could put on pizza. Okay. I mean, yeah, people if put, you put like candy canes on pizza, I'm pretty sure that would be the worst topic. People put anchovies on their pizza. I'd rather Real have anchovies people. than that. I can't fathom that. Dante Stills is the pick for the Cardinals. Defensive tackle, West Virginia. Yeah, I saw How that. How many Stills have there been from West Virginia? I feel like there's eight of them that have come out. <laughs> I know there isn't, but it feels that way. Amir Speed, cornerback from Michigan State, has been drafted by the Patriots, and I love that last name for a corner. Is all right. I gotta know. Is he related to EJ Speed? I, you know what, he might be. I don't know. I honestly haven't heard of him. I just like I gotta saw know on right the now. screen. I've never heard of him, but that's the first thought I had. Uh, let's see, Amir Speed related to EJ Speed. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. The Rams just trade up to 215. Interesting. They traded back into the sixth round. Who do you think this could be for, Jake? I I think it's Keaton. I think it's Keaton Mitchell or if Corey Trice. Keaton, if it's Keaton, then you're going to have your moment like I had last year with Kyron. Were they Rams traded up to draft Kyron? Yeah. I'm taking Nick Jones in the shadow draft. <clears throat> uh, I would be so happy if we drafted Nick Nick Jones. How many picks do we have left? That's what I'm trying to find. I really out. hope this is Corey Trice or Nick Jones. It might be running back. To trade up like that after running back went earlier, this is probably a running back. But they still have 2023. 20, okay. They traded 252 to Buffalo. But they, they have three picks. So they trade one of their picks to move up. The pick is in. They literally are on commercial now on NFL Network. Dude, so like, they hate us. All right, I'm just going to say it. They they literally went the pick is in and then they went to commercial. Bro. I am heated at NFL Network. Bro, they literally they hate us. They do not care about us. They are like, oh, the Rams? No, they're just like, no. 
It is Zach Evans running back out of Ole Miss. Oh, wow. Okay. I told you they were going running back. Um, I feel a little bit like what you said earlier. Hold on. My dog's in here. Dolce. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's trying to get under the wire. Zach Evans is a hell of a pick. And look, I had other guys that I was looking at. Um, obviously, I think Keaton Mitchell's explosiveness is just unbelievable. But Zach Evans... It's interesting, right? He starts out at TCU, and, you know, he, he played well there. He transfers to Ole Miss, right? And at Ole Miss, that Judkins kid, I forget his first name, just absolutely is a baller. He's going to be one of the top running backs when he's selected. So he kind of fell out of favor and almost became a backup, if you will. But my scouting report here, I had a second-round grade on Zach Evans. I had, you know, he's got great size for the position. He has a deceptive amount of agility in his game. Only fumbled once this past year shows good ball security. His burst and explosiveness aren't great. I think that's one thing that I noticed. He didn't have the best burst and explosiveness. Um, he makes up with it with his long speed. That will be enough for the league. He runs with power displays, great contact balance. He will need to get better with his pad level. Uh, to maximize his strength an active participant in pass pro has the room to grow and get a lot better. His route running is base level, but his hands are good enough. He can make things happen. in The receiving game. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at Kendra Miller. <laughs> Wait, you you're, you're muted. You're muted. The I was 49. Sorry. The 49ers just drafted D winders. Oh uh, yeah, of course they did. That seems like a 49er. Pick. Um, and you said that you were reading Kendra Miller's I was literally reading Kendra Miller's I was I was thinking so, about that I'm like wait a minute hold on a sec <laughs> Evans is fairly agile he has the ability to stop and start <laughs> second round pick by the way is what I put there his ball ignore security everything was, you just heard guys yeah ignore, ignore the that. first the entire thing uh his ball security was never a problem until this year he fumbled three times he's got great burst he uses his physicality to convert speed into a battering ram at the second level uh, Evans will need to work on pass protection and his receiving ability as he wasn't utilized much in the receiving game. He runs with great physicality as a true linear runner of the football. His long speed is very good in this class and will allow him to convert his big play ability to the NFL level. His vision is very inconsistent. He can look great in creating cutback opportunities and look very poor in missing obvious running lanes. His awareness is solid for the position. And he's well put together for the next level. Zach Evans overall is a pure runner who will likely start someday in the NFL. He has a lot of work to do to be an efficient three down back but i see the upside and i think and other nfl teams will too second round early career starter zach evans so the rams just got in my opinion a second round talent who isn't a day one starter but he's got that home run hitting speed we talk about right you need that explosive burst and you need that home run hitting speed the rams needed a home run hitter and i think they got that in zach evans so this That's is an a plus pick I like this pick. I think what he brings to the table is he's a very situational back. Hold on a second. She's now coming in here under the wires. Oh, no. She's she's testing me. I really think she is. I, she knows I won't hit her. That's why. She's now determined that I have the swatter. Um. Okay. Anyways, I like Zach. I think that he's a very situational running back. I think that he is was brought in, like you said, for the purpose, home run hitter. Um, I think he's going to fit in really nicely behind Kyron. Um, You're so concerned right now. She's back. At, there's something going on. Out, I think it's because it's storming. She's getting very unsettled. And she is, like, needing attention or something. And she's... Bears pick is in, and we pick in like four picks, by the way. Someone said Dolce is choosing violence today. She really is. She's, she knows that she has all the power in this dynamic. And that's the end of the sixth. 
we had a punter, Brad Robbins, come off the board for the Bengals. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, I can't believe how good this draft has been. I really can't believe how good this draft has been for the Rams. I think Zach Evans is exactly what they needed. They needed that energizer bunny and that that, you know, electricity in that running back room. Um like I I really, really like the Zach Evans pick. I also like that they're still picking at two twenty three in the seventh round. They still have the two thirty four pick. And they still have the Mr. Irrelevant pick, and they just gave up 252. So I, I like that. They must have given up something next year because that, that compensation. The the Bears just drafted <clears throat> um, Travis Bell, a defensive tackle from somewhere who I don't know. Kennesaw but- State. Yeah, and so now you've got the Lions, the Jets, the Colts, the Vikings, and then us. Then we are up. Okay, I I see what the Rams did. The Rams wanted to maintain their selection. So it's a sixth rounder next year uh, and 252 for 215. I love it. That trade-up is smart. I'm going to take care of my dog. Sorry, one second, because I want to be back for the Rams pick. Hold on. I got you. She's freaking out. <clears throat> wonder. How are you guys feeling about Zach Evans? I'll, I'll start sharing your responses. Yeah, he was. Absolutely. That running back room is fire. My God, man. I love it, too. I don't know why I got just logged out of Twitter. That was really annoying. Oh, I got to have a stupid two-factor authentication. Is Twitter just like... Oh, my God. It's so obnoxious. Like, why would it log me out like that? I could see, <clears throat> I could still see Andre Carter, uh, Antoine Green, wide receiver out of North Carolina, definitely a sleeper in this one. Just got picked. The Jets are taking Zach Kuntz out of Old Dominion, tight end. I like that pick for them. He's got a really nice athletic build, and you know, I I think that's a that's a good pick for the Jets. I I really like that. Yeah, Twitter's acting up. <clears throat> Not a big fan of it right now. Colts are on the clock. Uh, 
to answer your question, I think the Rams are just focused on getting guys that can play special teams and adding depth. I don't. Th- I think they're going best available. I don't think they're looking at this as anything more than that. Like I think that's what they're doing. I mean, I'm picking Trice, if you ask me. Um, I, I'm I'm picking Trice with this next pick, if I'm the Rams. I don't know. I'm at the point right now. I would pick Trice. I would put. I would pick Trice or um, or Lonnie Phelps. I would pick Shaka Hayward, linebacker. Rakim Jarrett. I'd be interested in Max Duggan. I don't know. You get to this point, it's like, I I think Trice could start in this league. So, you know. Okay, I'm back. I think I've calmed her down. I think she's very unsettled with the storm and is just Oh yeah. Not having a good time. Okay. I did not miss the Rams pick. Trice would be a really good pickup. I think Nick Jones, Jalen Jones, Alex Jaylen Austin. Jones just got Jalen Jones just got picked by the Colts. That's another really good pick by the Colts. They've had a good draft. All right, shout out draft. I'm picking Max Duggan. I haven't picked a uh, a quarterback yet. I would be hyped if they took him. I just, I don't know. I think that that would be pretty cool. So my yeah. shadow draft, I had Brian Branch, Adebare, A.T. Perry, Corey Trice, Keaton Mitchell, Davis Allen, Luke Whipler, Trey Hodges Tomlinson, Nick Jones, or D. Winters, Nick Jones, and now Max Duggan. Oh, damn it. Wash. Uh, no, never mind. I was like, Minnesota is picking ahead of us, but they're not going to pick another quarterback, right? Wink. <laughs> no, I don't think Minnesota would. I mean, we, we literally, the only two quarterbacks we have on our roster as of now are Stafford and Bennett. So I think it would make sense if the Rams wanted to double dip at quarterback, especially for someone with a completely different skill set like Duggan, who you said, you know, you could theoretically make into like a Taysom Hill-esque player. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool, I think. Yeah. And it's like the Rams have the picks to do do it, so it's, why not? I mean, I do want us to take Trice with this next pick. Did I forget to put Zach? I literally forgot to put Zach Evans in my thread. That is so obnoxious. Yo, I literally left Zach Evans out of my thread. Did I put him on Twitter? No, I already made it. Like, bruh. 
Okay, I just never put it in the thread. I thought I had you guys. Do you guys see how dark it got? Oh, you know what? It's because I moved my studio lights. Sorry. The Vikings just took Dwayne McBride running back out of UAB. Interesting. Right, one sec. I'm going to move my light back before the Rams take it on. Gotcha. Although they're probably going to pick, but. That did not really help, but all right. The no, Rams pick is in. Oh boy. Here we go. We all want Trice in here, right? At this point. Yeah. I think we're all just like, we've had so many opportunities to take him. I think Hayward. The Rams really took punter Ethan Evans and there is no college listed for him on NFL network, which I've never seen before. At all, so Wingate. let's do Wingate. Yeah. Um. Okay. Whatever. I give cool. it a P for punter. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I punters. zero concept. I of mean, if this is a good pick or not. But position wise, it is right because we do need a punter. I do not know who Ethan. Okay, now they've corrected it to Wingate. Yeah. And that network was just like screw it, <laughs> just put a name. They just put a name. <laughs> Ethan Evans. Here's some highlights of him. I'm watching right now. D2 punter from Wingate. I don't even know where Wingate is. Exactly. NFL Network is screwing up. Now they put the graphic on as the Falcons pick. Hold on. Is this the Rams pick or the Falcons pick? They just switched it to... The Falcons okay, just traded the up with the Raiders. Okay. So they like. made a mistake. So it was the it was the Rams pick. Yeah. Ethan Evans is about chat? to be a dog. We're up again, by the way, in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in 10 picks. You could punt it 70 yards. I'm confused about the Trice thing because Trice had a really good um, senior bowl. So I do think he gets drafted. I will be very shocked if he doesn't get drafted. By the way, Atlanta just drafted DeMarco Hellams safety from Alabama. So Alabama had three safeties go in this draft. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I, I didn't really get a chance to watch him, so you know. But that's cool. Did the Rams draft Johnny Hecker? No. He was the UDFA. They drafted Greg Zerline. This might be the first punter the Rams have ever drafted. It would not be surprising. Do you think they also drafted? I don't think they drafted kicker. I stand by that. I don't. I think there's going to be a lot of kickers available as UDFAs. Rams weren't letting go of that uh, Mr. Irrelevant pick. That's why they offered the six next year. The Ram social media. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a punter.
Mr. Irrelevant, that's an interesting question. What position is Mr. Irrelevant going to be for the Rams? How am I still awake? Guys, I got one hour of sleep in case. <laughs> oh, man. No, the hour does make a difference, I guess. It's a lot better than just all-nighter. I mean, I think the Rams have had one of the best drafts of any team in the, the NFL in this round. I mean, I think it's, whoa, that got bright. It's because it's like storming and the clouds are like moving. So it's like sunny and then it's dark and sunny and dark. So it's just, there's a lot going on. Yeah. The that's... Falcons just drafted Jovan Gwynn, guard out of South Carolina. He was the last center that I watched. So I don't know if he's going to be a center or a guard. It looks like they draft him as a guard. So mm -hmm. it's a hard year for centers, man. So we are up in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nine picks. Oh, there's only been one pick since I last did that. Corey Trice is still there. There's got to be something medical. Carring Carrington Valentine, I could see the Rams snagging. I also yeah. think the Rams right now, they're feeling really good because they have three more picks. <laughs> Two more. Two more? I'm going to go grab um, the Olipop, by the way, because we're in Sounds the good. Round. Yeah, they have two more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, two more picks. Um, I will be turning the draft on for Mr. Irrelevant. All right.
So Cooper Hodges, Appalachian State guard, is going to the Jaguars. That's the latest pick. Um, I don't really know. I mean, I didn't get a chance to watch as many prospects as I normally watch. So priority UDFAs. Um, we'll see what ends up happening. My list is starting to dwindle as far as players around. Raymond Vohashik. Also picked by the Jaguars, defensive tackle, North Carolina. I kind of like that name, Vahashik. I'm going to do this. I don't know if this is as satisfying in a live setting as it is in the podcast when I open these cans, but I'm going to put it up to my mic and see. Mm. There we go. Goat, I would definitely say this is an A-plus draft. This is going to get them on the right path. They needed a draft like this, at least on paper. We'll see what happens you know, on the field, in practice, in training camp, how many guys make the team. But this has been an A-plus draft for the Rams, in my opinion. There's someone doing like building work outside during a storm, like one of my neighbors. And I'm just like, I respect the dedication, but like yeah. it is raining. <laughs> I know that's annoying. Uh, let's see. A dog think. Wow. All right. They've drafted 12 players so far with two more to go. Big haul. I agree with that. Definitely agree with that. 30 and a wake up. I wonder what the most players. A dog, appreciate the five. Jake, I'm thinking we might draft a kicker. So, is the best available right now? Um, Jake Podiens, Podiesny, Podiesny, Jake Podiesny. Jack. I truthfully Podiesny. don't know much about um, Georgia kickers, so I can't. To Comment be fair, remember we were saying how there wasn't another draftable kicker according to NFL.com? Well, the Packers drafted the lowest rated one in Anders Carlson. We're, so Ravens pick is in, then we got Buffalo, Vegas, Green Bay, Commanders, then us. So nfl.com for christopher dunn nc state very accurate his final college season making 28 of 29 bounce back from subpar 2021 adequate consistency as a mid-range kicker made both overtime kicks in dramatic 2022 win over rival north carolina doesn't handle kickoff duties career make rate just 40 percent from 50 plus all right he's out for me i need a guy that can hit the 50 plus and confidently Missed what would have been a game-winning 39-yard field goal versus Clemson. Slow operation time will result in block kick this pro. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm out of Christopher Dunn. Sorry, man. All right, BT Potter. Let's see what we got. See, this is why you guys are watching because this is the best kicker analysis that you're going to ever get. I'm just well, I'm just B reading this, but <laughs> BT Potter is the one is the name that I've seen. The only yeah. other name other than the guys that have been drafted that I've seen circulating. But again, I don't know anything about the kicker so i can't like comment on if that's accurate he missed every kick from 55 yards or greater i don't know i i i can't go from matt gay to a guy that can't hit a 55 yarder um made 70 percent of his kicks from 30 to 49 yeah i'm out on him
So it's got to be Jack, right? Pod Pod Yesney. Sounds like it. The Three Ravens just picked Andrew oh. Voorhees, the guard out of USC. That's a good pick. And he that's fell a good pick. Because of the ACL tear. Yep. And when he gets fully healthy, he is going to be very good. So that's a steal, in my opinion, for the Ravens. And he doesn't need to like do anything. Like that's the thing is like they're already pretty set on the offensive line. So he's good depth. And then they yeah. can gradually take over. You know, so I, I like that. Um, And they traded back into the seventh round to do it. So they knew what they were doing. Colton Dowell, that's an interesting one. Wide receiver Tennessee Martin goes to the Tennessee Titans. So clearly that's somebody in their backyard they knew. NFL.com has no report on him whatsoever. So that's just somebody they felt comfortable with. They They knew he was in their backyard. They did some homework on um. Yeah, so let's look at Podyesny. Okay, kicked in big games, missed two attempts in narrow victory over Ohio State during last season's playoff semifinal. He has poor success rate and kicks from distance. Consistency and power are key. Okay, so experience kicking in high leverage situations generates quick lift, adequate hang time and touchback on kickoffs. Three year kicker for highly successful Georgia squad. Leg for distance falls below average. Yeah, I don't think they should draft a kicker, Alexis. I really don't. I, I think they should sign one. They should probably, if they can make it work, you know, try and sign, uh, what's his name? Gold. The 49ers. Yeah, I wouldn't draft a kicker, and I, I think no. that you're going to have... I mean, I still can't believe they let Matt Gay go, to be honest, but... Out of those guys. Now, mind you, there is a chance where... You know, there there's a D two guy. You know, I mean, Missouri was it Missouri Western, Northwest Missouri. What what was that? For who? Uh, Greg Zerline. That's where they they got him. Oh yeah, he was from a uh, Southern Missouri, I think. Or no no no. Southwest Missouri. No, Missouri Western. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I don't. Even somewhere remember. in Missouri. Let's see. Yeah, somewhere in Missouri. Missouri Western. Okay, yeah. he was in, he was at Missouri Western, and he was a gem now i do agree with you gold is going to cost a little too much so what i would probably do for kicker is i'd be looking the same thing i'd be looking the same thing trying to find a guy at those small schools because i can tell you right now the small school guys are mo most of the time better than these guys it's very easy to slip through the cracks if you're being a kicker or a punter I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than that. The Bills just took Nick Broker, the guard from Ole Miss. He's, he's got a lot of versatility. Definitely. You know, he could play left tackle. He could play right tackle. He could play both guard spots. So this is like a utility guy. Bills. I, I like the pick. I think it makes sense. Oh, man. I'm tired. Not really. Just yawning. We're good. It's 551. Yeah, I'm, I'm out on all the kickers, though. Unless there's one... So 
Harrison Mevis or Harrison Mevis, the kicker from Mizzou, actually can kick from deep. Yeah, that actually, I, I've heard that name. Yeah. Program high 10 field goals from 50 yards. That's more than any of the other guys we were just hearing. Robert Soderholm, the third <clears throat> long snapper, Virginia Military Institute. He impressed a ton of scouts at the Collegiate Bowl, NFL PA. He might be an option. Everyone knows the Rams don't have a long snapper. They don't have a, a punter. Or they have a punter now. They don't have a kicker. So I think they're going to be the priority team for anybody looking to sign in UDFA. And that's probably why the Rams are like, eh, we'll figure the, it out. Uh, the Raiders just drafted Nesta Jade Silvera, who's a defensive tackle from Arizona State. And this is about where I think most people had him going. I didn't really watch his film, but yeah i know who he is jalen redmond is falling i had a fourth round grade on him he's my best available at the position i know i i realized that that he he had some red flags medical and off field so mm -hmm. i think that's why um oh another guy long snapper alex ward from ucf was at the he was the only one at the combine finalist for the long snapper award both years in a row. Not one botch snap throughout four seasons as the UF. I mean, he's consistent. Sign me up for Alex Ward right now. That dude is consistent. Not one botch snap in four years. I feel like I just jinxed him. His first snap in the NFL is just gonna be like, oh crap. Like <laughs> um <clears throat> Guys, the Packers pick is in and the Commanders, then we're up. Jake, what do you think the Rams are doing with the next pick? I hope it's not a kicker because I can tell you right now I'm not a big fan of who's available. Um, I would actually like Mevis. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they were kicker, know that I... but they wouldn't have to draft him, I don't think. I think he'll be there. I'm going to say it's either Shaka Hayward, Corey Trice, or they picked Max Duggan. I, I have to say, when I, when I first brought up the Max Duggan thing, it was, like, in jest, but then I've, like, convinced myself of the idea. I mean, you got like, the Taysom Hill. At the very least, you got the Taysom Hill sub-package, well, you know, thing. And here's the thing. Like, we literally have two quarterbacks on the roster. It's not, it, so, it, it's not stepping on the toes of Stetson Bennett because the guy's a seventh-round pick. You know, they're just they're two very different quarterbacks. They're very well. different. He's so, younger. So if, if Stetson doesn't work out, you at least have him to develop. Well, I'm not a compete. huge fan of him, but I like his mobility. I like his sub package qualities. Well, I think if anything, it's just another body, which the Rams need. You have to have more than two quarterbacks. And if anything, maybe it drives both of them to be better. They compete. I mean, I think they need a corner. So I would go either. I, I would go Corey Trice, Trice or Nick Jones. But I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and I, I'm not going to be shocked if they pick Max Duggan. I know everyone else will, but you and I have said it. I, I will not be shocked. My 234 shadow draft pick is going to be, um, let's see here. Ooh, the Packers drafted Carrington Valentine. <sighs> The corner out of Kentucky. And so if there the goes commanders one, pick Trice, oh, then man. Then there's not really much. There's not really much, no. So we'll see. Well, the commanders, have they not already drafted two corners? They drafted Forbes in the first. So I had Branch, Adabare, A.T. Perry, Corey Trice, Keaton Mitchell, Davis Allen, Whipler, Tomlinson, Go Keaton. Duggan. D Winters. I went uh Nick Jones and I had I went Doug in last pick. Oh. So go. now I'm gonna go with um I'm gonna go with Earl Bostick Jr. out of Kansas. Because I didn't get a I didn't get a tackle. Commander's pick is in, so we're on the clock. See the the cool thing about Earl Bostick is that Kansas converted him from a tight end and he's really athletic. He was the starting left tackle for them last year. And he went up against Will McDonald. He went up against uh, Felix on DK Uzama, Dylan Horton. Like he, he definitely was 
was battle tested, I would say, against those those type of guys in in the Big Twelve. Big Twelve starting to get some really nasty pass rushers too. But I really like Bostic. Commanders pick is in and they've taken forever. And I swear to God, there hasn't been a commercial lately on NFL Network. So once they announce this commander's pick, I feel like they're gonna go to commercial and I'm gonna be pissed. Dude. It's always been the Rams pick. I just think, well, I would say him or Northern Michigan, Jake Witt. I think they're two dart throw, although I would say he's way more of a dart throw, but I do like Jake Witt. If you're going out in this this round, I don't think they're going to go tackle, but I'm saying if in my shadow draft... In my opinion, they're going to go with some special teams capability. Um, so I would probably say they go corner. And if they do that, then it's Corey Trice, Nick Jones, Eli Ricks, Austin, Alex Austin. I would love to see them take Nick Jones here. I, I think Nick Jones would work. I think Brandon Joseph could work on special teams. Oh, Brandon I Hill. forgot that Brandon Joseph. Had, that is surprising. That happened both the Notre Dame's guys. Him and Foskey were guys going into last season that everyone was super high on. And then they just didn't have very good seasons and they just plummeted. Okay, the commanders took Andre Jones Jr., the edge rusher out of Louisiana. Not familiar. So You know who's still there? Andre Carter the second. Yeah. I could see them doing that. I could well, the see Rams them are on the clock. Isaiah land. So if they, if they go with edge again, the guy would have to be able to play special teams to me. They're probably going with a guy like Andre Carter at that point, or Isaiah land two guys that could probably play off ball linebacker. Um, Shaka Hayward fits the bill for a linebacker. They would look for Brandon Hill, Trey Dean, Brandon Joseph, Corey Trice, Nick Jones, Eli Ricks, Alex Austin, Taiwan Mullen. If they go tackle, I think it's Bostick or Jake Witt. Um, the pick is in, so they are picking here. You think that it for sure will be positional, not a kicker? No, it's not going to be a kicker. I, mean, uh, I don't think it is either, but it is. Rock kind of him Jarrett is another one. Like he could play special teams. He's a four and five star recruit. We still haven't drafted a safety. I think Joseph is who I would pick. I think if they would pick Brandon Hill or Trey Dean, but I would pick Brandon Joseph here if I was picking a safety. I did not. I forgot about Trey Dean. I know you really like Trey Dean. I like Trey Dean early on in his career. I don't know. I've kind of. Eh. It's Falling Jason the Taylor the second. Jason Taylor the second. I so that's another guy that's on my list there at safety. Um, like I said, it was going to be a special teams type of guy. Yeah. I, whatever. So position wise, I like it. I would have, like you said, I would have probably, I mean, I know I would have preferred Brandon Joseph. Um, Brandon Hill. I mean, I had a sixth on Jason Taylor the second. So, I mean, I guess he... Brugler had a fourth slash fifth. Uh, Jason Taylor the second, 5'11", 204, ran a 4.5. He had a, a 1.49 split, which is really... You know, 1.49 10-yard split, which is really good. Um, Really, he's over-aggressive. Plays with above average instincts, plays with urgency of the football, projects best as a post safety in the NFL with core special teams ability. So he's Does got he athletic feel- range. He had a 43 inch vert. So, I mean, that's just, that's alien level. Hard working, good functional strength, 19 pass breakups. Eight interceptions over the last two seasons. No penalties committed in college. He, he his you know fills the lane inside outside in in run lanes. 
um, a, a wrap up tackler, form tackler like that. And this, these are his notes. These are not mine. This is not my scouting report, but I didn't really get too much into his eval. Um, like I, I listed him there. I graded out his grade, but I didn't really have a ton of notes on him. I just had sixth round grade, but his weaknesses follows the eyes of the quarterback to the ball. Savvy passers will know to use it against him. Uh, false steps, inconsistent, deep third tracking, Lacks elite long speed to hold up a mirror and match man coverage. Inconsistencies as a tackler. Improved well, footwork. It, doesn't it always feels... play through. I don't know. I mean, it seems like you're getting a better player than a seventh rounder here. You're getting a guy that's going to work on core special teams and has a chance to compete in that safety room. And I, I think that's a good pick. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming that the main the main motivation behind picking him was the immediate special teams boost and that you know he can be developed you know i i do think the rams like the quinton lake russ yeast jordan fuller set you know so i think that they're going to try to really run with that So they have one more pick. Draft class is looking pretty freaking good, if you ask me. Um, now that one, one more pick. I'm one, gotten like greedy. It's like I want ten. More I know. Picks. I want more picks. Yeah. Undrafted free agency could be interesting. Yeah, that's always fun. This is another guy who's been through adversity Um, not to be grim and bring the chat down, but just to give you some background on Jason Taylor. um, He wanted to follow in his footsteps of his father. He played defensive line at FCS Langston. Tragically, his father was shot and killed outside of an Oklahoma city convenience store on new year's Eve, December, 2007, a day after Taylor's eighth birthday. So this guy's really worked his tail off you know losing his father as young as he did um you know that's obviously really tough and it just kind of goes back to the adversity thing you know i think it's another it's kind of a theme of what the rams have been looking for in these picks I think Mr. Irrelevant, who is that going to be? Shaka Hayward, Corey Trice. I feel like so now- here's if all the people the Rams want are gone, I think it's going to be Harrison Mevis. I'm just calling it now. Because they, they're going to have to get a kicker, and I think that if, if everyone is gone who they really like, I could see them just saying, screw it. Let's just Let's actually just take the kicker. Guys, he's not... He's not Jason Taylor from the Dolphins kid. No, no, no. It's different Jason Taylor. The Packers just drafted Lou Nichols the third, the running back from Central Michigan. Oh, Lou with L E W. Yeah, L E W. Yeah, I wanted to like him more on film. When I turned on the tape, I, I didn't I mean I didn't finish his eval, but I wasn't overly impressed.
Thank you for the 14, a dollar for each pick ID 89. Really appreciate you being in here, being a part of the community, constantly being, you know, more consistent than us and quicker than us with the picks. It's awesome. Thank I have you. to head out, but a dollar for each pick. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Jake. Thank you once again for a fantastic draft coverage. Whose house? Rams house. So um, really appreciate you, ID89. You know, your services are always uh, very much appreciated on here. And, uh, man, Thank it's, you. it's been, a lot of, been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. We're almost almost done. I mean, we still got a lot of picks. Jake Witt, by the way, just yeah. came off the board for the Colts. I really like that pick. Really toolsy guy. We talk about traits, tools. That's what Chris the Ballard like. wants. Yeah. yeah. The Seattle Seattle's pick is in, by the way. Um, we're at pick 237. I believe we pick again at 252. Am I mistaken? Does anyone in the chat know when the Rams pick again? Ooh, Seattle just drafted running back Kenny McIntosh out of Georgia. This is interesting. Okay, I don't like this positional fit for the Seahawks, um, but I really like Kenny McIntosh. It is interesting. They already drafted a running back, and they have Kenneth Walker. So Seattle now has Zach, Charb Zach Charbonnet, um, Kenny I said Charbonneau. Well I said I said Charbonneau on day two. <laughs> I I could hear you about to say that, and you're like um, Charbonnet. Well, th that's a solid running back room. I don't understand it. I didn't understand the pick to pick him in the second round when you have Kenneth Walker, but McIntosh. The the the, the issue there is he's just not a great athlete. So that's that's something you gotta you know that that's why he fell here. I mean. At this point, it doesn't really matter, but still can't believe Keaton Mitchell hasn't gotten picked up. Um, I think people are, are sleeping on him. I think people are sleeping on Valade. Ibrahim looks really good. Sean Tucker, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. the medicals, but I mean, he's at least draftable in, in on day three. I had him a fourth I, round grade. The Dolphins just picked someone I like. They picked t tackle Ryan Hayes out of Michigan. And I'm pretty sure he was my 10th overall tackle. So I'm very surprised he fell this far. Um, I don't, I, yeah, Sean Tucker. I'm very confused how he's still available. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something. By the way, th this board is starting to look not as pretty. <laughs> it's like all broken up and everything. The elimination color board. The Chargers took Max Duggan. The dream is dead. My dream is dead. Well, LA just got both the uh, SEC cha or not SEC championship, college football championship uh, quarterbacks. So both playing at SoFi, oh, where man. they played the championship game. Wow, they both played the uh, college championship game at SoFi, and now that is their home stadium. That's. Actually, really fascinating. You should tweet that out. You should, you I'm deserve credit to. for that. I like the pick for Max Duggan because there's no pressure. You know, he's gonna come in. He's gonna back up one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. He's gonna give him sub package opportunities, and then maybe his next team or if you know whatever happens, he can carve out a role. So now we got the Jaguars on the clock, then the Steelers. It feels like the Steelers haven't picked in a while. It does feel like that. Like they were killing it, and they don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean they didn't kill it. It's just like they were they went from like they were killing it consistently and then they weren't picking anymore. So um let's take a look at what the Pittsburgh Steelers did. Broderick Jones, Joey Porter Jr., Keanu Benton. 
Darnell Washington, Nick Herbig. Okay. Yeah, they really haven't picked since the fourth round. So that's that we we're right. I mean, it really did feel that way because they hadn't picked. They took a vacation, says uh Madman. Not sure how many UDFAs the Rams are gonna sign. I know they're hard at work right now. That's true. So not only are the Rams bringing in 14 draft picks, they're also going to bring in a lot of UDFAs. So there's going to be a lot of new faces um, on the Rams. I think Andre Carter as Mr. Irrelevant would be really cool. I agree with you. So while this draft is going, um, Alexis, do you want to go through each draft class and just kind of give our thoughts on them? Sure. So, all right, so I bring up the Cardinals here. Cardinals started off the draft getting Paris Johnson Jr. They got B.J. Ojulari with the 41st pick. They got Garrett Williams with the 72nd. Michael Wilson with the 94th. Then on day three, they got John Gaines, uh, the second guard, UCLA. They got Clayton Toon, quarterback, Houston. They got Owen Papo, linebacker, Auburn. Cottrell Clark, cornerback, Louisville. And then their last pick that they had for the day, they got Dante Stills, defensive tackle, West Virginia. What would you say the Arizona did? Because I thought they had a pretty solid draft. I think they're, it was just a well-rounded, consistent draft. Not something that's going to make you lose your mind, but I thought they just got really good football players all across the board. Um, I will get my thought on that in a second, but I do want to point out something that just happened. Jacksonville just drafted a defensive lineman slash running back. Wait, but, 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 but what? Derek Parrish out oh, of Houston. Oh, Derek Parrish, yeah. Which is very unusual, to say the least, and I think that's cool that he got drafted. Um, So back to Arizona's draft class. Um, I think they've actually had a really good draft, and it bothers me to say that as a Rams yeah. fan. I mean, it won't be a big deal because I don't think they're a very good football I don't, team. But... I don't think it's going to make – I don't think it's going to put them over the hump that they would need to to be competitive, but – Building a young core, very good picks. Now the Atlanta Falcons, they start off the draft. Bijan Robinson, they go out, they get their hopeful Todd Gurley. Um, they draft Bergeron in the th at thirty eighth. They trade up to get him, a guy that can play guard, can play tackle. It's going to be more of a project at tackle, better than a project, but you know what I mean. Guard, he's a plug and play guy. They're saying he's like a Pro Bowl talent. Uh, Zach Harrison, the edge defender out of. Ohio State in the third. You got Clark Phillips in the fourth. And then they didn't pick until the seventh with DeMarco Hellams and Jovan Gwynn. I would say this is a very top heavy draft for them. Um, some good, some bad. I, I mean, I won't even say bad. When you get to the seventh round, it's not bad. I just think at the end of the day, this could have been a better draft for them, but I don't think they absolutely like destroyed it. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I think it's, I'd give the Cardinals a solid B plus. I would give the Falcons like a B minus. I would probably say maybe even a C plus. Oh, I was muted. Sorry. Um, I'm giving it a C. Oh no. The Steelers just drafted Corey Trice. Oh my God, Adam, I'm going to kill you. Pain. I'm sorry to break the news to you. Everyone in the chat is also devastated. I see.
So we did the Falcons. Who's next? Uh, the Ravens here. So Zay Flowers really liked the pick. They got they didn't have a pick in the second round. Trenton Simpson in the third. Um, Tavius Robinson in the fourth. Caillou Blue Kelly in the fifth. Malisala I'm, uh, the, 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 I'm not even gonna be able to pronounce that name out of Oregon. Um, in the sixth, and then Andrew Voorhees in the seventh. Call me crazy, but aside from Andrew Voorhees and Zay Flowers and Simpson, I don't love this draft. I like Tavian, Tavius Robinson a little bit. I'd probably give this a C plus, maybe a straight up C. Yeah, it's um, I really liked the Zay Flowers pick, but after that, I'm kind of like. And now yeah. the Bills here. Oh, sorry. What was your grade? A C. Okay, C. So the Bills got Dalton Kincaid in the first after they trade up. Uh, Osiris Torrance in the second. Dorian Williams in the third. Justin Shorter in the fifth. And Nick Broker in the seventh. They'll have another pick at 252. Not going to lie, the Bills started off with a bang with Kincaid. Osiris Torrance is a great pick. Dorian Williams is going to fill that like Tremaine Edmonds like mold you know, bigger looking linebacker. Um, shorter seemed like a reach. I, I would probably say because of the top heaviness, this is a at least a B minus, but I didn't love it. I'd say it's kind of a C plus maybe. I, I don't know. It's not. The first two picks were great. After that, not so much. The Packers just drafted Anthony Johnson Jr., the safety from Iowa State. It's a good pick. That is a good pick right there. I'm going to update the ticker. Um, So then Carolina got Bryce Young via that trade up with Chicago. They draft Jonathan Mingo 39th. They get DJ Johnson, which you and I thought that was a reach. They trade up to get him. Chandler Zavala and Jimmy Robinson. Now, I look at it like this. I'm not as high on Jimmy Robinson as you are. Um, I love Chandler Zavala. I really like the Bryce Young pick, obviously. And Mingo is like, all right. I'm not as high on him as the consensus. The DJ Johnson pick, I just don't understand. And to trade up, no less, I would honestly give them a C minus. I was not a huge fan of their draft aside from Bryce Young. I'm going to say maybe a B minus because I really like Zavala, Young, and uh, Robinson for them. Now the Bears, they start off the day, uh, they start off the, the draft picking Darnell Wright, a lot of you know after i think they traded down here um they were scrutinized there for picking him maybe it's a little too early i like the player i don't hate that they got dexter at 53 they got tyreek stevenson at 56 they got pickens at 64 they got roshan johnson at 115 tyler sky at 133 noah sewell at 148 terrell smith at 165 and travis bell at 218 this is a B plus draft, I think, for the Bears. I, I think all across the board, it's very, very uh, solid. Um, to what makes this draft for me is going out and getting Terrell Smith, who is a top ten corner in the fifth round. I, I really like that pickup for them. Um, sorry, my I, my phone. My dad was trying to call me, and my. <laughs> It went through my ear pods. Um, yeah, I think this is a B plus draft for the Bears. It would be an A minus. Position wise, it's an A for me. Um, I just think some of the guys like Tyreek Stevenson, I think you could have gone somewhere else there. Um I don't know who that defensive tackle is. And then I would have preferred a different offensive tackle, but good. I think they I think it's one of the Bears' best drafts in a while. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, 
And then the Bengals. They start off with Miles Murphy. They get DJ Turner. They get Jordan Battle. They get Charlie Jones, Chase Brown, Andre Ayashovish, and Brad Robbins. I'm going to give this an A. I think they've had a great draft. I think they went out. They tackled some needs. They went out and they got future edge defenders. Going to be an absolute monster for, you know, in Miles Murphy. DJ Turner's the fastest corner in the draft. Jordan Battle is just being overthought. He's going to be a plug and play safety. Can start day one. Adrian Amos comp. Uh, Charlie Jones is my second overall receiver they got in the fourth round. Chase Brown. He's going to be a stud. He doesn't have to be the the main back there. He's going to be a really good change of pace. Um, Andre Iasovis uh, is somebody that you know they feel good about. Probably, I would imagine with that you know that upside to to develop. He doesn't have to start right away. So yeah, I'm going to give this and I'm going to give this an A, Alexis. Sorry, can you run through those picks again? I'm trying to change my settings on my phone. And my yeah. AirPods, my AirPod, my, for some reason, they keep trying to go to my phone. Miles Murphy, DJ Turner, Jordan Battle, Charlie Jones, Chase Brown, Andre Iasovich, and uh, Brad Robbins, the punter. I thought it was an A. Yeah, that's an A. I, I really like that draft for them. Bengals. The rich get richer. All right, Browns. Uh, Cedric Tillman was the first pick in the third round. Obviously, they gave up a lot of picks to get to Sean Watson, so they don't pick until the third. Um, I thought Tillman was an okay pick. I'm not a huge. I, I thought I'd like Tillman more. Sayaki Ika or Ika. Um, they got him in the third. They got Dewan Jones in the fourth. They got Isaiah McGuire in the fourth. They got Dorian Thompson Robinson in the fifth. Cameron Mitchell in the fifth. Whipler in the sixth. I think this came out to be a solid B. I think they, they recovered yeah. a little bit. Isaiah mm-hmm. McGuire's a hell of a selection. And I like the Cam Mitchell, Luke Whipler picks. Uh, Dewan Jones, I'm just not convinced on, but I don't mind them taking a flyer on him. So that's what I would say. Um, You have a B as well. Yeah, it's that's actually the best Browns draft too. I think I've heard in a while. I don't really like the Browns, so I don't like to admit it, but... <laughs> Man, I'm still so bummed they took Isaiah McGuire. Oh, I know. Um, So then the Cowboys here, they go out, they get Mozzie Smith. You can be a, a gap eater, uh, you know, big run stopper there. Luke Schoonmaker, DeMarvion Overshone, Viliami Fahoko Jr., uh, Asim Richards, Eric Scott Jr., Deuce Vaughn. I thought they had a better draft than I than uh, like I initially, and then now that I'm looking at it, I don't think it was that great of a draft. I think Deuce Vaughn was a good pick. Asim Richards is solid. Viliami Fahoko is a reach in my opinion. Um, Overshown, interesting upside there. Mozzie Smith, solid, and Schoonmaker, solid, but maybe a little early. I'd give the Cowboys a C. It's kind of yeah, like where I was I'm about at. To- I'm not like soup. I'm not overly excited about it, but I think they've got a few pieces in there. I mean, <laughs> Denver, <laughs> what is this draft class? <laughs> I think they hit on all their picks. This is hilarious. They picked four times so far, just four. They got Marvin Mims Jr., they got Drew Sanders, Riley Moss, and JL Skinner. Based on that, I think it's an A minus. I really like the haul that they got. I just think that it's hilarious. They only picked four times so far. You know? Yeah. No, that's actually, I'd say that's a B plus draft from them. Uh Oh, my dog's back. (laughs) All right. Detroit Lions. There we go. That's right. Jameer Gibbs. Jack Campbell. Sam Laporta. Brian Branch, Hendon Hooker, Broderick Martin, Colby Sorsdahl, and Antoine Green. I thought this was a better draft than I initially like. So, well, I, I like the Hooker pick. I, I love the Branch pick. I, I love the Laporta pick. Campbell was a reach. Gibbs is a stud. I'm going to say this is an A. I'm going to say this is a B plus. 
It could have been an A, but I think the Jack Campbell, you know, reach kind of ruins that for me. What are your thoughts? I feel like I'm giving them a B minus because that first round, I just think their first round was terrible. I mean, I thought it was absolutely terrible. I thought it made no sense. She just walked over the camera. And now she's taunting me. She just laid down in front of the camera wire and is staring at me. She's like, I'm resting here. Oh, my God. I need Isaiah a new Bolden, plan. Jackson State. So yeah, we get a, I just a Jackson saw that. State. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, they were undefeated this year. Green Bay Packers. All right. Their draft was interesting. Very interesting. Lucas Van Ness, great player. Um, then they go out and they get Luke Musgrave. They get Jaden Reed. They double dip on tight end and get Tucker Craft. They get Colby Wooden. They get Sean Clifford. That was the one pick where I was like, what are you doing? Dontavian Wicks. I like the pick. I like Carl Brooks. Anders Carlson. You go out, you get your kicker. Carrington Valentine. Lou Nichols. Anthony Johnson. They've had a good draft. I think the Sean Clifford pick is what the hell, but it's a fifth rounder. Yeah. So while it's a giant reach in that aspect, I don't really care because at the end of the day, um, I, I think that they did a nice job. I'm going to go with a, I'm going to go with an A minus. You're muted. I think. Oh, same. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good draft for them. Tucker crafts. Craft cheese in Green Bay, cheese heads, it adds up. Bengals just selected DJ Ivy defensive back out of Miami. Yeah. Um, anyway, Houston Texans. So they obviously they had an interesting draft. They go up, they they draft CJ Stroud, then they trade back up to get Will Anderson. They draft Juice Str- Juice Scruggs, Tank Dell. Dylan Horton, Henry Toa Toa, Jarrett Patterson, Xavier Hutchinson. We had some weird, I, I didn't agree with where uh, Scruggs went, but all in all, I think this is a really good draft. I'm going to give it an A. Agree. Pretty solid. All right, Indianapolis Colts. We got Anthony Richardson, Julius Brents, Josh Downs, Blake Freeland, Aditamiwa Adibare, Darius Rush, Daniel Scott, Will Mallory, Evan Hull, Titus Leo, Jalen Jones, and Jake Witt. This is an A-plus draft for the it's Colts. A-plus. I, I think they Probably absolutely my favorite. nailed it. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. They they had a killer draft. The Jaguars, um, let's see the Jaguars here. Anton Harrison, 27th. They traded down like that. Brenton Strange was a reach in my opinion. I had a fourth-round grade on him. A uh, little bit of a reach there. Tank Bigsby, Ventral Miller, Tyler Lacey. I love the Asir Abdullah pick. Antonio Johnson pick. Those two in the fifth were great. Parker Washington's a really good sixth round pick. Christian Braswell, I like that. Eric Hallett, Cooper Hodges, Raymond Vohashik, our, our guys I don't know, and then Derek Parrish is the edge running back. Um, I don't know. I feel like this could have been a lot better. I'm going to give this a C+. Plus. Yeah, I'm going to say C. It it just feels a little awkward, to be honest. It just feels, I don't know. Yeah. And then the Chiefs, they got Felix Anu DK Uzama, uh, Rashi Rice, Wanya Morris, Chamari Connor, BJ Thompson, and Keandre Coburn. I got to tell you, this, this is a C for me. I don't think they killed it. I think that they Who let a lot of again? really good. This is. Um, the Chiefs. Can you repeat their picks? I missed that first one again, or the first two. Uh, Felix Andy, DK Uzama. Oh, right. And then Rushy Rice, Wanya Morris, Chamari Connor, BJ Thompson, Keandre Coburn. Yeah, I'm giving that a C minus. I mean, listen, their first two picks I think were good, but they just fell off hard. I feel like after that, um, the 49ers just drafted Braden Willis, the tight end out of Oklahoma. Interesting. I know they were really. They were really looking at him. They they had a lot of interest in him from what I was told. I think they met with him a few times. So, um, yeah. So I gave it a C. What about you, Alexis? Did you did you say that anything? Yeah, that? I I think it's a C. I'm not super impressed. I mean, I like Rashi Rice and FAU, but overall. So the Raiders: Tyree Wilson, Michael Mayer, 
Byron Young, Alabama. <laughs> Figured that out way later. Mm. Trey Tucker, uh, Jacorian Bennett, Aiden O'Connell, Christopher Smith, Amari Bernie, and Nesta Jade Silvera. I'll, I like a lot of this, and I don't really care for other parts of it. I'm gonna give it. I'm a, gonna say a, B. I, I'm gonna. I was gonna say a B minus. I'll go B minus just because I really um, like the the first three picks that they made. Actually, I like Jacorian Bennett a lot too. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a B. The the Houston Texans, by the way, just drafted Brandon Hill, safety out of Pitt. He is a missile. Who I liked. That's what Brandon yeah. Hill is. He's just a missile. Um, very good special teamer. He, he's just gonna come in like a bat out of hell and and make contact with you. Um, Chargers, interesting draft. They go Quentin Johnston, Tuli Tuli Pelotu, Diane Henley. Darius Davis, Jordan McFadden, Scott Matlock, and Max Duggan. Again, I like some of this. I don't like others of this, but the top heavy parts of this I do like. I'm going to go with a B. I think it's a solid B draft for the Chargers. I thought it could have been a lot better. I don't think they really diversified the receiver room by getting Quentin Johnston, in my opinion, but I'm here for it. I, I think it's a solid draft. I'm, I'm going to go with a B. Yeah, I'm saying B. I like it. I might even say B+. Plus. I really like that they got Max Duggan and the two TCU receivers. That is really cool. They basically paired them all back up together. I didn't even pick that up. That's that's actually pretty crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> that is, right? That's really crazy. Wow. All right. So Rams, we got Steve Avila. We got Byron Young, Kobe Turner, Stetson Bennett, Nick Hampton, Warren McClendon, Davis Allen, Puka Nakua, Travius Hodges Tomlinson, O'Shawn Mathis, Zach Evans, Ethan Evans. They, they drafted two Evans back to back, obviously not related. Um, and then Jason Taylor, the second. In my opinion, this is an A-plus draft from West Need. And they didn't have a first round pick. And I feel like they drafted better than most teams that had a first round pick. I'm going to A plus. I think they absolutely dominated the draft from what they could do. And I'm really impressed with, uh, you know, with what they've done. I'm saying B plus. That's I, fair. I, I, I don't like my issue is with some of the positional. Like, I think they reached on a couple guys when there were better people available at the position. So I can't like, I'm still a little annoyed by that, but so I'm going B plus. Yeah, I mean, my rationale behind it, you get a, a plug-and-play potential Pro Bowl guard in Steve Avila. Byron Young, I, I think, is a plug-and-play day one outside linebacker, going to give you the juice off the edge. Kobe Turner's a the guy they just loved, right? I, I wouldn't have picked him there. There was other guys, but I get it. And I'm not going to penalize them too much because I really like the Stetson Bennett pick. I really like the Nick Hampton pick in the fifth round. Like, I think that guy could start. Um, Warren McClendon is somebody that I think can start if need be. He's played in big games. Davis Allen, I am super thrilled about him. Puka Nakua is a solid wide receiver, very, very intelligent. Travis Hodges Tomlinson can be a day one nickel corner uh, starting. Mathis, you talk about the long arms, the upside. Zach Evans, he could be a future starting running back in the NFL. Ethan Evans is your starting punter. And then Jason Taylor, the second, adds core special teams ability. That's why I well, I really like the draft. What's interesting is everyone in the chat, like 99% of the people in the chat are also saying that they agree with me, B+. Plus. Yeah. And this is the first time I think that more people have agreed with me. I, I know. Because norm normally when we do the drafts, I think more people agree with you so that's a pleasant surprise for me but um i also will say i wish we just would have drafted more secondary <laughs> that's fair but like, i mean a, you know I'm a little, i think like, they're gonna be fine they're probably gonna try and i mean i don't know what cap moro jomo was uh picked by the eagles <laughs> that's a really good pick i had a fifth on him so oh um so the Chiefs are on the clock now. Rams pick in nine picks. Let's see if we can get through this before the Rams pick. Miami. Okay. Miami does not have a draft class. <laughs> They've got what, two guys? No, no. It's uh, Cam Smith, Davon A. Chain, oh, 
so second and third, and then they didn't pick until the sixth, <laughs> Elijah Higgins, and then seventh, Ryan Hayes. Based on what they're doing there, I think the grade has to be fair towards how many picks they're dealing with. So you go in with that draft. I would say you came out pretty darn good with those two. So I'll say this is a B plus. I'll say this is an A minus. I think A chain is a game breaker. Cam Smith is like a starting caliber player. Higgins is fun. I don't know. I'm going to say A minus for for uh for the Dolphins here. I'll say B. I don't know. I mean it's Mm, yeah, maybe B plus. I'll give him a B plus. I'm actually it's gonna go with a B plus. <laughs> I I take it back. I'm trying to think. B plus. I'm trying to think in my mind of like who is on their roster, and I'm just like blanking. I mean, they do have Jalen Ramsey now. They're gonna have a pretty nasty secondary. I'll give yeah, them that. They got Ramsey and Chubb with that, so yeah. You know, I I think that's that's important, but yeah, I I, I would say B plus A minus. Um. Minnesota Vikings. They start off Jordan Addison. They go out and get another USC player in Makai Blackman at the end of the third. Uh, they sent that second rounder away for TJ Hawkinson, Jay Ward, Jaquel and Roy, Jaron Hall, Dwayne McBride. I'd say it, it, this is a B plus love the Addison Blackman combination. I think Jay Ward's underrated. Roy is okay. Really like Jaron Hall, uh, Dwayne McBride in the seventh. This is a good value. So I, I would say B plus. I'd give him an A, oh, to be honest. Okay. I like that draft for them. It's a good draft. Patriots. Well, they stole Christian Gonzalez. That was the biggest steal in the first round. Um, yeah. Nick Jones <gasps> to the Chiefs. Oh, to the Chiefs. Nick oh, Jones man. to the Chiefs. I'm glad he got drafted. Me too. I'm glad. He he deserved to be. I thought he could have gotten drafted higher, to be he, honest. He's but. a good dude. Like, mm-hmm. I we talked we hung for, out, like, we hours. We literally hung out <laughs> with him after the interview. I mean, we, we, we like, hung out with him Zoom. for two hours. Yeah. It was crazy. Like, we're just talking, mm-hmm. just just shooting the shit, you know? I forget what you guys started talking about, but, like, my eyes glazed <laughs> over at one point because I did not, I was not following what it, it was. Well, was. I, I think we were talking about anime in some fashion. It was anime, and then it was, I think, the end, something about the NBA that I did. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I think we were talking about Dragon Ball Z. That was what how it started, maybe. Mm-hmm. It might have been a different prospect, but I think we were talking about Dragon Ball Z, and then we just started talking about, like, the NFL and, you know, all sorts of stuff. It went on and on and on. We didn't record it, obviously. We were off the air, but... um. Yeah. I, yeah, it was a good it was a really good conversation. I really enjoyed talking with Nick. Uh, the Steelers are back on the clock, so you know that they're going to kill it. This is uh, the Rams initial pick. They pick swapped um, in the Allen Robinson deal. And uh, what was I going to say? Let's see if we can get this done. So. OK, Patriots, Christian Gonzalez, love the pick. Keon White. Really like the pick. Marte Mapu, really like the pick. They totally sniped the Rams on Marte Mapu. Uh, Jake Andrews, reach. Chad Ryland, not a fan of picking a kicker in the fourth. City Sal, solid. And, and Antonio Mafi, okay. Kayshawn Butte, Bryce Berenger, Demario Douglas, Amir Speed, and Isaiah Bolden. I'm going to be honest, this is not a great class, but Christian Gonzalez, Keon White, Marte Mapu really carried it. So I'm going to say it's at least a B-plus because they got those three guys that can contribute on another level on the defense. I'm going to say B-minus because after those first three, I think it gets really, I mean, other than booty. The Bills just drafted Alex Austin, corner out of Oregon State. I liked him. Really liked good him. tape. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone was talking about uh, Rajon Wright, and I just kept saying, Alex Austin is better tape. Like, I, I don't know why he wasn't getting talked about. So he goes after Nick Jones there. We might see a run on corners. So if the Rams are trying to snag these guys, Eli Ricks is now my best corner available. I only got three corners left. Ricks, who I have a fifth-round grade on, Rajon Wright, and Taiwan Mullen. Um, 
so I think it's going to be some corners that I don't know <laughs> that that they pick up. Uh, I don't know who's going to be the last pick there. Uh, maybe a long snapper. I could see that. Spencer Anderson, guard, Maryland. I don't know who that is, but I'm sure he's just stuff. The Steelers got him. Um, <laughs> so, all right. 253, 49ers are picking. We're at the Saints pick, or the, the, the Saints, you know, draft. Brian Brisey, uh Isaiah Foskey, Kendra Miller, Nick Saldaveri, Jake Hayner, Jordan Howden, A.T. Perry. This is uh, this is an A minus. You know, I'll say it's a B plus. I think it's a really good draft for them. Um, <clears throat> there are guys that I would have preferred, but I, I do really like this. Yeah, I'd say A minus. And then the New York Giants, Deontay Banks, John Michael Schmitz, Jalen Hyatt, Eric Gray, Trey Hawkins, Jordan Riley. Those first four picks hit home. They, I like all of them. I'll say the Giants are an A. I think the Giants had an A draft. Yeah, I agree. And that makes me happy because I like the Giants. So the Jets here are done for today. Will McDonald the fourth, Joe Tipman, Carter Warren, Israel Abanacanda, Zaire Barnes, Jarek Bernard Converse, and Zach Kuntz. I think this is also, I think this, I'd say it's an A minus. I think they really did a nice job. They went out and got one of my favorite edge defenders in this draft. Joe Tittman's the best center. Abana Kanda, my RB4. I thought they did a really nice job. 49ers just took Ronnie Bell, by the way, out of Michigan. Yeah. So, um, I'd say A- minus for the Jets. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'll say A-. minus. I think they reached a McDonald. I think their last few picks were... Okay. Um, I do like Koontz. So we've um, got one, two, three, four. We got five picks before the Rams are up, by the way, with Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. So the Eagles, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Tyler Steen, Sidney Brown, Keely Ringo, Tanner McKee, and Moro Ajomo. I think this is an A plus. I mean, I don't I just think they did a really, really nice job in this draft. Sorry, can you repeat that? Who uh, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Tyler Steen, oh. Sidney Brown, Keely Ringo, Tanner McKee, and Moro Ajomo. I think it was an A+. Plus. A+. Plus, yeah, a plus. Philly killed it. Philly, I'd say that's the best of the draft so far. Indianapolis right behind them. Yeah. The Steelers, Broderick Jones, Joey Porter Jr., Keanu Benton, Darnell Washington, Nick Herbig, Corey Trice Jr., and Spencer Anderson. I, I mean, to me, that's an A+. a plus. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 49ers, <laughs> Jair Brown. Then they went out and got Jake Moody. So they drafted a kicker at 99th overall. Cameron Latu, Daryl Luter Jr., Robert Beal Jr., D. Winters, Braden Willis, and Ronnie Bell. I don't think this is a good draft. I no, mean, I I'd really say C don't. Minus. I, I think it's a C minus. I'm not going to go as far as a D. Uh, I think I like the Latu pick. Daryl Luter could be a problem. But and D Winters is a good pickup, but uh, Ronnie Bell is interesting. I don't know. I just Jair Brown, obviously. I, I don't know. The, the kicker really ruins it for me. I'm going to say C minus Seattle Seahawks, Devin Witherspoon, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Derek Hall, Zach Charbonnet, Anthony Bradford, Cameron Young, Mike Morris, Alu Alu Atimi, Jarek Reed, and Kenny McIntosh. This is a, a solid A. I, I don't think it's an A plus because there's some picks where they're a little weird, but I, I really like going out, having Witherspoon, uh, JSN, Charbonnet, Hall, Bradford. I, I like all those guys, so I'm going to say it's an A. Yeah, A. The Giants distracted Gervarius Gervais Owens, the safety from Houston. Brandon Joseph is still there. I wonder if the Rams will take him at Mr. Irrelevant. Guy that was once wonder, considered a top I, pick. I wonder Mox. if there's a health thing going on. I, I it's just very weird to me that he's fallen this far. I thought he would be like in the fourth round. So many people just bailed on him. I don't know. I don't think his tape's that bad. I do see why he's not like super athletic, like you hope, right? Um Okay. Tampa Bay, Kalijah Kansi, Cody Malk, Yaya Diaby, Servasier Dennis, Payne Durham. Josh Hayes, Trey Palmer, Jose Ramirez. I'm going to say this is a solid B+. Yeah, same. Tennessee Titans. 
Peter Skaronsky, Will Levis, Tajay Spears, Josh Wiley, Jalen Duncan, and Colton Dowell. I'm not going to lie. This is a pretty fire draft. I, yeah, I'm going to say it's an A. I think Titans did a really nice job. The Commanders, Forbes, so Emmanuel Forbes, Quan Martin, Ricky Stromberg, Braden Daniels, KJ Henry, Chris uh, Rodriguez Jr., and Andre Jones Jr. I'm going to say this is an A minus. Really, really like this draft from the Commanders. And that is, uh, that's that. We did all of them. Damn. 49ers just drafted Jalen Graham, linebacker out of Purdue. I don't know who that is. I don't either. Um, all right. Let's see here. I'm taking Mr. Irrelevant Shaka Hayward. And there's, oh, damn it. Andre Carter's sitting there. I'm going to take Shaka Hayward. I don't know who I want. I'm trying to think. Maybe like, well, Brandon Joseph probably if I had to pick, but. They really milked this thing to the seven hours. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because this thing, honestly, they were in such a like role and it definitely got milked. Oh no, my dog's back. Come on. We're so close. We've almost made it. Don't. E has Eli Ricks been taken? He's not. He's my number one corner available. Brandon Joseph, Eli the Ricks. The Packers just took wide receiver Grant Dubois from Charlotte. Interesting. That's true. 30 and a wake up. You're right. They're not going to commercial during that Mr. Irrelevant. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> silver linings, my friends. Speaking of silver linings, I got the uh, the Devils game right after this. Although I'll be working. Oh, I'm taking a nap after we. I said I was going to, but I'll probably end up. Working. I'm going out later tonight, so I need to. Oh sleep yeah, you because definitely I've... need to. What the hell's wrong with you? Why would you do that to yourself? Because there's a comedian in town that I want to see who's on my favorite show. Okay. That's a nice flex. So I like I, that. She's coming to the uh, Comedy Vault in, Bata in Batavia. Nice. Okay. Broncos pick is in. Broncos pick is in. Let's get the show on the road, NFL Network. Alex Forsyth, center from Oregon. Okay. So now we have one center left. It's Mike Nowitzki out of Kansas on my board. Uh, we have we have at least one player for each position, but we're running thin. And honestly, I think I just haven't updated some of these. <laughs> it's it was a lot like trying to do the ticker, and I mean, I still have Steelers drafted Purdue corner Corey Trice Jr. Like I was really busy, so I thought I did a nice job of keeping it updated for the most part, but then it got a little I hectic. Agree. Chicago's up than us. Everyone in the chat, put who you want Mr. Irrelevant to be for the Rams. Man, Keaton Mitchell, I would not mind uh, being a UDFA signing now. That explosiveness, I don't know how the hell he, he fell this far. I just, I don't get it. I'm seeing Mohamed Ibrahim. I see Ivan Pace, a kicker, Eli Ricks, Adam Aberia, Jalen Redmond, Bears pick is in. So the Rams are on the clock. Let's see who the Bears took.
they're really trying to make it last to the hour because it's like just they're holding pick is in but they're not someone in the chat said bryce ford wheat and i actually really like him i if the rams took him i would like him um come on tell us chicago's pick if they go wide receiver i want i would want rock him jarrett um That was my shadow draft pick, though, Shaka Hayward. I mean, like, I could go. I mean, I'm not afraid to go either where uh, any of those places. Trey Dean is still there. Brandon Joseph. Dude, like, are you kidding me right now? Does NFL Network have the the presentation? They they said Chicago's pick is in, and then they took it down, and now they're just like talking. They're literally trying to make it to the hour. They are trying so hard. I mean, they got it because of commercials, but still, it's just they're just not. They're milking um, it. I could also see the Rams taking Jake Bobo out of UCLA. I could see that. Oh my God! Tell us the pick. Bruh. <laughs> they're just literally they literally took it down and they're just now talking like they don't even want to discuss they took kendall williamson safety out of stanford do not the know bears? who that is yeah so now we've got the Rams on the clock for Mr. Irrelevant, guys. The last pick. And it's funny. Whoever they pick is going down in history, period. Like, it's... The 2023 Mr. Irrelevant. It's honestly so... I, I love this. I mean, I know people are like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. It's corny. I don't care how corny it is. Sign me up. I want to pick Mr. Irrelevant every year. The Rams pick is in. Who's it going to be? <laughs> UDFA um, signings are already being released on Twitter, guys, by the way. Just are they? Know. Yeah. Well, two. So I don't know if I could say exclusively that they are, but... Are they going to make us wait for this pick because there's still four minutes left? Oh, my God. They're going to milk the shit out of this. They're like, the pick is in for Mr. Irrelevant. But first, let's have discourse about it for five minutes. Yep, they just removed pick is in from the thing. I see a lot of people in the chat want this to be Eli Ricks. I think Eli Ricks would be a good pickup. I mean, he's my best available corner, fifth round grade on him. I think I think it's Shaka Hayward or Shaka Hayward or Brand or Shaka Hayward, Andre Carter the second or Brandon Joseph. That's my final. I would also like Ivan Pace. I saw someone in the chat say that. I, Because I don't think we took like a linebacker yet. I don't know if he fits, though. I mean, maybe I don't know. I thought he would go earlier. <clears throat> oh, I had yeah, a fourth-round grade he, on him. Sam, I, I thought he would have gone way earlier. I have a fourth-round grade on Andre Carter the second, so. The it's Rams Deswan took Johnson? <laughs> yes. Deswan Johnson out of Toledo. Ha-ha! <laughs> I literally called it. I had him in my mock draft. I love Deswan Johnson. I, I honestly, I, I love Deswan Johnson. This guy, you know, he's shorter. He, he's not as you know built, so to speak. But this is this is one of my guys. This is another one of don't... my guys. I really like Tanner Morgan. Is officially signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, UDFA. But Deswan Johnson, he's a baller. He's you a know. defensive tackle. Sorry, so people in the chat were asking. I'll oh, yeah, Toledo. Um, they met with him. I just him. don't. 
I don't like this position for like one more pick. I wouldn't have taken a defensive tackle. So I'm not like He's a violent guy, really quick uh really quick first step. I I really like this pick. I I I mentioned him in my uh <clears throat> my uh sleepers. So I really like this and it just caps off the day for me cuz I've I've just been a really big fan of everything they've done and I I've been kind of pounding the table for this guy for a minute. Now, I didn't think they would pick him once they picked you know. But yeah, he was in one of my he was in my guys uh, thread. Well, that wraps up the draft, guys. Yeah, that was uh that is and now UDFA signings are going to come in fast and furious i don't know jake might stay on and, and do something for that i am not <laughs> i got a lot that i got to do and then i also want to try to sneak in a nap before i go to the comedy show tonight but overall guys um i would say very uh, my my draft my draft grade for the rams is a b plus um as i know we all talked about this earlier but Seems like most of you guys were in the B to B plus range. So we'll see. I think that the Rams also have an opportunity to get some really good UDFAs. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see who they sign. I'd love for them to get Brandon Joseph. Um, I really think they need to go secondary. I would UDFAs. really like Brandon Joseph as well. Um, you know, I, I think I think Brandon Joseph, I, I'm kind of bummed Andre Carter the second didn't get drafted, you know. I thought he was definitely worth that. Um, I just, I think the Rams absolutely killed it today. Definitely a plus draft from me. No complaints whatsoever. You know, when you talk about guys at each position, I had him on downtown Rams uh, or not downtown. Rams, I believe in Rams. Um, I mentioned him on an episode where we were doing our guys at each position and I had said Deswan Johnson, you know, no one's talking about him. The fact is that he played at Toledo. He's undersized. He's explosive, rips through the gaps, can smother the run, rush the passer, lightning quick first step. Great overall movement skills, can even get to the sideline laterally, uh, can contort his body, get skinny to carve space through the offensive line. Um, shorter arms is going to make his life harder for sure. He doesn't have the bulk, you know, for the position that you'd want. I'm not sure how much he can add, but at the end of the day, I think Deswan Johnson is a true sleeper in this draft, and I absolutely want him on my team. So I am very, very happy to, you know, anytime, you know, we spend all this time on these guys. Anytime you go through a draft process where your guys are selected by your team, it's it's really cool. So um, big ups to the Rams today. You know, I, I just, I, I really think they killed it, and I'm very excited you know, about this UDFA class, because this is not like any other UDFA class in the past. I think the Rams have a serious bargaining chip here playing time. I think that's really, really what it comes down to, right? Like Alexis, Hey, you sign with us. There's a good chance that you can make this roster. So, you know, I think it, it, you could see some big names coming off the board, uh, you know, and, and I'll stick around Alexis. I think I'll stick around for a little bit, um, just for a little bit, you know, not that long, but so if, if you want to, you know, head out, you can, but, um, you know, I'll just stick around until the Rams, maybe they announce a pick or two. But, um, you know, this has been a lot of fun, and I, I really appreciate you teaming up with me, holding out strong for how many hours did we stream? What was the last night? It was four, five? Last night was, it, I think, four and a half. It was four and a half. three and a half. Friday so, night, we're about to hit seven. So, like, close to 15 hours. Yeah. In three days. That's wild. My camera survived, although it almost didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was able to revive it. I was very scared that my camera was a goner. Um, yeah. But yeah, I always I always enjoy doing this. It's always fun. Every year. Absolutely. It's our draft tradition. And a lot of the guys in the chat have been here for at least three years now. Three of these. So very, very fun. Um, yeah, the UDFAs are going to be fun. I'm always like scrolling through later. I'm going to have to like scroll through Twitter and like see everybody. Um, there's a couple guys, some that we had on our show. Jeremy Lucian comes to mind who I am excited to see get some shots via UDFA and 
Yeah, him. We'll see. Uh, you know, um, Andrew Whitaker, Hylasi. Well, Andrew Whitaker was from last year, but yeah, no, I, I definitely, if, if they could get him, oh, yeah. if they can get him a workout, I think they'd really like what he brings to the table. Six, mm-hmm. one, one ninety three corner and most intelligent guy we've ever interviewed, uh, from last year, wash you St. Louis. Um, and he ran a four, three, seven. So he's yeah, working he's insane. He's working with Drake Kirkpatrick. He's working with Darius, Darius Hillary. He's working with Pac-Man Jones. This guy wants to be like the guy, right? So, you know, yeah. I think at the end of the day, you know, he, he's put in that work and uh, I'd like to see the Rams give him a shot. And I have, I, would too. I have reached out to the Rams <laughs> internal. I passed along the info trying to get them to go to that, uh, you know, that workout. We'll see what ends up happening, but you know, I, I really like the kid out of Wash U. He's a good dude. And um, shout out to Andrew Whitaker if he's watching by any chance. I know he follows our stuff. He, yeah. He had mentioned that. So um, if you're watching, you know, we're we're rooting for you, pulling for you, and trying to help you out best we can, like we said we would. Um, Jake, okay, Jordan Jones, cornerback from Rhode Island, is signing with the Rams. Who? Uh, Jordan Jones, cornerback, Rhode Island. And I'll just look up these guys as they pop up. But Jordan Jones, 70th. Okay, 4-5 speed. 5-10, Rhode Island. That's yeah. Sick. I thought he met with the Rams. Noah Gindorf is going to Seattle. Yeah, I just saw that. I and forgot then, about him too. Yeah. And then Lepke, his teammate, he's going to Dallas. So I know a lot that, of people were talking about getting him. He's going to Dallas. I, I got to say, we should try to get Mr. Irrelevant every year. I don't think it's that hard to do it. And Deswan Johnson, oh, I got excited. Uh, Brandon Joseph is signing with the Lions. I thought it was the oh. Rams at first. I was like, oh, that's awesome. That yeah. bums me out. I know. I actually liked his fit with the Rams. I thought he could have had a shot, but um, yeah. The problem is I don't know these UDFAs like I've known them in the past. So we'll see. I mean, and also a lot of um, guys take a couple of days to sign. So these come in for about three days, I'd say. You know, the majority of them are the first three days. Um. Because, you know, some some guys get a lot of, like, offers, right? So they kind of have to think about it, sort it out. A couple guys are lucky to get one or two, so they decide pretty quick. So it's just like you kind of never know. Yeah. No, absolutely. But all right, guys, I'm going to head out. Thank you all. Um, I'll be on Twitter. I have a lot of Twitter notifications. I just haven't checked them yet because I was – doing a lot <laughs> trying to figure out the picks and stuff um and i didn't want to get sidetracked so i'll check those out soon jake and i will do an episode and usually we get some uh, of these guys on the show and this year there are 14 so i think our odds of getting a few on downtown rams have gone up <laughs> i would say so, so yeah so all right I'm dipping, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you, all of your comments. Feel free to tweet me if you want to talk about more draft stuff. Um, You guys are awesome, even though you don't like my pizza. It's okay. I forgive you. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Um, I'll see you guys. Later, Alexis. Bye, guys. So, all right. looks like you guys got me. You're stuck with me. I won't be on that much longer, but I figure let's just waited out until seven seven twenty maybe
Um, let's see. I'm going to start looking up, guys. Earl Bostick. Let's see if he has anything. Wait, hold on. What did that just say? Where did Ibrahim go? Ibrahim just got signed, but I didn't see who it was. The Lions have signed Mohammed Ibrahim. Let's see. Yeah, they're related. What I think of all the Rams picks, I gave it an A+. Plus. I, I absolutely loved this draft. Absolutely loved it. Thought it was fantastic. Why am I so high on Stetson Bennett? Um, I mean, I had a, like, I definitely liked Jaron Hall more, but I, I just, I think that Bennett is exactly what you need. You need a guy that's going to be a plug and play backup. Um, if need be like he can come in in a pinch, he's won big games, you know? And, and I just, I feel like I trust that, but also he was their guy. You know, I, I got, Oh, you're not hearing anything. What I do. Can you hear me now? Check. All right. There's definitely sound. Um, yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's let's talk about it. All right, Let, let's go through the draft real quick. So we're going to go to the Rams selections here. And the Rams. All right. Steve Avila was their, their first pick of the draft. I think he's an absolute stud. I think he's going to likely I think he's going to be a pro bowler at some point down the road. Potential all pro, definite plug and play starter at guard, either guard spot. Can play center as well. He was originally a center. So that's something that's that's pretty awesome about him. Byron Young I love that pick. He's 25 years old. That's the big knock on him, but he's an edge defender. He can play right away, right? Um, and I, I love the Byron Young pickup because he's going to add juice off the edge. He has the, the fastest, he has the quickest explosive first step in the draft period. Um, Kobe Turner is somebody that is going to take me some getting, you know, getting to know a little bit. I haven't watched all those videos that you guys have sent me about Kobe Turner. I know now he's apparently a TikTok music, a uh, music star. Um, you know, he had a really good you know, breakdown film breakdown with Brett Coleman. I have to watch all that. I have not had a chance to watch it. I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, but here's what I will say. Okay. I like Kobe Turner. 
I just felt like that pick was a little high, but it didn't matter because I feel like they killed this draft so much that I don't think the reach really bothered me when it's all said and done. Stetson Bennett, fourth round, you go and you get your guy. This is the guy that they wanted. This is a guy that they called off the charts. This is a guy that I was told last night they were looking at. Um, so I really like this move for the Rams because he's a proven winner. I came away. I watched the tape and I'm like, I wasn't expecting to like this guy the way I did. And I'm like, oh my God, I actually like this dude. And so, <clears throat> you know, I like the Bennett pick. I think he's come from a lot, you know, and I just, I, I think that he deserves more credit. I think he gets a lot of crap. But, you know, I really like Bennett. I really like the Nick Hampton pickup. He's going to be an edge defender that might not start right away, but he's got that burst off the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I really like Hampton and, and what he was doing at App State as a true speed rusher. He's going to have to develop more in his toolbox for sure. He's a little raw in that aspect. But to get a guy like that in the fifth round, love it. I definitely think he fits. Warren McClendon Jr., to get him in the fifth round, I had him in my mock draft. I love the pick there. Absolutely love it. I had Davis Allen in my mock draft. Love the pick. I think Warren McClendon is more NFL ready than people give him credit for. Um, when you look, you know, playing for Georgia, playing in the national title game twice, being on, you know, the best program in the country and manning his spot down. I really liked McClendon. He's got a pretty solid anchor, I would say. I think he's underrated. And then Davis Allen, what can you say about the guy? I mean, all the tight ends, and this guy falls to the fifth round. I don't really get it. This guy, yeah, maybe he can't create separation, right? Maybe he's not the fastest tester, but he plays with the play speed he plays with is better than the way he tested, so I didn't care. Um, the 90-something percentage of contested catch rate, the best in college football, I'll take that to the bank. He's, he has tenacity as a blocker in the trenches. He can be flexed out wide. I really like Davis Allen. I felt like that was a really good pick that we will go back. We will look at and be like, man, the Rams really were cooking with gas here. Puka Nakua, really intelligent receiver, solid route runner, really good. When you're looking at just a guy that knows where he is on the field, that, that field spatial awareness, um, he's going to get his feet in bounds. He's going to be, you know, a, a guy that can make, you know, plays, uh, exchange, you know, basically get the, get to the first down marker, move the chains. That was totally escaping me there. But, um, he's somebody that stood out on tape when I was watching Jaron Hall. I really liked him. And then I really, really, really like getting Travis Hodges Tomlinson, who I thought was a much better pick, you know, earlier on. Uh, they get him in the sixth round here, 182. This is a day one nickel corner, in my opinion. He could start day one, no doubt about it. He's going to come in there. He is going to have that tenacity, and he is going to win a job. I don't know what it's going to be. I think it'll be slot. I think they'll move to Kobe Durant to the outside like he should. And, uh, man, uh, I can't say enough good things about Travis Hodges Tomlinson. Oh, Sean Mathis, I didn't really get to finish my eval on him, but what I will say is out of Nebraska, this guy has – long arms man this is a guy that is this the six five you know prototypical size for an edge defender who you just develop he's raw they figure it out you develop him zach evans in the sixth round 215 second round grade a guy that is a starting running back hopeful down the road i think he can legitimately turn into a starting running back i think he's really really good I think he had some moments where Judkins kind of took over and overshadowed him at Ole Miss. Didn't have that killer instinct. I think he kind of fell because of that. But I'm telling you right now, Zach Evans has that home run hitting ability that the Rams are lacking, that they needed to hit on, and they did. And that's why I love that pick there. Ethan Evans, you get a punter at a Wingate. To me, the guy can punt 70 yards. I'm not a punting expert. I, I thought it was pretty good last year with Ryan Stonehouse calling that. And, uh, you know, the guy who went to um, the the Ravens. But Ethan Evans looks like a legit player. Jason Taylor, the second, gives me some Darren Bates, Nick Scott, special teams, potential starter vibes. Um, he's got that tenacity. He plays over aggressive. So I think you got to just channel that, obviously, into a more controlled aggression. 
But if you do that and you develop him, he could start someday down the road. And then Deswan Johnson, you talk about a guy that's kind of built with that Aaron Donald frame, you know, very, very quick off the snap, just a lightning quick first step. He is going to absolutely rip through gaps and he's going to be a menace if he gets a chance to. I think this is somebody, as a Mr. Irrelevant, he's going to come in day one. He's going to work his tail off like he was doing at Toledo, and I think he's going to be a fan favorite. I think people are going to like him a lot. I kind of see a little Puna Ford to his game. Puna Ford at Texas uh, was a 5'11", um, you know, defensive tackle, and I, I think he's kind of similar. I mean, he's more he's taller than that, of course, but Deswan Johnson is one of my guys. He's a guy that they were looking at. He's a guy that they met with, and... He's coming out of Toledo, so not a lot of talk about him was either going to get drafted or not going to get drafted, but I really like that they made him Mr. Irrelevant. This guy's 6'2", 285. You can say he's built similarly to Kobe Turner, but at the end of the day, I think it doesn't hurt to have those two guys undersized, so to speak. I feel really good about this draft. I feel really good about the position it puts them in. You know, basically, you address the quarterback position. You go out, you get your backup quarterback in Stetson Bennett. You go out and you fit. You finish building the running back room because you have Cam Akers who will start. You have Kyron Williams who you feel good about in pass pro and other things. And then now you add Zach Evans who has that home run hitting ability that has a chance to really boom in this in this draft. Then you look at wide receiver. You go out and get Puka Nakua. You don't have to commit to him as anything more than a wide receiver five. To me, he's behind, obviously, Cup. He's behind Atwell. He's behind, uh, you know, Van Jefferson. He's behind Skoranek. I think he is going to be battling McCutcheon. I think he will win that. And I think he will take over as wide receiver five. And then they're probably going to look at drafting a guy next year, you know, when uh, Van Jefferson becomes a free agent. And then tight end, you go out, you get Davis Allen. You're going to have him compete. You got two guys that are in contract years in Tyler Higby and Bryson Hopkins. Hunter Long is the only tight end on the roster after this year. So I think this made a lot of sense to go out, get Davis Allen. It allowed you to focus on other positions of need, but still get good value in the fifth. He is going to sneak up on people. Let me tell you right now, you still go out, you help the offensive line later on. You get a guy that is more NFL ready than given credit for kind of built in the same vein as Tremaine Ankrum, a guy that's played in big time games. That's Warren McClendon, in my opinion. Then you get a plug in play guard that he's just going to fit right in there. He is a starter day one. No ifs, ands, or buts about it with Steve Avila, who has flexibility to play the center position. I mean, he has three spots on the offensive line, could even kick in at right tackle if need be. So I love Avila, you know, high character guy, a leader, a captain. Then you address the edge spot. Okay, you address edge. There was only three guys on the roster. One guy that you felt decent about starting with Michael Hoyt. Well, they feel good about Michael Hoyt because they're going to be starting Michael Hoyt and Byron Young, who's going to be on the other side. He is a he's just adding juice, man. You know, quickest first step in the draft for any edge, in my opinion. I think I'm really excited about him. Then you go out. You add O'Shawn Mathis later on the draft, somebody that can kind of develop behind the scenes like Daniel Hardy. And then in addition to that, what I will say is, you know, adding Nick Hampton is another guy who's probably a rotational guy this year, has a chance to develop into a starter. And then you're looking at potential starting tandem of uh, Nick Hampton if he develops and Byron Young. Right. So I feel really good about that. You get, uh, you know, Trey Hodges Tomlinson in the, the slot corner spot. Feel good about that. And then you add, you know, I just uh, mentioned earlier, Jason Taylor, the second in the safety room, you go out, you get your punter, they'll figure out kicker. I think they're going to find their guy in, in UDFA. So I really, really, really like this draft hall. Uh, my final mock draft, my only mock draft I did for the Rams, in case anybody thinks I'm lying, <laughs> I had DJ Turner. Isaiah McGuire, Garrett Williams, A.T. Perry, Marte Mapu, Davis Allen, Jaron Hall, Ricky Stromberg, Keaton Mitchell, Makai Blackman, Warren McClendon, Brenton Cox Jr., and Deswan Johnson. So I did have three guys in my mock draft that were drafted by the Rams. That hit rate is insane. I've hit at least one guy in the mock draft every year over the last, I think it was four years. So this year I hit three of them. 
Okay. Those are three guys that I really like. Those are my guys. Allen, I love. You know, I, I love Warren McClendon. I love Deswan Johnson. I will not be surprised if McClendon ends up being one of those early, uh, you know, risers where, you know, kind of comes out of nowhere, so to speak, but ends up being really good. I would not be surprised if Davis Allen is your starting tight end of the future. I really wouldn't be surprised. I think the Rams drafted very well and they need to have this draft class going into what is happening right now. Um, yeah, so I just I thought I was getting something there. Uh, so yeah, I feel really good about this draft class, guys. I, I just you know I wanted to to bring that up, but yeah, I mean now I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna go and and you know figure out, and then I'm gonna you know kind of repurpose some of this content. I'm gonna put a compilation together, reacting all the picks. I'm going live, I believe, tomorrow in some. I don't know the details. But I'm I'm supposedly going live on Bleacher Report tomorrow, um. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. So to talk about the Rams NFL draft uh, hall. So tomorrow we're supposedly going live on Bleacher Report. Um, I'll get you the details when I have them. But I'm really excited to do that. So that is going to. That's that's going to be a big, big deal for me, you know, and I appreciate you guys. We had a really, really nice turnout and I will get you the numbers before I head off. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> wow, I can't even talk now. Losing my voice. Also, again, I don't know how I'm awake. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I literally slept one hour. I slept one hour, maybe one and a half, but I didn't sleep many hours. Um and I'm, I mean, I'm feeling it, but I'm also not feeling it because I can tell you right now, these neuro mints are unbelievable. And they're, the link is in the description. If you want to grab any, uh, they're just freaking awesome, but let's look. So in conclusion, we had a total, at least on my channel guys. And I think we broke a record. We had to have broken a record. Um, yeah, so two. All right, so let's let's do the math here. So we got let's round this up. So we got about seven, seven five. So fifteen thousand views total. Just my channel alone. Um, guys, I mean, just the idea, you know, to have 15,000 views for something I spent so much time on. It's really cool. It really is. You know, I've, I've put a lot of work into this. I want to make this the best damn thing that I could make it for you guys. And, you know, we, we tried to put out all the stops. I think we had a really good, um, you know, Obviously, the connection was off at times. We would lose the Lexus, but last year it was really laggy. It wasn't representative of what I want my content to ever look like. So uh, I didn't want it to to have – I didn't want to push anyone away, so to speak. But, yeah, this has been so freaking cool. I appreciate you guys tuning in for seven straight hours, even if you didn't and you just tuned in, tuned out, tuned in, tuned out. That's the normal way to do it. Uh, if you're a freak like me – um, then, you know, you do it that way, but yeah, I don't know, man, I, I'm, I'm really stoked. I'm really glad the way this came out. I really feel good about this. And, uh, I'm just, I'm really glad that Les Need and Sean McVay, uh, put together a really good draft class, a plus all around. I mean, Kobe Turner is going to end up working out. I'm telling you right now, he's the John Johnson of this draft. I didn't like it at first. Like, I was like, oh, it's a little bit of a reach. I would have taken this guy. I didn't hate it, right? But I was like, eh, I had this guy in mind. No, no, no. I'm telling you, he's going to end up being a stud. I will not be surprised. And you know me. I'll admit when I'm wrong. I'll throw when I'm right out there every, every now and then, but I'll admit when, when I'm wrong. Here's what we can hold our hat to, though. 15,000 people tuned in to just my channel. I don't have Alexis's numbers. I don't have Downtown Rams numbers. Be sure to like and subscribe Alexis's channel. Uh, my channel in downtown Rams, if you haven't already. 
So that's what we know, 15,000 on my channel alone. And then in addition to that, we will, we were able to break like five different pieces of news. Okay. We broke the Dalton Kincaid piece. We, we broke uh, the pick of Stetson Bennett. We broke Kobe Turner, right? We broke Davis Allen, Warren McClendon. We were killing it. Okay. And, and that is what I want us to be. That's what we should be. Because at the end of the day, I mean, you guys deserve the best quality content. You guys deserve the best. If you're coming here, I want to give you the absolute best I can. And so, yes, when people ask me, hey, Jake, do you really have sources? Well, I hope this time, okay, if you ever had any questions about my integrity, you had any questions about, you know, if I was in or not, and, and if I could get the, you know, the deets, if I could get the scoops, I'm hoping this shows you that I was never BSing you, okay, and I, I want to do what's best for the fan base. I want to give you the best I possibly can. And so I really appreciate you guys for hanging in there. I, you know, I really appreciate the support, but I also just, I wanted to point it out though, because I have people like, are you sure you got sort I'm like, yes, I am. And I'll prove it. And I, I did that on this stream and I'm glad I was able to do that. Cause I thought it added an extra element. It added an extra element. It was really freaking cool to be able to scoop for you guys, people that were in here got exclusive content. That was really cool. I just like, that's what it's about. That's what I want, want it to be. I want you, when you come in here, you're getting exclusive shit. You're not going to get this anywhere else, you know? And while I want to be analytical, while I want to give you analysis and opinions and humble and all that, I also want to stay like myself and have a personality and wear a tank top. If I freaking want to, and not a suit, you know, I'm not saying I'm against suits, but I'm saying I want this to be as, you know, laid back down to earth as possible. So, yeah. Sorry, talking a lot. I think it's a second wind or, or this is the calm before the storm when I just collapse, um, you know, but I can't believe I pulled this off with one hour of sleep. And I only did because you guys inspired me. The Rams drafted well, and uh, I had a great co-host in Alexis, but we got a lot coming down the pipeline. Keep in mind, daily show. If you guys haven't checked it out, off the edge, be sure to check it out. We're putting out content every single day. Um, you know, I do the show with Cam, and man, it's popping off. If you guys, before you leave, if you could go and uh, hit the subscribe button to off the edge, we're almost at 100 subscribers. And I don't think I, I think when we started today, um, we were at, I want to say 51. So the link is there. Be sure to hit that, uh, that link, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that. We're going to just keep on putting out NFL content constantly and constantly and constantly. We're also going to have believe in Rams coming soon. I'm very excited to record that, um, with cam. We're going to have downtown Rams. We're having interviews. We're going to give you the best damn thing possible. Breakdowns. Film breakdowns are going to be a little difficult, okay? I might need your help on that. I might need your help. I don't know if we have to put it on a different platform because I'll tell you right now, I can't do a film breakdown on Byron Young because the SEC will literally not, not copyright claim anymore. They're copyright striking YouTube accounts. If my YouTube account got copyright struck, it just takes two more times. And if they went around and struck all of them, I would lose my account. And if I lost my account, I don't know what I would do. But that's where I'm at. So I want to give you guys those breakdowns, those film breakdowns. We'll see if we can make it work. I'm going to have to be very careful with the Byron Young piece because SEC, for whatever reason, goes crazy. They will shut down your account. They will, you know, copyright strike you. Not even claim. Now they're just striking. So that's something to keep in mind. But... Guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. This this has been a lot of fun. I've really appreciated it. And uh man, I'm uh, I'm not stopping, okay? I'm not stopping. Bleacher Report show tomorrow. I'll I'll get you guys details on that. Recording uh off the edge, recording believe in Rams. Or sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. That is Monday. <laughs> Bleacher Report show is Monday, not tomorrow. I was just thinking about that. Today is not Sunday. It's Saturday. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go eat pizza like I was supposed to do earlier. I'm going to eat pizza, 
And then I'm going to go and watch the Devils win game six and end this series and end the Rangers. So that's how this is going to go. That's my mic drop. I'll see you guys soon. Love you all. You guys take care. And uh, I'll be back real soon with more content. Later, folks.